So this is how it's going to be. I'm going to work all day and you're going to shop. <laughs> As if I'd trust you in charge of my factory. Are you going to be here all day? Maybe, why? Well, if you stay in the office, you might find out, might you? Did you hear that, Leanne? Not even married yet and already she's got secrets. <laughs> I'm keeping you chained to the desk. <laughs> What is the big secret, then? You're going to jump on a plane to Barbados while he's stuck in office. If I was planning to run away, I wouldn't be about to spend an obscene amount of money on a new wedding dress, would I? Yeah, yeah. You're all set for tomorrow. Oh, you know, still plenty to do. You are coming, aren't you? Yeah, of course. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you both later. See ya. See ya. Oh, I'm glad she didn't ask me where we were going. The last thing I want to do is talk to Maria about a wedding dress. Yeah, well, I suppose the other one was a bit OTT for a Sybil doing a small hotel, eh? Exactly. Anyway, that's all history. So how I see it, it's a new start, a new dress. New shoes? New bag. <laughs> Just letting you know, Operation Bad Boyfriend begins this morning. Of course it'll work, Becky. I'll make it work. Alright, I'll see you all uh, Yeah, see you later, man. Yeah, come on. Mm. <clears throat> morning. You do realise I got up to take Amy to school this morning? Well, you know, I had to get out of here for half an hour. Michelle and her parents and all the hugs and the view. And... I thought you'd be pleased, are you? Certainly perked Michelle up. Exactly. With me, she's flipping miserable. Mummy and Daddy, she's all smiles. I mean, what does that tell you? She has been through a lot, Steve. And she's had to keep it together because of Ryan. Having a mum and dad here just helps spread the load. Oh, they want to have a farewell drink with everyone later. Another one? What do they think it is? A pub? It's not a problem, is it? Well, what about the regulars, eh? I mean, they're going to think it's just private parties, aren't they? It makes them feel uncomfortable. Helen and Barry create a lovely atmosphere, unlike some. Has somebody said something to you? If there's something wrong, I want to know. There's nothing wrong. Nothing. Look, we'll, we'll give him a good send-off. You don't want to be late on your first day, do you? I'm not going. Look, you've got to. Do you want to be thick like me, do you? Oh, great. Look, just get in and I'll buy you a burger after school, yes? I don't like burgers. You do like burgers. Don't you look smart? It won't go. Oh, Simon, you'll love it. Amy will be there. And Josh, you'll be gone. And you'll be able to make plenty of other friends. I mean, you'll like that, won't you? Tell you what, they'll be doing all sorts of things for Christmas, and I'll bet you there'll be a party in a week or so. So, how about it? Yeah, good boy. Oh, let's get you in the car. There you go, jump in. Thanks. I do have my uses. <sighs> Poor Peter. Oh, how's it feel to be back at work? It's good to be back to normal. Girls taking pot shots at you. Mm, I'd like to see them drive. Now, is this sweetener or sugar? Like I know. Oh, it's so difficult. Kelly's soya milk, so you have to wait till the water's cooled down or else the milk separates. Picky's decaf and Janice's tea too. I hope you've put as much effort into your work as you're doing to making drinks. Oh, careful, you sound like Carla then. Well, good. Perhaps that will make people listen to me when I'm in charge. You what? Look, I've been sworn to secrecy. About what? Tony is taking Carla on a surprise for the trip. And it was me to be in charge. You? But you haven't got the experience, the anything. It should be somebody more mature, or somebody that the girls respect. What? Like the tea girl? Uh, package for coal. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, thank you, but uh, there, there was no need to bring it. Oh, it's a plain brown wrapper with no indication of the uh, secrets within. <laughs> There's a difference between secret and private. And which is this? Well, private, obviously. Oh, 
up. I'll open it up. I can't stand the suspense. Package for coal, you said, not coal and stone. The last parcel I had was uh, a foolproof way of winning the pools. It was from uh, Horace Batchelor, Department C. Keensham, spelt K-E-Y-N-S-H. Oh, it's Radio Luxembourg. Do you know, they must have put that ad out 20 times a night. Oh, more. Of course, Norris here would be listening to the home service. Anybody under 50 will think we were mad. This foolproof scheme never worked for you, then? Uh, I had a, a lot of luck in my life, Norris, but it was all bad. Mm. And your run's continuing. This parcel will remain unopened. I, I bet it's from the girlfriend. Look, just because you insist on wearing a cap, there's no need to resort to schoolboy humour. You know perfectly well my relationship with Mary is purely platonic. A uh, better lass that age takes some keeping up with. Did you not hear what I said? Or is it the word platonic you don't understand? Well, if it doesn't work out, you can always adopt her. Oh, don't encourage him, Rita, please. <sighs> ah, I see that bad luck comes to an end sooner or later. Stone, Nightingale Terrace. Or have you thrown so many sick pensioners out of their homes, put all their belongings in a skip and left them to die? Is that why you can't recognise me? You know, my recollection is something quite different. Far from leaving you to die, it was me called the ambulance. Full recovery, I see. Oh, yeah. Alive and well and living on your doorstep. We've got unfinished business, sunshine. I really don't think so. Um, I'll call back later. Uh -huh. The blushing groom. <laughs> I was looking for you. <laughs> Hi there. Your bride is a grand girl. Now listen, we're having a farewell drinks at the Rover tonight. I came to ask the two of you along. All right. Uh, it, it'll take your mind off tomorrow. Uh, it'll give Helen a, a chance to make it up with Carla. She regrets some of the things she said after our Liam died, you know. I should watch you if I were you. You stand here any longer, he'll have your wallet. <laughs> Great body will be there, thank you. Brian. What do you want? I want my house back, I want my life back, and I want my cat back. How am I doing so far? We had a deal, I give you a cheque, you cashed it. Look, you robbed me when I was ill. I want more. I want a decent price for everything you took. Take your disgusting hand off me. Don't you ever come near me again, right? You don't scare me, remember? Hey, I'll see you around. And next time, bring your checkbook. Ooh, yeah, I'll get that first cup. Lovely. What are you having then? Well, I'm not sure I want to drink with you anyway. Eh? My friend here is a disgrace to womankind. Oh, now I like the sound of this. OK, so you're going out to buy a wedding dress, right? OK, now I'm interested. You go to every shop in Manchester. <coughs> yeah, and beyond. You look at all the possible dresses. And a few impossible ones as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you take your turn. This one, first shop, first dress. OK, can we bar it? <laughs> I think there's definitely a case for it. Uh, hang on a minute. This is a beautiful dress, isn't it? No argument. And it suits me, right? Again, no argument. But can I just also add, shoes and bag, also bought in record time. Oh, why look further and risk somebody else buying this dress I want? Well, then you ask them to save it for you. Then you check the rest of the city. And beyond. And then you go back to the first one. Oh, guilty as charged. <laughs> and for punishment, I'll buy you all a drink. She's right, though. She looks stunning. Mm. Oh. Excuse me, Tony, there's somebody here to see you. Tell the old fool to get lost. If he won't, call the police. Fool okay, but much younger than him. Pat! <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, my brother. Rosie Webster, the power behind the throne. Hi. Would you like to see a coffee? Tea, thanks. Coffee, please. So you're Carla's big surprise. Do you remember a couple of days back? I thought, if she looks anything like she sounds, this one I've got to meet. Oh, she does. It's not that you're ashamed of her, then. So there must be some other reason why you don't want me at your wedding. I didn't arrange it to the last minute. You mean you thought I'd still be miffed about being bumped off the best man's job last time? I suppose I should count myself lucky, considering what happened to my replacement. You always had the luck of the devil. Come here.
Betting is one of those things, isn't it, eh? No matter how long you've been doing it, you never get better at. <laughs> like understanding women. Exactly. Oh, Leanne, you're a lifesaver. Oh, yeah? You can just keep your eyes on for five minutes, could you? I thought you wanted me to look after the shop for half an hour. It's five minutes, please. Hey, that's clever, isn't it? It's my favourite. My mummy bought it me. Oh, did she? Well, aren't you a lucky boy, eh? How was school today? It was all right. It'll be better tomorrow. Will it? Yeah, of course it will. Because you won't be the new kid anymore, will you? And you know what? I reckon you'll make lots of new friends. Ellis and Riley. Are they nice boys? Yeah. So, uh, can I get you a drink later? You know, to say thanks for helping out. I'm going to be in the Rovers anyway. What about Simon? Well, see if Ashley can look after him. Hey, you fancy play with Josh later? Yeah. You know, you really should make sure it's OK first. You don't want to go getting his hopes up. If Ashley can't make it, he's going to be disappointed. No, you're right. I never thought. It's like I keep telling you, Leanne. You are <laughs> a natural. Tim's to airport. Hey. I was in bed last night thinking how great it would be, you and me, away from all the stuff. It's nothing compared to what I was lying in bed thinking about, you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> With Michelle. Yeah, but nothing. You know what I mean? I promise myself I won't say that. It's like, um, oh, that, you know, when people can't stop themselves swearing. Traffic jams. Tourette's. Anyway, like I said on the phone, I am really starting to get up Michelle's nose. So it won't be long before I'm, uh, well, before I'm living in here. What did you do? Well, I uh, ignored her when she said morning. And then I kicked off a bit when uh, she said her mum and dad wanted a farewell do. So... You call that bad? Some fellas have had to behave like that. I'm expecting a proposal. Well, I'll try a bit harder then. I'm not sure about this, Dee, this, this being horrible to myself, cos... Well, she ain't done no, and, um, she's my mate, and... It won't be for long. Anyway, look, she'll soon decide it's not worth carrying on, and then people won't look at you and think you've stolen somebody else's family, you know? Or that you're a two-time scumbag. Yeah, that as well. Trust me. Oh, Oh, that's nice. I'd, I'd, uh, you're on your break. Oh, you play Mary Ellie if I'm more than five minutes. Is that the parcel Jed brought for you? Mm, first prize in a competition. Oh, and you've just got a new phone. Yeah, but I was hoping to win second prize, foot spa with incorporated massage function. You're too clever for your own good. That's <sighs> your trouble. I know, I know. Uh, if you're after confetti love, it's over there. Mm. Oh, I don't think it's a confetti sort of wedding. Oh, mm. Whoa, that is gorgeous. Yes, but it's not a foot spa with incorporated massage function. This is the in-phone. It has everything on it. MP3 player, radio, streaming video. Yeah, yeah, well, why can't they make a phone that just makes phone calls? Who would want one of those? Someone for whom a foot massage would be the height of luxury. See you later. Thank you. Mm. Oh. Oh, message from Mary. She won the foot spa. You know, I've always thought that song were a bit sinister. What? Living Doll? It, 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 it's a classic. Yeah, but what about the lyrics? I'm going to lock her up in a trunk. I mean, it's not exactly respectful to women, is it? I hope you're not suggesting Sir Cliff would sing anything unseemly. Well, it's hardly up there with... You are the sunshine of my life, is it? Look, I can cope with your jealousy over my friendship with Mary, but criticising the Peter Pan of pop... Well, frankly, that's going too far. Thank you, you. Thanks. Thanks again for inviting me. It's all right. I had to check what I was marrying into, didn't I? If it'd been left to this one, I'd be sitting in my little croft drinking whiskey from a chip mug, blissfully ignorant. <laughs> That's the plan. I've got a reputation to maintain. I can only expect you to shatter everyone's illusions about me. You know, Pat, you could get the drinks and, um, Carol and I should really go and say hello to Helen. Oh, do we have to? Well, if you want to come to us for Christmas, you'd be more than welcome. Oh, thanks, Dad. 
What's the matter? Just don't be on your own. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, um, thanks for coming. Thanks for the invite. I just wanted to, um, well, what happened after the funeral? It's I'm... forgotten, Helen. It was a difficult time. Yeah, for all of us. Anyway, um, the very best to both of you. Thank you. Cheers. Ah, the buzz of a wedding, eh? It gets even to the heart of an old cynic like me. Uh, by the way, where's uh, Steve? Oh, uh, always around somewhere. <laughs> and he wonders why I accuse him of being lacking in subtlety. Liz knows what I mean. Yeah, Dad, everyone knows what I mean. Well, in that case, I leave it to you two to put a little pressure on him. Subtle pressure. Oh, Steve's already given me my present. Oh, Michelle's happier than I've ever seen her. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Uh, red wine and... Uh, uh, half a bit, please. Peter's in there. Should we join him? Well, I'm more interested in knowing where Simon is. So, Ashley took Simon, then? He did, yeah, no problem. So, drink? Yeah, good enough. Has anyone ever choked to death on champagne? Oh, don't be horrible, Kevin. You're not a fan of Flesh Gordon's, then? I wouldn't pour me drink on him if he was on fire, no. Why, well, do you know him? I got to this age without really hating anybody. Then he came along. What are you doing out here? Getting some fresh air. Hmm? It's a smoking shelter. Fresh air ain't an option. Right, well... It seems fitting that I should be the first to congratulate you. What? On your forthcoming wedding. Isn't, isn't that what they say? What are you on about? I know what your lights do when it comes to out like this. You're a flipping coward. Becky, you have lost me, really. So, did, did you not have the nerve to actually dump me, or were you just going to keep me sweet for a bit longer? Can you please tell me what on earth you're going on about? They're planning your flaming wedding in there. Who? Well, apart from the groom, every flipping body. Michelle's just about bought a dress. All this talk about leaving her. It's gonna happen. Look, all this wedding talk has got nothing to do with me. That's why I'm out here, innit? I want to hear with all that. You say what do you think people want to hear, right? So in there you say I love you, Michelle, and out here you say I'm gonna be with you. But what you actually mean is I wanna be with you in bed. Of course I flipping do. But you do too. When you're a free man, Steve, and not before. Me? I do not want to be your bit on the side, knocking off the landlord behind his missus's back. Make it sound very sleazy. So this um, bad boyfriend campaign, well, you best get cracking in it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, I keep trying to work out which one of us has got the most of these here. I mean, I know I haven't got the best of reputations, but drinking with a bigger mist. Ah, somebody's been asking around about me. There was no need. Johnny's got way to tell me. Well, you're still here. So are you. Oh, what's wrong with having a drink after work with Colin? You missed out the word harmless. I'll go and get some more juice. Hi. We, uh, we were wondering where Simon is. Who? Oh, that kid who follows me around. Oh, yeah. No, he's fine. Happily playing with a box of matches the last time I saw him. Your dad was only asking, Peter. He's staying with Ashley, playing with the boys. Is that OK? That's all you needed to say. How, uh, how did he get on at school? Oh, good, yeah. Well, he's talking about going back tomorrow, so... Good. Enjoy your drink. I wish I hadn't come. It's Lee and this, Lee and that. Yeah, well, as long as you're around here, there's bound to be reminders, eh? I know. Maybe it'll change once my name's Carl Gordon. What do you reckon? Carla, me darling. I can't tell you how happy I am. Michelle, can I organise a toast for time now? Oh, yeah, I'll get some more champagne. He managed to frighten all my neighbours away. Take more than a bully boy to frighten me. 
You did move out, though. Well, I had a stroke, didn't I? The second I was in the hospital, he got his thugs in and they dumped all my things and boarded the house up. Here's Bernie. If you're worrying about what to get me as a wedding present, there's no need. Oh, I'll buy you a rattlesnake. But one bite, dead snake. I should have got you to write my wedding speech. I could have done with a good few jokes if you can't make the wedding. Well, I'll miss out on a chance to eat and drink at your expense. Don't think so. He'll be on his best behaviour, Mr. Gordon. How would you ever know? Maybe I should come too and tell everybody what a charmer the bridegroom really is. I'm touched. I'm really sorry for your loss. Everybody speaks so highly of Liam. Thank you. Glad you and Tony finally made up anyway. Made up? I'd never thought on it. That's why Tony asked Liam to be best man, isn't it? There must be some mistake. Sorry to butt in. Uh, ladies and gents, can I just have your attention for a second, please? Good evening, widow. Once she starts, you owe me a pint. Can I ask you all to raise your glasses to the happy couple, Tony and Carla? Tony, Tony and Tony. Carla! <laughs> Wife and daughter work for me. Everything all right for you last night at the flat? Great, I felt right at home. You know, I could do you a really good deal in one. Do you ever fancy spreading your wings and flying south? We've got one trait in the family is enough. You've not been working this morning, have you? Surely to God. Just like showing off his empire. Uh, part of my empire. Had my clothes delivered there. Didn't want Carly to see them before the big day. Mm. And good luck. Thanks. The things to do, I'll see you later. Mr. Gordon, we're really looking forward to today. Yeah, we are too. Is that a new haircut? Yeah, and I've got a new dress, which cost me a week's wages, so don't tell Kevin. I wouldn't dream of it, Sally. I know a lot of people around here. It's not quite the same thing. <laughs> Couldn't get a cab. I'm a girl and modest means me, you know. Uh, don't you dare, I'm fine on bus. Suit yourself, as long as my braid looks incredible. Uh, like she needs any help from me. True. You met my brother, Pat. Right. I sat in a pub last night. Best man. Leanne, best woman. <laughs> Wish Carla luck for me. She's going to need it. <laughs> See you later. See you later. See you. How about a good old fashioned fry up? And no cracks about the last meal of the condemned man, right? You pay. Don't I always, brother? Pickhead. So I didn't have much of an education. It's not <laughs> my fault. Hey. Is that, your, uh, is that your wedding outfit? Oh no, this is a very long pair of earrings. Shame I'm not going to get to see you all glammed up. Still, I could take you into town on the weekend if you like, give it another uh, another outing. I'm uh, off Bucky's at the moment. Oh, that's Buckyism, is that? <laughs> I can see I'm going to have to work on you a bit. Anyway, uh, have a good time. Yeah, well, Ta. See ya. See ya. Best behaviour today, Kevin. Yes, Mum. No, I mean it. Whatever problems you've got with Tony, they're me and Rosie's bosses. It's not often we get invited to a fancy dinner like this, and I want to enjoy it. So did Helen and Barry get off all right, then? Yeah. They haven't stopped talking about the baby. <laughs> it's great news about the scan. Yeah, made up. Couldn't be healthier, they said, at the hospital. <laughs> It'll be a good day. Yeah. If you need me, I'll be right there. If I need you. Same. Come here. <laughs> You haven't even showered yet. Well, I must have dropped off again. Tell you what, though, I had a really weird dream. 
That was in the Harlem Globetrotters when we were playing this basketball match against these Disney characters. And uh, there's a the Little Mermaid, eh? she got some dribble on her. Yeah, well, never mind your stupid dreams, eh? Just go and put some clothes on, cos the bar needs bottling up and Becky's gonna be on her own this afternoon. <sighs> All right, keep your bob on. Gonna go and get some fags. <sighs> now! Steve, I had to take Amy to school cos you wouldn't get out of bed. Calm down. The wedding's not for hours yet. Yeah, and there's loads to do, so shift, will you? Oh, one lie, one lie in in how long? Yeah, and you choose today of all days. You know what? You can clean this place up, cos it's your mess. <sighs> Hiya! Bit over the top for a corsage, that, isn't it? <laughs> They're from Tony. Bumped into the delivery guy downstairs. I'll stick them in some water for you. Cheers. Do you want a coffee? Oh, no champagne. I'm pacing myself. Hmm. How are you feeling? Good, yeah. You know, I was half expecting to find the door wide open and no saying you'd liked it. I'm fine. Yeah, I know you are. But, Carly, you've been through so much and I know you're probably still grieving. It's well, Dan, trust me. I know exactly what I'm doing. It never would have worked out between me and Liam anyway. Right, well, I'll shut up then, shall I? <laughs> Come on, let's get you beautiful. I just want to enjoy today, don't I? Right. Well, why the hell are we drinking coffee then? Mmm. <laughs> Bubbles in the fridge. Hey, that's me girl. Come on, let's get on it, you lightweight. <laughs> what the hell's going on with that guy? Roy, the local nutter, ignored him. Why did he keep randomly talking about bats? He did he? You didn't notice? When I mentioned I was your brother. No, I can't say I did. Just launched into this stuff about bats and their sleep patterns. Did I know they're an endangered species? Only asked for a soft boiled egg. Talking of local nutters. Mr. Gordon! Big day for you today, eh? Uh, see that's up. Something I need to do. You're lucky you've caught me in a good mood. I don't want to see you again today. Stay away. I mean it, old man. <laughs> if we'd been invited to the wedding, we'd be having better than soup for our dinner. We don't even know them. You know what? Amy's father's living with Carla's ex-sister-in-law. We're practically family. Do you want some soup or not? Is it mulligatawny? I like mulligatawny. It's tomato. I can hardly wait. I hope Simon's getting on better at school today. I expect he'll settle down pretty quickly. But none of this can be easy for him. They'll be knee-deep in lobster. Can't be easy for Peter, either. Mind you, fair play to him. He has pulled his socks up lately. We'll see. It'll be champagne all the way. And not your cheap stuff, neither. I tell you what, Mother. I've got a drop of white wine in the fridge. I'll put a fizzy aspirin in it. You can put a big hat on and pretend you're there. You've a mean streak in you, Deirdre Barlow. I don't know where you get it from. Right. How do I look? Oh, I've got the pilot light going. Okay, the cab is booked for like ten minutes' time and you still haven't even shaved. Oh, get in the shower in a minute. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? What? Why do you not want to go to this wedding? Oh, and why do you have to be so flipping dramatic? And it's not like I nag you every minute of the day, is it? Wash this, shave that. Steve, we're supposed to be picking up Maria right now. Today's going to be hard enough for her without making her wait for you. All right, well then you go. And I'll catch up with you later. Do you know what? Forget it. You stay here and fiddle with your pilot light all afternoon for all I care. Fine! That's the way you feel. <sighs> you know what, Steve? Today isn't about you. It's about Carla and Tony and looking out for Maria. Lee might be disgusted with you. Where's Michelle? The taxi's going to be here any second. Probably rowing with Steve, they've been at it all morning. Yeah, and not in a good way. That's my mum. Sorry. 
Sorry, sorry, I got held up. You look gorgeous. Where's Steve? Oh, please don't ask, really. Told you. Oh, don't you look lovely? Cracking. It's been ages since I got dressed up. That necklace looks lovely on you. Hmm. It's my last birthday present from Liam. I just can't believe he's not here. That'll be the cab. Um, come on, Ryan. Probably be half blooded by now, wouldn't they? Well, we'd have had to get the taxi to stop at the pub, eh? Actually, probably wouldn't have been drinking with you on the wagon. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, come on, Maria, get a grip. Yeah, that's a girl. It's happy day today. We're not going to let anything spoil it for us, right? Yeah. Come on. Hey, Tony! You got a wedding to go to? My dear brother left the buttonholes in the factory. <laughs> you look gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. So am I, the ugly sister? I was talking to both of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth, isn't he? <laughs> See you there. See you. Yeah. Cheers. Perhaps. I'm more than you, Kevin. I don't get much of a friendly vibe with that garage guy. He's a Neanderthal. Ignore him. I might see you later on, Mr. Gordon. Who is that who fell? No one. No one at all. You're not nervous, are you? I just don't want any screw-ups. Not today. Come on, relax. What could go wrong? Thank God all that money was spent on her education wasn't wasted. You got a beer, mate? Oh, Kevin, try and be a bit classy just for once in your life. Hey, it's a nice place, this. Oh, it's dead classy. I feel right at home here. Mmm, I bet you do. We aim chugging beer back from Bottle. Well, you can take the lad out of Weatherfield. Hold that for us, I need a peek. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. oh, yeah. Yeah, it did, thanks. Yeah, they said that the baby's really healthy. Oh, Marcus would be thrilled. Oh, yeah. Do you ever hear from him? No. Well, that's a conversation killer. Oh, that's my good side. Have you got a good side? <laughs> Just pretend. Here he is, the man who's got everything. Not yet, he hasn't. Uh, my hilarious brother, Pat. Hiya, yeah, I'm Kelly. Nice suit. Well, that's all thing. It's typical, isn't it? Turns up at the last minute and upstages me in my big day. Right, well, that's never going to happen. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Try and keep your smalls on until the end of the ceremony, eh? <laughs> it's lovely to see you all. This is a really nice place. Are you nervous? Well, marrying the woman of my dreams, I couldn't be happy. You scrub up well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if she don't turn up, you know, I'll gladly step in. <laughs> What? Women like me don't grow on trees, you know. I'm just swinging them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one sucking ill, love. Well, I hope you'll all be in your best behaviour today. Yes, yes Mr. Gordon. Gordon. It's a privilege to be here, Mr. Gordon. Oh, oh Mr. Gordon. <laughs> Vicar said she's sorry she can't come, but she would like it if I could give you this. Apparently, in her country, guests give the bride and groom bread and salt so that they never go hungry. Well, thank her from me when you see OK. Bread and salt? What kind of wedding present's that? Well, it, it, it's, like, symbolic, isn't it? Well, I think it's dead thoughtful. Well, I tell you what, I wish somebody told me I've just invested in a beaded toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ah. 
Hi, Scoot. Good to see you too, Kev. I'm glad we put all that stuff behind us. Yeah, so am I. Uh, excuse me. God, what I won't give to take that smug get down a peg or two. Kevin, I swear to God, if you were here to cause trouble... Not just that. Free ale as well. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Relax. Enjoy the party, eh? You're all nervous, aren't you? A few butterflies. It's a big day, this. I don't believe it, my big girl. I told you nothing's going to go wrong. Mate, you've got no idea. What do you mean? Just forget it. You know, most people I'm the big, bad, fat cat boss. You'll probably hear a few stories about me later when the drink starts flowing. I can't wait. Just ignore it, yeah. Shouldn't you be somewhere necking bubbly and doing the conga be now? The bad boyfriend bit worked, didn't it? So she said, don't bother going to the wedding because you've been acting like a div all morning. Well, that can't be hard for you, can it? The good thing is, me and you get to spend the day together. Like a date. Ooh, pulling pints and washing dirty parts. Well, <clears throat> it ain't exactly cocktails at the Hilton, but hell, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> yeah, close the doors for ten minutes, you know what I mean? Ah, 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 you know the rules, Stevie boy. What are you doing then? Fucking <clears throat> things bust again, it's always giving me jip. Well, we can't have a date without tunes, can we? Come on, stand back, Anson. This needs the feminine touch. <sighs> right. <laughs> ah. Mm. The phone. Come on, Grandad, let's get some shakes. They call me Stacy. That's not my name. Just the two of you on today, is it? Ah, uh, yes. I wonder who did the rota. <laughs> uh, Jane Taser? On the house, obviously. If you insist. At least if she stood me up, I've got you here to witness the public humiliation. She'll be here. Of course she will. I reckon Carlos seen Sansa bottled it. Dad, you know what from you. You ever played around the board? Continue. We used to play this when I worked at Halfway. We drink these. In order. One every 15 minutes. That's my row, that's yours. What are they? Right, this is everything what we serve on tap. So it's as bitter as lagers and cider. Going from weakest to strongest. This isn't a game. This is just getting bladdered. 
Work with me, Ray. This is supposed to be a date. I'm trying to inject a bit of fun. Well, in that case, I would love to play around the board with you. You ready, then? <sighs> what the hell? Mm -hmm. I'd like some service, please. If you can bear to tear yourselves away from each other. I'll sort it out. Yes, Blanche? Having a nice time? Look, are you going to stop here all afternoon giving us evil eye? It were either this, cleaning the oven, or having a good go at me bunions. These really are your golden years, aren't they? Still on the house, are they? The drinks? As long as you cut the wisecracks, yeah. I ain't as soft and cuddly as him. A gin and tonic, please. Large. Ah, oh, Mrs Hunt. Can I buy you a drink? Oh, no, thank you. I've made my own arrangements, drinks-wise. Oh, go on. I'd love to have your company. I've heard so much about you from Emily. All right, then. Twist me arm. Don't tempt me. Uh, it's a glass of red for me, please, love, and stick another gin in there for the nice lady here. And there's me, thinking today we're going to be a right washout. Some date. Yeah. Could be worse. Go on. Stick a few more tunes on. Hmm. I join my life with yours. Wherever you go, I will go. Whatever you face, I will face. For good or ill, in happiness or in sadness, for riches or in poverty. Poverty? That's a laugh. I take you as my wife and I will give myself to no other. I join my life with yours. Wherever you go, I will go. I rather right you face. I will but face. marriage is supposed to make you a nicer person. You're good. What do you reckon the chances Ill. are with these two? In happiness or Wait, in norm. <laughs> Come riches or poverty, I take you as my husband and I will give myself to no other. <laughs> Thank you for that. With the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> you may kiss. Lovely collection of Carla's greatest snooks. Yeah, come on, I think we need some fresh air. Right. I want a fiver on one of them three horse accumulator fingers. My mate won a fortune on one of them once. Which horses? Oh, I can't remember. I mean, it was Yonks back. No, I mean, which horses do you want to bet on today? Oh, I don't mind. Feeling lucky. Right, well, here you go. Pick three horses. Cloth ears. My mum used to call me that. You don't say. Cloth ears, yeah. Next. Thriller night. Any particular reason? You need to ask. Thriller night. <laughs> no. Sorry, sorry. Your brother's just been telling us about when you were kids and you kidnapped his action man. <laughs> we're gripping hands and his own jeep. <laughs> oh, sounds like my dream, fella. <laughs> and held him to ransom. Oh, thank you God for that. I love that action man. And it goes missing, and I start getting ransom notes left on my pillow. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gordon, you are wicked. Did he send you little plastic ears through the post? Anything to wind up the most annoying little brother since Joseph. <gasps> I close my eyes. Your childhood must have been a nightmare with this one as your brother. Tell me about it. All I had grown up with, so he was the one who got the looks and the brains. Well, somebody had to remind you. And what did you get? A couple of cents of inadequacy. <laughs> Do you know what? I can hardly hear you for all the violins. <laughs> What was that to have ever in a mind I loved? Which is how he met his first wife, incidentally. Okay. Oh, scandal. Uh, I think that's enough of uh, the trip down memory lane. This is about the future, not the past. And what a future. With her in my arm, I really feel as though I could conquer the world. And the way he looks at her. Like the cat that got the cream. Can you blame me? She's all mine. Till death as do part. Now I feel I really have get everything.
Oh, how long's he stayed? Do you know, I heard that the definition of a gentleman is someone that can play the bagpipes, but doesn't. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Lovely service, you know. Oh, I, I love your dress. Oh, Ta, thank you very much. Yours is nice and all. Oh, it's meant to cost an arm and a leg between you and me. Oh, you said it was from Primark. How much was it? Dad. How much did you blow on that to try and impress her? Keep up with it, eh? Uh, Kevin, you'll put down to a low roll, won't you? Yeah, let's have a look. No, no, Kevin, no. Like, oh, you <gasps> drunken hillock. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it'll come out. Look at Molly. Well, you mushy peas, though. It tasted funny. <laughs> oh, my God, Carla, I'm so sorry. Come on, let's go to Lou. We'll clean it off. Uh, is everything all right? Yeah, it's fine, love. Do us a favour, would you? Go and get us another glass of bubbly. Tony, please. Sally, I realise your family don't usually come to places that use metal cutlery, but do us a favour, will you? If you lot can't behave at least half civilised, there's a pub over the road with a pool table. Maybe you feel more comfortable there, eh? Mmm, whoops. She didn't mean it. Well, well, Webster. Looks like your entree into the high social circles has been scuppered. <laughs> it was an accident. Oh, yeah. Like all them beers accidentally flew down his gullet. <laughs> oh, you're just reminding me to go and make some more room. Oh, I don't should talk about my family like that. If people knew half the things that dirty cow's been Mom. up to. Please. With your ringtone in the first place. Well, I, I fancy the change. I, I'm trying to download Delilah, uh, Tom Jones. It was my grandmother's name. Your grandmother's name was Tom Jones? Mm. <laughs> huh? oh, oh, let me do it. No, 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 no. I've got to learn. Oh, what is that song? Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? <laughs> well, that's hardly appropriate. <laughs> You're not kidding. Got to go for the quality year. Full set, yeah. I'll be over later. Cheers. Is that your new tools? Yeah. How's things, love? Well, I'm about to cave Doris's head in with a till. But don't change the subject. How are you going to pay for him? Don't you worry your pretty head. I've sorted it. Well, how? Because the bank's already said no. Finance company, mine Führer. Oh, Dad! Look, times are tough. You've got to speculate to accumulate. Yeah, and there's no fool like an old fool. <laughs> Charge fortunes and interest them. Look, love, I've had a setback. Now I'm back in business, right? Stop mm. worrying. I'll see you later. Is um Norris here? Norris. Oh, oh, this is a lovely surprise. <laughs> um. I'll go out and get us a cake each then, yeah? Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I was in the area and I, I thought I'd pop in. Oh, I'm glad you did. <laughs> so, so how, how, how's, how's things? Uh, oh, you're enjoying your foot spa? Mother is. Left her sat there, feet submerged with a big grin on her face. Oh. <laughs> Actually, it's another competition prize I've come to see you about. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Lynch. Oh, um, well, have, have you tried his dad? <sighs> Listen, don't worry about it. I'll sort it. I, I'm sure he's on his way. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. And it's Digit Donkey with Thriller Night coming up behind and So if, if this one wins like the others, you win go. big, yeah. Really is a surprise. Come on, Thriller Night! Hello, love. Are you still at the library? 
Yeah, well, Peter hasn't picked Simon up. Mrs Lynch has got the poor little thing in her classroom. Ha! <laughs> yeah, but he's not answering his phone. Oh, yeah, that's great, love. You're just round the corner, aren't you? Great. What is Peter playing at? There you go. £340 and 50p. Well, you're full of surprises, you, aren't you? It's what my probation officer says. This glove is my lucky charm, I reckon. Damn! Come on, out! Come on, out! I'm, look, I'm late to pick up my kid. I haven't finished my celebratory dance. Well, do it out here. Well, you'd think they'd at least spring to a sit-down meal, tight wads. Oh, shut up, Melanie and Janice. It's top-nosh, this. What the hell's that? Sushi and sashimi. Sounds like a pair of Chinese strippers. <laughs> it's raw fish. Mmm! It's gorgeous. No way you've got soft-shell crab with avocado. Oh, check you out, Miss Thagom. <laughs> oh, it's a taste sensation. <laughs> <laughs> Come pay me to eat raw fish. I'll try anything once. Twice if I like it. Ah. <laughs> You do realise you've made me the happiest man on the planet, don't you? Any regrets, Mrs Gordon? No, but it's early days. <laughs> the Piper wants pain. I'll be back in a minute, wife. Oh, all right, husband. <laughs> Smile. Oi, you, you know I hate being filmed. I might have to let you off being that it is your wedding day. You know this doesn't change anything, don't you? I'll always be your auntie. Well, I might have to remember that next time. I need to catch a few quid. Oi, cheeky! <laughs> oh, Carl, well, then bows were dead nice. Did you write him yourself? No, internet. <laughs> you kidding? Oh, I'm out of the sentimental type, am I? <laughs> hey, where's Steve and your mum? They had a massive row. He stayed home and she's been in and out all afternoon sending him evil texts. Take the service. Yeah. It was lovely. It was really lovely. Hey, come on, you've been holding it together brilliantly. It's all a front. I know. Tough day all round, isn't it? We should be here. Hey, come on. Take no notice of me and just being daft. Two-faced, hypocritical tart. Mum, will you please just calm it down? How's Maria breaking the heart, thinking Liam was the perfect bloke and all the time? Yeah, well, I only saw them kissing the once. Maybe it was just that. Please, do you think a woman like that stops at a kiss? She's got the brass neck to slag off my family. Hmm. Just what? I was picking a baby. Mum's taking her for pizza after school. Oh, that is cute. Mm, apart from the fact that she actually gets Amy to call her mum every time she sees a weight she fancies. <laughs> Listen, this ain't much of a drinking game. Half every 15 minutes, we're hardly going to get bladdered. Oi! The train's barely out at station, sunshine. This is round one. Spirits next. <laughs> Listen, uh, he's dead in here. Why don't we uh, go in the back for a few minutes? You know what I mean? Hmm. Well, maybe if I can get rid of them too, we can have uh, five minutes, Mike. <laughs> Are you all right, you pair? Bet you're desperate to get home and have your teas, eh? Hey, I am peckish, now you mention it. Yeah, what sort of food have you got on, love? Oh, it's just Sarnies now, and, and they've been hanging around for hours. Do you know, even mice have turned their noses up at them. <laughs> I want something hot. Yeah, can't you rustle something up for us, love? Unless it's adding boiling water to something in a plastic pot, I'm glueless, sorry. Oh, young girls today, hopeless. My mother were never happier spending an afternoon stuffing a marrow. Where? Uh, all right, look, we'll, uh, we'll just have another round then. I'll get these. No, no, you're all right. No, I insist. But I'm on my slate. 
So, so, so your mother's all right, then? Not bad, thanks. Making out this morning that her legs were playing up and that she couldn't get to the loo. When I came back from the library, there were two wagon wheels missing from the top cupboard, so I knew she was trying it on. Oh, dear, it must be very wearing. She's my mum. Pain in the backside sometimes, but still my mum. Yeah. Uh, now, now, look, the, the, the drinks are on me tonight. No arguments. That's very kind. Well, after this lovely gift, it's the least I can do. <laughs> Hello, Norris. Uh, Becky, whatever these two are having and all, on my slate. That's very kind. Half the cider and black would be lovely. Uh, and uh, h half a bitter, please. I thought you were a sherry man. Well, I'm a man of varied tastes. So I see. Sit down, I'll bring him over. Hey. They look pricey. Are they new? Oh, well, well, actually, uh, <coughs> Mary won them in a competition and, and very kindly gave them to me. <laughs> Gold. And I'm Catherine the Great. And Mary the Magnificent, nice to meet you. I promised the wife. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really good saying that. Uh, there would be no speeches today because it's been a it's been a difficult year for a number of reasons. We all know that's down to you mostly, don't we? Oh, Kevin, have some respect for yourself, if not everybody else. As I was saying, it would be a miss if we didn't raise a glass to the one person who isn't here. Liam. You'll never be forgotten. <laughs> to Liam. Just give her a couple of minutes, yeah? Maria, I only knew what that cow has been up to with her precious Liam. And are you all set for the honeymoon? Honeymoon? I didn't think I was going to marry you and not whisk you away somewhere fantastic. You what? There's a suitcase packed full of new gear for you and the bit of the car that's taken us away. I thought of everything. Where? Where are we going? No, I can't tell you just yet. <laughs> There you are. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Ah, his teacher rang. Ken had to go and pick him up. Well, why didn't she ring me? She did, and so did I. Why haven't you been answering? Well, I left my phone in the shop when I realised I was late. Hey, son, what have you been doing at school, eh? Painting. Yeah? Shall we go and have a look? Come on, let's go home and show you, Dad. Dad, I'm really sorry. It won't happen again. I was only 15 minutes late. Yeah, well, you can't be late for a child. Especially one who's been through what Simon's been through. We need stability above all else. I know, but you know, I'm still trying to get used to this as well. Yeah, well then I suggest you do so pretty quickly. For God's sake, Peter. If you need help, all you have to do is ask. I know, Dad. Thanks. I'm sorry. Leave me one day. But not like 
face. Never like this. Oh, he doesn't deserve your tears. What? I hate to be the one to tell you, but I just think it's better that you should know rather than... What are you on about? Liam was having an affair with Carla. Mum! Why would you say something like that? Because it's true. Rosie saw them kissing. She's got it on her mobile phone. Maria, don't listen to her. She's drunk. Show me. Maria, don't listen. Show me! Show her! She deserves to know! Mum, stop it! You're drunk! You Go find your own flag as a cab, yeah? What? Now, please! Let's go home. Now. Oh, oh and, and, and these, uh, I won in a garden competition. I had to come up with a name for a new rose. They're uh, lawn aerating uh, shoes. It's a funny name for a rose. I've heard about these. You walk on your lawn in them and it oxygenates the grass. <laughs> Handy for you then, Norris. Have you seen his rolling meadow out the back? <laughs> well, well why, why don't you have them? I mean, you've got a garden. Oh, I couldn't. So, what? After these lovely cufflinks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing says I love you more than a pair of spiky flip-flops. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to go back to the pub? Nope, my programme's just about to start. The world's worst shark attacks. Lovely. Why don't we go for a walk? I could do with the exercise. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Honestly, if there was a channel devoted to sharks, tornadoes and Nazis, he'd never leave the house. <laughs> there we are. I think the oldie blood, she was right. I might start doing my own roses from now on. Good idea. <laughs> I think she's all right. Yeah, man. Indestructible, eh? A heck of a lot of gym this afternoon. Yeah. Well, there's one way. <clears throat> yeah. Still kicking. Who's <laughs> <laughs> that scary coat of claws into him? Look, Maria, come and sit down. I'll kill her, you know, a flaming killer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell's going on? I'll tell you what's going on, should I? I've just found out my precious husband was sleeping with Carla. Rosie Webster had a video of Carla and Liam kissing or, or something. <laughs> well, what do you mean, kissing? Are you sick? What do you think he means? The pair of them stood outside her flat with the tongs down each other's throats. Maria, you need to calm down. Look, Ryan, why don't you go through to the back, eh? Make us a brew. I'm not an invalid. No, Maria, you're upset. You knew about this, didn't you? What? 
Well, I always knew someone was going on, but you kept telling me I was daft. You knew, didn't you? Of course I didn't. Maria, I'm the last person. You did, though, didn't you? You two never went to the bog without the other one knowing. Look, Maria, why don't you uh, come through at the back? It's only one place I'm going. I'm going to go and find that smug cow, Rosie. Find out what really happened. No, Maria, no. Take your hands off me. I'll go. I can't believe any of this. As if she's not been through enough. Side, eh? You think I want anything to do with your family again? Maria, this isn't the way. This has got nothing to do with you. Rosie! I swear I'll pull these windows through, I will! Where is she? I want to see that video. Rosie! Just calm before Kevin gets back. I'm not moving until I get that phone. Maria! Oh, just do one, Tom, will you? Both of you, I mean it. Now, don't speak to me like that, Rosie Webster. Oi! Dad, will you tell her to go and get my phone off Maria? It's only way of getting rid of her. Yeah, well, you wouldn't have had to get rid of her. Look, that's enough. I've had it up to here. Not another flaming word. Well, Dad, tell her to go and get my I'm phone. I'm not joking. Not another word. If you're late, it's going in the book. Sally Webster, hangover. Mm-hmm. Well, I just need to know you're all right. Angry with you, Maria? Of course not. You're in a state. Yeah, everyone lashes out when they're upset. Anyway, not the eye of a rhino, me. They didn't moisturise. <sighs> look, look, I'm coming over. Yes, I am. Now, is there out you need? Mill cot. Right, look, look. I'll be there in a minute. Bye. Watch the corners. Chip made to measure the whole worktop's trashed. What posh is it? Oh, proper posh, this heavy. Yeah, well, it's wasted on me mum. Just looks posh, would have done. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, who's this? We'll be back in there. Right, breakfast orders for cash and tips. Bacon bound for me, love. Yeah, and again. I'll get these. That marble? Top end. Yeah, so if we scratch it, me dad'll be remortgaging. I'll get some more stuff. You've done Gail's worktops. She was disappointed. You saw her face. I've got some up for you. It's the same company that makes these. They do all kinds in mob. Free gift, was it? No. Yeah, I'm sure it is essential, but it's called... Oh, Tina, red it. sauce. Did I just miss Brecky? Yeah. Well, just ring me dad. All right. Bye. Do you want me to do an inventory? Who? Some letting agent. It's not like I even want to let house out. So what are you going to do about Rosie's phone? Oh, I'd have thought we'd lobbed her right arm off the fuss she's making. We? Oui. Well, I'm sure Maria would rather have known about me. I'm so thought me one day. Just get a phone. And we can draw a line under the whole business. No, I'm going to be late for work and I don't want to give Rosie the satisfaction.
Did you even go to bed last night? Well, I'll make us a brew then, shall I? Have you eaten anything? Is that Rosie's phone? Maria, you've got to stop torturing yourself. Can't, anyway. That she's dead. Well, good. Because you need to get yourself up and dressed. How are you meant to think straight with that going round and round your head? What do you think Tony will say when he finds out his second best? His second best husband. I'm second best widow. Just stop that. It's you. You've got a nerve. Sorry, Maria. Rosie needs a phone back. Well, I need the charger. Oh, Maria, just give him the phone back, eh? When I've seen Carla. Oh, come on, love. That's a fortnight away. What else does she know about the affair? Well, you don't even know there was an affair. No, I'm sorry about what I happened. I asked you a question. What else does Rosie know? Answer me! Get off! What? Ta. Give it me! Look, you don't need to see that anymore. Listen, don't worry. As soon as I get home, that video's been deleted. It's gone now. You need to get that out of your mind. Another one of them, back here. Please. Please. Mm. It's for Daryl, don't you, Michelle? I'm getting him. There's no need, your dad's playing. Oh, well, that's all right then. Two bacon bombs on your ready, Beckett. Please. This weighs a ton. Which one's red sauce? Neither. I said one red sauce. Let's see, BB, bacon butties times two, W, white bread. No RS, no BS and no s &P. It's fine. What's up with you? Now. Well, you were all right a minute ago and now you're in a strop. You and your mum and your mates, you take advantage. What? Top end work top straight out of my dad's pocket. Hang on, my mum never wanted the posh ones. You get Daryl's butter, I'm giving this back. This test is not even the... even the same as the perfume, is it? No, pal, I will not peel the label off. And you said that there was only 20 bottles. When I picked up the bag, I nearly told me I might have it sock it. I've got to go. <clears throat> All right. Mm. Good grief, who have you been talking to? Uh, just some lady wafted past and went in there. Had to sew in leopard skin. Eh? What are you dragging this around with you for? You could have picked it up on your dinner on the way to the gym. Good exercise, innit? Take it to work, carry it here, carry it back to work. <laughs> Look at that bicep. <laughs> right. Um, have you spoken to Kevin about the wedding? Maria and Sally? Everyone's talking about it in the shop. Just keeping me head down. I can't believe Sally would be that cruel. Hey, have you just come here for goss? Oh, Becky! Roy's not got a spare till roll, has he? Dev said he'd pick some up this Abbey from Cash and Carry. Flaming, flipping, please! What? I said please! Oh, yeah. Royston, you better get yourself down here in the next 45 seconds or I'm going to be lamping one of your customers. I'm taking me break! I said please! Dinner? What's up with her? Oh, morning. Are you, uh, you checking up on me? No. I just came to see if you needed anything. I love Simon, love. Hey, tell your gran what you did this morning. Got into a routine? No, not got into a routine. The alarm clocks, tell her. We have three alarm clocks. Three alarm clocks? Well, that sounds very sensible. And so does getting into a routine. Oh, yeah. Up, wash, dressed, out the door. But don't tell everybody, will you? Unless it's my dad. All right, <laughs> see you in a bit. See ya. Come on, little lad. Have a good day at school, sweetheart. Look, I'm sorry about Michelle. The way it turned out. It's just the state she was in after Maria and everything. The thing with Michelle is... The thing with Michelle, Steve, is you. Look, don't be like that. I'm really getting on her nerves. What else can I do? Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe tell her the truth. 
she finishes with me, it's kinder, isn't it? It's her decision, there's no pride lost. Mm. That is quite cute. It's not stupid, but cute. Oops, missed a bit. Becky, I do want us to happen, you know. Not even phone to say they've arrived. Oh, they phone someone, won't they? Maria? Yeah, there is something you can do for me. Pop round. Okay, see you in a bit. Who are we talking to? Tom. What, our Tom? He said that it's his idea Carl got involved in the business. I think he's lying. The whole thing could have been one big alibi and he was in on it. Well, what about all the clothes they bought and sold? Tom went over to America, for heaven's sake. Perk. Keep him quiet. Maria, take anything out of context and it'll look suspicious. Like a video of him kissing? Well, possibly, yeah. Kissing? Well, if Liam was here, maybe he could oh, explain it. Michelle, you find me one explanation that don't mean an affair. It was from ages ago. It was a, a stupid, drunken moment that, that he regretted and he, he never, ever repeated. This is Carlo we're talking about. Carlo, whose name he said when he fell off a mountain. You stood at my wedding with black feathers in her hair like the Adams Family pet flaming vulture. Exactly. And that video could have been from before you married Liam. Before him and Carlo sorted themselves out. I know that I loved you, Maria. <laughs> you can't know that. Yeah, and you can't know that, that that kiss meant an affair. Or that the daft business was a lie. Liam loved you, Maria. And he married you because you were what he wanted for the rest of his life. Come <laughs> Can't park there. It's a funny uniform for a traffic vulture. And that's a funny attitude for someone who didn't want to smack in the chops. It's cat's park there. It's broken down if you must know. I'll shift it at dinner. Uh, if it's shiftable, get it shifted. At 11 we open. And the only thing she's shifting is a backside in there. Oh, well, you should have said then, Daryl, because, I mean, if she's late, she can do what the hell she likes, can't she? Seven flaming minutes late. And Tina's in there, isn't she? So? So, give her the morning. Steve paying you then, is he Becky? What? Or is it Lloyd to uh, guard his spec? I'm not. I'm not guarding. Oh, why, why, why would I? You could park a flaming Arctic truck on top of the old flaming building with a lot of a minute for all I care. I just don't like your attitude. That's all, Daz. You know, I'm sure I'm not getting taken seriously as a boss or a human being. Staff trouble. Well, I've been open precisely eight minutes. Every time I open my mouth, Tina bites my head off. And Minnie turns up late and gives me an hard time about it. At least yours don't spend ten minutes staring at a meat slicer and ask you if you can see Wayne Rooney's face in it. Graham. Yeah, all right, you win. How's she doing? I'll get a vase. Still now from Carlo and Tony. Why would they phone me? You and her are partners in a business, remember? Not partners. You know all your so-called business meetings? The ones that Liam always came back drunk from? Now listen. I, I served him the beer. Now I can't swear to the business prowess, but I can certainly promise you they put in the hours drinking Tom and Liam, not Carla. Did you give him alibis? No. But I know it's hard after all this stuff at the wedding, but I'm sure there's no to it. Carla was marrying Tony. She's married him. Yeah. Put the wedding off, though, didn't they? Of course. After what happened with Liam. Which bit? The dying bit or the affair? Don't do this to yourself. You knew that Liam kept Carla's part in the business from me. And you knew that he was making calls to her on the stag night. I want to know what else you knew, Tom. Nothing. Maria, don't 
Tom's on your side. Yeah, you're always saying, is there anything I can do, anything at all? Well, I only want one thing. Please, tell me the truth. Did you ever suspect anything? No. I didn't suspect. What then? What? Nothing. I wondered once, early on in all the business stuff, and then I realised I was wrong. Honestly, that's the absolute truth. You wondered. And I was wrong. I'm positive. Hand on heart. Don't twist what I'm saying, Maria. Look, I know it's hard. But please, let's not think bad of him. It's a misunderstanding. We all miss him, you know. I better go. I knew you were wrong. You wondered. You don't wonder, Michelle, if there's not there. Did you not just hear what he said? Someone knows something! Maria, you have seriously got to let this go. I've got a right to know what sort of man my child's father was! <laughs> She'd not have married Tony, would she? If it was true. No, no, no. I mean, you don't mess around with someone like that if you're arts with someone else, do you? No, of course not. It's... What did you have to say that for? Me? No, Maria, there was nothing going on. That is all it needed, Tom. That's what I say. Uh, leave him alone. I just calmed her down. Look, he's done nothing wrong. You go and sit in the booth, mate. I'll bring it up. Maria, you've been gone ages. She's fragile. Thanks for siding with Tom, by the way. Make me a brew now for that. Yep. Uh, I'm busy. Steve! I'll make you one. You go sit yourself down. No, Ty, listen. I've changed my mind. Michelle! I'm, I'm, I'm fine, honestly. I'm probably just being a bit oversensitive. Oversensitive? You'd have to have the eye of a rhino not to be knocked by that. Okay, well, I'll talk to him later when we're not in the goldfish bowl. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll have the upstairs all to yourself tonight because I've got Brazilian crunch. <laughs> oh, what now? Maria! <sighs> ah, <sighs> Becky. <laughs> You couldn't give me an hour right now, could you? It's just that Steve's just lost me another pair of hands. Oh, bit of a row. Oh, do you know what? I don't know what's got into him. But I tell you what, I won't put up with that behaviour for long. <laughs> Where's Leanne? Uh, she's just popped to the flat to get me somewhere. Yeah, am I any use? Come on, Maria. Oh, OK. Has Carla found you? Me? Yeah, well, you two are close, aren't you? Well, we're mates, but she's on her honeymoon, isn't she? So? She made lots of calls the night of Tony Stag do to Liam. Did you know that? Maybe you two should... Did you know that? Is this about what Sally said at the wedding? <laughs> no, it's about what Carla said to you about Liam. Maria, come on, love. Let Leanne get back to you. Were they having an affair? Maria, Sally was drunk. She was probably just... Leanne, Rosie's got film of him kissing. Maria, love, I know this is tough for you, but this is a business. Leanne's my staff. You're going to have to do this some other time. I'm sorry. Come on, Maria, this is getting you nowhere. She knows some of... I don't, honest. Do you? No, Summer. No! I think I might just have to make you a brew for that one. Oh, really? Just doing my job. Oh, uh, Simon's school bag. Not ready, is it? Yes, why? It's left at the top of the stairs. Thought he might need it. Oh, damn. It's got his swimming stuff in. It's, he's got his homework and his sandwiches. Poor kid, he's going to be in bits. Keith. Sorry, Lee. I'm just sorry. Yeah. Pizza. Back to work. Ah, yeah, for my sins. I keep having to remind myself that when I'm retired and I'm stuck in the house all day with Ken and my mother, I shall look back on work as a joy. <laughs> I'll swap you. 
Work for Dev. Oh, God bless the city council. Mm -hmm. Peter! You can write to the jockey if you want, Mr Hatsar, but I'm sure he didn't fall off on purpose. Leanne, where's Peter off to? Peter? Yeah, just now. Oh, nowhere. Is something wrong? No, no, everything's fine. Oh, I'm going to ring him. There's something not right All here. right, all right. He's left Simon's bag. And he's been avoiding me for that? Yeah, well, he didn't when you and Ken decided he wasn't up to the job again. He's gone to drop it off now, that's all. Oh, he's going to kill me for saying something. Oh, for... He doesn't have to hide every little mistake. You won't say out, will you? No, of course I won't. We just want him to feel that we're ready to trust him again. He doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> well, that's lucky, then. <laughs> So, do you hear any knocking when you're revving it up, or braking, or changing gear? I don't know, just when I'm driving. Are you wearing perfume? Yeah, I dropped a spanner on my bag earlier. But, quality stuff this, you know. I tell you, this will be gone by the end of tonight. It's a proper bargain. How much? Yeah, I'll, t I'll take a look at it and give you an estimate later. What, the car or the perfume? Yeah, everything, yeah. Um, Right, I'm going to have to go. You got your keys? Just on my way now, Mo. See you later. See ya. Hi, Maria. Is that for me? Why? You booked a table at a flash restaurant for everybody? I'll cancel for this. I did get a good discount on that worktop, you know. Really good. Paid now. Now. Ish. I'm all right, love. I wouldn't do this otherwise. I'm not stupid. Taking on a dodgy loan, says you are. Do you remember that box you had when you were little? Sang Daisy Daisy. You sang it if I opened it. Really rubbishly. Did I? I made a daft yawning sound. Oh, oh, oh. That cushion out and all. Less than. Thought it was a freebie with the work top. Liar. Tina, love, I'm not daft. I'm just looking out for some people I've met that I like. One of whom is yours and the other, I hope, is mine. Daisy, Daisy. Kettle's going on if you're interested. If you ever go right, I'll shout my dad. He's not there. He's deleted the video now, so you've got no reason to talk to me, OK? I want to know everything that you know. I don't know anything. When did you film it? How many times did you see them together? I only saw them the once. Rosie, you tell me or I swear, as soon as Tony gets back, you're going to regret this. Leave me alone. Hey, he's been made just as big a fool of as me. What do you think he'll say when he finds out you've been spying on his wife? I wasn't. Do you think he'd ever have you in his factory again? He knows. He knows what? He's seen the video. He's seen it? When? When has he seen it? So you can't threaten me. Rosie, when has he seen it? When has he seen it? Was it before he married Carla? Leave me alone! Was it? Tell me! Of course it was. She only married him yesterday, didn't she? Walk off. I've got things to do and there is nothing else to say. I don't think Tony does know. Why would he marry Carla if he knew she'd been with Liam? I don't know. All I did was show him the video. What he makes of it is none of my business. Oh, who got it wrong? When did he see the video? The day John State took me away. Weeks ago. I didn't mean to show me. I was I was just a bit upset and You showed it him and not me. I was a bit tied up. In John State's granny's attic. Remember? I have to go. So why didn't Tony tell me about it then? Maybe he knew it was nothing. Nothing? She wasn't even dressed. Well, speak to him and not to me.
What? Nothing. What have I done now? You know, Michelle's making you a special meal tonight, don't you? No one told me. Well, I'm telling you now, so don't go shoveling that down your neck. I'm hungry. Poor love can't starve himself all day. Hey, you are not helping. Talking of which, Rebecca, my dear. Oh, whatever it is, the answer's no. Just a couple of hours tonight. Oh, I've just done you an extra shift. So Michelle and Steve can spend a nice romantic evening together. If you don't, I'll have to miss my Brazilian crunch. Time and a half. And early finish tomorrow. Go on, then, just for you, Liz. <laughs> Well, I hope you have a really lovely time tonight. Thank you. Yes, yeah, she's in the back. I'll just go get her. All right. OK, calm down, love. I'll call her now. I know you said, but two days notice. Dad, I don't even want her. I don't know nobody in Spain. What's it supposed to be? Billy Norm, it's sat around some lousy pool. I'm happy here. There's millions of places I can live. Sauce. No, thanks. Dad, trust me, it's not a problem. Three pounds. All right, same to you. Bye. You can end up in a cardboard box for all he cares. Where's Minnie? You tell me. She ain't gonna die of a work-related disease, is she? What did your dad want? Ex-dad. He's letting house out. What, your house? Hmm, gotta be out by Monday. It's tough, isn't it? Tough on me, Mum. Not a problem for me. Well, where will you go? I'm having my bestie mate, your fella. <laughs> what can he do? Well, I can stop at his. No problem. There's not a lot of room at Gales. Well, I curl up small. Anyway, we'll have a laugh. You, me, David. Woo. No, there's not a lot of room at all. She was only saying last night. Well, she's got a soft spot for me. She's only just got rid of Graham. I'm telling you, no chance. Are you sure you saw a real kiss? I mean, it, it could have been some sort of friendly hello or something. I've lost everything. We weren't together long, but I thought... I loved him, Michelle. And I thought that he loved me. He did. Of course he did. Tony said all he ever did was flirt. He told me there was never anything going on. You lied. Well, you don't know that. Look, you're putting yourself through so much. They spent at least one night together. I know that now, and it's changed everything. All my memories poisoned. I don't know if he loved me or her. If he was lying all the time. If he wanted to be with her when he was with me. Now you're getting yourself too worked up. Why is this so okay with Tony when it's turned my world upside down? How could he just know all this and go on and get married anyway. Maria. And not just marry her. Have Liam being his best man. I don't get it. And his brother said something the night before the wedding, Pat. He said something about Liam being best man. What? I don't know. I can't remember. It... I asked him something or... Anyway, Tony interrupted. Well... You can ask him yourself, can't you, when he comes back off his honeymoon? Well, I've got to go. I wish I could stop you worrying. Liam loved you. Yeah, I thought he did. Now I just feel robbed. I'm sorry, you've got to go. I wish I could stay. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, of course. Go on. You're not going to do anything? No. Just try and calm down. Take the dog for a walk. Do normal things. Good. Thanks. Think about the baby, eh? That lovely little baby you're going to have. Tony, it's me, Maria. Um, I need to talk to you. Can you call me back as soon as you get this, please? It's about Liam. I think you know what. Hey, Mr. Perfect.
few men. Just need plastic. Well done for telling everyone. Oh, it's not hot, is it? Why don't you shout it so the rest of the street can hear you? Oh, well, if I'd have known it was hot. It's not hot. It's surplus stock. Look, we just like to tell people it's not tough, so they feel like they're being naughty. They like that round here. Mm -hmm. Here. Let's have another sniff. No, no, don't wave it around here. Why not? Because I'm supposed to be working. Great, just pretend we're talking about your car. <gasps> you are? Yeah, sorry I've not had a chance to take a look at her just yet. Boss, just going to go and do a test drive. She's got an intermittent banging. Well, if you wanted to carry me off to some romantic hideaway, you only had to ask. Can you imagine? Get in. Look, it was my idea. I don't want dinner for two with Michelle. It's not a dinner I'm worried about. It's what you have for pudding. What we have for... Don't be daft. You and her with candles and soft music and a great big rack of lamb. Just had lamb. It's not the flaming lambs, Dee! Just make sure you have a really, really horrible evening, please. We will. There's something really sick and twisted, you know, about me working down here so you and her can be all romantic up there. Look, we won't, I promise. Cut me out out today. Cut your throat. I wonder it's making funny noises. The oil light's flashing. But isn't that supposed to? Uh, no, it's not supposed to. Look, that light is telling you that your engine's about to explode. But when was the last time you topped it up with oil? I top up the petrol. Right, so you've not checked your dipstick? Dipstick? That's what my dad calls me. Hey, do you like my flow holder? <laughs> Come on, belt up. Let's see if she's as bad as she sounds. But we won't be going very far or very fast. Not Blackpool, then. <laughs> If you're lucky. Going up to the final furlong and oh, mind your head. Oh, mind the ceiling. Oh, and he wins. Oh. I'll tell you what, he's a big strong lad. Phew. So, uh, everything all right? Yeah, fine. Leanne, uh, thanks for, you know. What? Doing my job is what you pay me for. I know, but I keep abandoning you. So you're going to let me say a proper thanks when we finish? Oh, that sounds interesting. Does it? A drink or, I don't know, a meal? OK. Great. Which? Either. OK, well, uh, we'll have a meal then. And I promise uh, I'll stop pretending this is about work or saying thanks or anything else. Right, so what is it all about then? It's about me and you going out having a very nice time together because we like each other. Do we? Yes, we do. So, er... Uh, how do you fancy staying with Gran and Grandad tonight? Yeah, Grand's hot chocolate. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, we'll get some marshmallows, put them on top, eh? Yeah. Right, well, I'll, I'll ask them then if they can babysit, but I'm sure they will. Right, well, go on then, get gone. <laughs> we have got some serious work to do. Right. See these pencils here? Find all the blunt ones and then you can sharpen them, okay? So I spoke to Rosie about that video. You've got to stop worrying about this silly little kiss. You'll drive yourself bonkers. I'm not an idiot, Tom. I watched that video 50 times. I know what I saw. It wasn't just a kiss. Been there all night. It must have been. So why didn't Tony say anything? Tony? Yeah, he knew about it. He's seen the video. Hang on. Rosie showed it him. Why would she do that? I can't get my head around Tony knowing, keeping it all secret. And then oh. just marrying Carla anyway. You must have got this wrong. When did Rosie show it him? The day that John State took her. She's odd, that Rosie. Why would you video someone kissing anyway? Hang on. The day that John State took her, that's... What? Tony saw Carla and Liam kissing before he invited us to the caves. Right. Well, that's where he asked Liam to be his best man. Why would he do that? I don't get it. Would you ask Liam to be your best man if you'd just seen your fiancé kissing him? Not even dressed kissing him? You've got to stop asking these questions. You make yourself ill. No, I need to speak to Pat. You don't, Maria. Well, he must know why Tony chose Liam. Straight after he sees the video, he goes and asks Liam to be his best man. Something's not right, Tom. <laughs> Good 
You've never heard of health and safety? Oh, sorry, I'll stick it. Um, what are you doing with this? Nothing, I was just a. Uh... Insecticide? No, oh, it's perfume. And it ain't knocked off. Ty, it obviously is. No, I'm just looking after it for Pam. Well, she pays your wages now. Sorry, I'll take it home. Oh, that's what you was doing before, wasn't it? Selling it to that girl? No. Yeah. She only bought one bottle. Does this look like Dodgy Dave's bargain basement? I'm sorry, Kev, I'm just trying to save up a bit, you know, for the wedding. You know, if you put as much effort into your job as you do your anti pam flaming scams, we won't be two days behind in the worksheets. Sorry, boss. One salt and vinegar, one cheese and onion. You choose. It was a surprise at the time, you know. Everyone thought his brother would be best man. It's banned, remember? Break from the house. Change the subject. That pat might be in there. Okay, one last thing. For now, I reckon Tony must have told Carla about the video. And Carla must have explained it. Liam never liked him. Tony must have known that. That's why that best man thing was so weird. Maybe, but then... Once Liam got over Tony buying him out of Underworld, they got on okay. They didn't. They were polite, yeah, but they were never pallet. And if he knew that Liam and Carla would... <sighs> ah, we thought you'd got lost. Sorry. I had to track them down. They can't do it. Ah. Oh, well, that's a shame. Yeah, well, it's funny how they always go on about having him, and then when I asked for a few hours of babysitting, they're miraculously busy. Well, to be fair, you didn't give them much notice. <sighs> I really wanted a night off. Yeah, but they do, and all they are entitled. So, uh, how do you fancy a cosy night in? In where? Mine. Ours. Could have an Indian. Mmm, I had an Indian last night. All right, pizza then. Thai, fish and chips, uh, scrambled egg on toast, anything you like, you name your poison. What do you think? Pizza? Yeah? Great. So, uh, what time shall we say? One condition. I get to read Simon his good night story. They don't have a good night story. He does tonight. Deal? Deal. Deal. <laughs> you know, I was worrying about my mum and dad and and then I was I was worried about Maria. I know. And I'm really missing Liam. You are. And somehow, in the middle of all that, you might have thought that I'd forgotten about you. No. But I hadn't. Not really. It's no big deal. But it is. You and me, Amy and Ryan, you know, we're, we're a family now. And you were so kind to me, Mum and Dad. Was it? Yeah. You know, running them round everywhere. Oh, right, yeah. This evening's about us. You and me. Together forever. Lovely. Hard day. Yeah, not bad. Been stuck under some dirty car all day. Yeah, look, is something wrong? No, no, it's fine. Is there anything you want to tell me? No, what do you mean? Any trips out with your gilly wiggly little wannabes? I saw you in a... Who? Mini stupid mouse, who do you think? Oh, oh, that mini thinger. She's just a dull brain. She doesn't put any oil in the engine or any air in the tyres. The engine sounded like a bucket of spanners. Have we got any cheese? So where did you go? Uh, just round the block. We barely made it back. Why? Nothing. Do you want an egg with that? Hey, yeah, when does this dance class start? Half an hour. Uh, let's get going then, aren't you, look? Ah. But my gear is upstairs. Michelle, Steve, candles, music. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I had to tip her out. I knew it would take a lot to put the spark back. Rack a lamp, stick it off with bud. Are you finished? Uh, I just ran out of the fizzy stuff, so... Uh... Oh, right. Uh, I won't be a minute. Hey. 
You can tell her tonight. Yeah, if I get a chance. Yeah, well, if you just stop kissing her for like ten seconds. It's not like that. Oh, yeah, you can't wait to get back to her. Look at you. Steve's over there. Excuse Tom. Oh, just leave him. Have a word with him. Maria, don't. Steve, I'm gonna bet. Don't do this, Maria. You were mates with Liam, weren't you? Sorry, Maria, I can't stop. Did you already know that there was something going on with him and Carla? Maria. I'm sorry, Maria. I'm kind of... And the stag do as well. Tell me about that. Look, this is not going to do any good. Look, Maria, I'm really sorry, but I'm in the middle of dinner here, so... All right, but just tell me one thing. Were Liam and Tony mates that night or what? Well, now, Liam arranged it, didn't he, for Tony? So... You know they were. So they weren't arguing or anything? Well, you saw how shattered Tony was after the accident, so... Listen, love, why don't you sit yourself down? I'll fetch you another orange, yeah? No, you're all right. Just gonna go home. Hey, Maria. Sorry. Come and see my goodbyes. It's my round, I think. Pat. Come and join us. What are you having? No, I'm Maria, love. Go home. Sh she's exhausted. I'm not, I'm all right. Yeah, I will have that orange tar. Make it nice and long with lots of ice. Thanks, Pat. What are you doing back? It's called a break. Mm. Just been up to get a jumper. This central eating system's rubbish. We'll be back to hot water bottles and tartan slippers soon. Well, that's not our problem anymore, because your tenant's moving on Monday. You what? Dad's let it out. What, your own father's evicting us? Me. You're not even supposed to be here. He's a miserable old... Er, uh, you knew it would come in. Yeah, well, two days warning? I mean, where are you supposed to go? I'll be all right. I've got plenty of mates queuing up. I'm a popular guy. But you... Excuse me, I've got friends. I'll be fine. What you was worried about. Oh, how much have we had? We've only had one bottle. Yeah, right, and the rest. No, there's one open, so all right then. Just only one and a bit, then. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what, I'm glad we didn't go out. Yeah, me too. Couldn't sit like this in the Rovers, could we? Oh, could you imagine Blanche? She'd faint with excitement. <laughs> Our Peter and that terrible Leanne. Kissing bold as brass. What? I like to choose my own moment, thanks, not have it chosen for me. Oh, what well, the trouble is, so do I. Oh, Simon, mate, what's wrong? What's the matter? Hey. A giant was looking in the window. A giant? You see, that's you and your bedtime story, that. Hey, hey, it was the big friendly giant. I didn't like him. Oh, hey, mate, there's no giants in Coronation Street. I've been for years. Leanne, you're not leaving. Yeah, I think I better had a. You sleep well, Simon. Listen, um, I'll see you in the morning, yeah, and thanks for a lovely evening. You're not going to leave me with all that washing up, come on. <laughs> what, all two plates of it? I think you'll cope somehow. All right. See ya. Shame you're not stopping longer, mate. I could have taken you down to watch City. Ah, you want to get yourself up north, mate? See some real football. Taxi's here, Pat. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Where are you? Pat. You look after that bump. See everyone. Just let him go, yeah? Wait, I'm gone. You all right? Why didn't Tony ask you to be best man? What? I'm sorry, um, you started telling me. Did I? Yeah, the night before the wedding. But Tony interrupted. I suppose he had the right, it was his wedding. So why didn't he ask you then to be best man? I won't be a minute, Tony. What is this? I mean, you're his brother, are you better? He thought it would be a nice gesture after you lost your baby. I thought you two had fallen out though. <laughs> me and Tony? <laughs> we don't get together often enough to fall out. Who told you that? Tony did. He told everyone. Did he? I hope you get the wrong end of the stick. No, he said he couldn't ask you because you weren't talking. Not that I can remember. What did he tell you about Liam? Nothing. You weren't saying how sad it was. He never said anything about Liam and Carla. Like what? Like that they were having an affair. No. <laughs> they were kissing, you know. He saw him. I can't help you. I didn't know Liam. I hardly know Carla. She wasn't even dressed. Spent the night together. And then Tony went and asked Liam to be his best man. 
Why would he do that, Pat? He wouldn't, love. You don't know my brother. If our Tony thought anything was going on between me and Carl, he wouldn't have gone up the aisle. Unless he'd killed him first. See you. Have you packed yet? The only thing I'm packing is a punch. Mm, said that was a no, then. Oh. A human being would be a fine thing. What are you doing? Meter readings. Dad told me to do electric and gas. What do you think you're doing? Oops! New tenants are going to be here by midday. Oh, now, where did I put that red carpet? Oh, very nice. You know, your father's pulled some stunts in his time. He needs the rent. It's a human rights issue, this. It's time to ship out, Mum. The fat lady's singing. Geneva Convention. You know, I bet there's a clause somewhere. They have clauses for everything. Oh, you're not even supposed to be here. Tell you what, I bet Aunt Cafford put you up for a few nights. On that Z bed? I'd end up in Stoke Mandeville with curvature of the spine. Oh, look great. My last sig. I can't even think straight unless I've got four on the trot. Hey, you can't spark that in here, it'll stink. What a shame. Oh. I feel like I'm on death row. Look, if I go to the shop and buy you some cigs, are you going to start packing? Well, I haven't got much choice, have I? Well, that's all you got to say, then. Why would Pat lie? If him and Tony haven't fallen out, why would Tony ask Liam to be best man? Well, I thought we agreed that only Tony can answer this question. His phone's still switched off. Well, he is on only move. It's all right for some. You're just going to have to sit this out. I can't wait that long, Tom. I'm going to get some vitamins down your neck into that baby. Hmm. Move on, Maria. Eat for two, Maria, eh? You can't keep torturing yourself. You'll go mad. The not knowing is what'll send me mad. Why can't anyone understand that? We were worried about you. But worrying is no good to me. Just help me get to the truth. Pat said Tony had asked Liam to be his best man because his baby had just died. Yeah. But Tony told me and Liam and Carla that he'd had this big row with Pat and that Pat was refusing to organise the stag do so he wasn't going to ask him to be best man. Maybe Tony was being diplomatic. In a cack-handed way, maybe he didn't want to patronise Liam and he pretended he'd fallen out with his brother. Maybe Tony really wanted Liam to be best man. Yeah, but why? Tony asked Liam to be his best man after he'd seen the kiss. He booked us a flaming weekend away. Got all the drinks in, wouldn't let us pay a penny. He was like our new best friend. You need to hold on to the facts. He married you. Whatever did or didn't happen, he chose you. Will you open the door, please? What's the point? You're moving out in a bit. Mother, open the door. Locked and bolted, front and back. It's freezing out here. Well, good training for life in a cardboard box, then. You've barricaded yourself, then? Hmm. If necessary. I'm a sitting tenant. Tenants pay rent. Tenants have contracts. My dad would go ape if he found out you were anywhere near place. You know, some sons would stand shoulder to shoulder with the mothers. Giving the letting agent what for? It's my dad's house. He can do what he wants with it. You'd have made a good errand boy for Hitler. Oh. He's freezing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. You know what? You're going to have to come out eventually. So I've got your smokes. And here's some I prepared earlier. Oh. 
So, shall we, um, shall we split the difference and say 22? Let's go for half past, cos uh, I'm inducting a new volunteer today. Sounds painful. No, well, it's rather a grand term. Normally, Harriet does the honours, but um, she's gone down with a tickly cough. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Apparently, this volunteer is serving out her community service at the hospital tea shop. Don't leave your purse lying around. (laughs) Well, I intend to make a point of doing precisely that, to show my faith in her. A complete stranger with a criminal record? Faith was never meant to be easy. I I want our troubled friend to find her placement at the hospital a fulfilling and life-affirming experience. Mm -hmm. Stay back! Right back! Oh, cheers. Not embarrassing at all. Nice one, cheers. You've had it too easy, that's your trouble, yellow belly. I'm all right, Jack. She's doing my head in. You know, when I were breastfeeding you in our mel, that poor little mite couldn't get a look in. You used to drink me dry, guzzling away. (laughs) Pity. (laughs) You know all these mad words that are in your head? Do you always have to say them out loud? A yes, man, who see his own mother out on the street. Oh, get a job. Rent a flat. <laughs> What's going on? Our new tenant's moving in. She won't shift. My husband, currently lodging it in Spain, is kicking us out like paupers. Ex-husband. She locks herself in house. I'd admit defeat if I were you, Teresa. And if I were you, I'd go for a face, head and body transplant. You're wasting your time, love. Come on. What am I supposed to do? Short of kicking the door down, love, I've no idea. I'm sorry. Why don't you come with us, eh? Have a nice hot drink. Can't. Gonna stay on mentalist watch. <laughs> Talk her down. Like SAS, what's in it for her if she unbolts the door? Diddly. So then dangle a couple of carrots? Andrew could have do it. <sighs> it's cost me a fortune already. Oh, well, Darrell, smash your window then. You'll think of something. Oh, cheers. I don't know what Jerry saw in him at first place. Oh, I quite like redheads myself. <laughs> That's fighting <laughs> talk. <laughs> um, I'm not nagging, but um, how long will it be? Bespoke always takes longer. Nearly there now. Right. Good. <laughs> Poor Daryl. He doesn't deserve that. Stop feeling guilty. You're not running a youth hostel. Well, would you mind telling Graham that? Because he's round here more than ever. (laughs) We never get the place to ourselves. This is a rarity, all right. I'd whisk you off to bed this minute, only I've got disappointed of Weatherfield not nagging me about a kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) Mom! What are you doing? Can't see you. Mum! What's Malabar? Hey? Malabar. Look. Stop it, will you? <laughs> Don't know much about your product, do you? Uh, it's listed as an ingredient. Well, there you go then. Something you stick in perfume. That is so not an answer. Malabar is a region of southern India. So? So, that's like saying contains lavender, jasmine and Northumberland. Might even be racist. I'm not racist. (laughs) Really, Min? Hiya. Uh, bit of a situation, but don't worry, I'm across it. I am very across it. I'm 
sorry, my mum, she's just, er, uh, emotional. Right, I know the feeling. It's turned off. Yeah, thought you'd be well in by now. We've got ourselves one Looney Tunes squatter. And whose fault is that? What? Oh, everything you touch, it turns to... Oh, I might have known this would be my fault. This is some global warming. Who's this? Son of Looney Tunes. Hiya. Well, let's just kick it in. Oh, and I've no front door. Good shame with it. Go on, son. I'm with you in spirit. No, don't. Don't, please. Please, 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 please. Mum! Will you just come outside, please? Can you not hear desperation in my voice? We've got a contract. We've got terms and conditions. Oh. This is not the face of a nappy woman. I'm sorry. Oh, don't sweat it, man. Look. Just give us a little bit more time. I'll get her out. You've got an hour. Oh, thank you. If she's not out by one o'clock, I'm unleashing the beast. Hi, love. The do-gooder in chief's expecting me. Voluntary services woman, Harriet. Well, to start. Head of lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> Bat is bare. Janice, Bat is bare. Janice, I'm your do-gooder-in-chief for today. <gasps> no way. Oh, brilliant. Small world, though I wouldn't want to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> I would dread in this. There's me worrying about asking for an early dart. <laughs> oh, clipboard. Very official. Well, the voluntary sector runs a remarkably tight ship. It has to be done properly. You'll be under my strict supervision. I'm not sure if the fact that we know each other doesn't present a problem of protocol. Oh, ring Judge John Deed, tell him that the British justice system's under threat. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, what have you got lined up for me then? I don't mind a bit of blood and gore. Oh, I'd love to see one of them heart massages. You know, when they wind their ribs out like that and then stick their hands in. I tell you, gurneys, resource, crash unit, I'm there. <laughs> You'll be working with me in the charity tea shop, washing up, clearing tables, and sorting through jumble. Oh, oh I missed you, Lord. I'm having a total mare. What? Hey, what's the rush? My mum's refusing to move out, so the new people can't move in. And there are knocks on. Either the front door, my head, or both are going to get kicked in. What's the money for? My so-called mother. What, hey, what can I do to help? Say something nice at my funeral. Well, look, your accommodation problem is a no-brainer. What? Just trust me, you'll be fine. Whatever. I'm going to have to go. And another 20 when you open door. And another 50 when you come out. Oh, cheers. Oh, uh, well, you freezing to death won't help anyone. I thought this would swing it. Uh, Gary will swing it, I'm telling you. Sweet Charity is a very special place. An oasis of calm away from the misery of illness for patients and for visitors. Got ya. Some people seek tea and sympathy. Some tea and quiet empathy. Well, if it's empathy... Silent, then... wordless companionship. Well, I think I've struck luck here. Boy, George had to sweep the streets of New York for his community service. Oh, there's no shame in that. Oh, well, that's what he said. <laughs> Paparazzi, eh? give him a right mouthful. Uh, uh, the rotor is sacrosanct. If any of us has designs on the donated clothing, we have to buy it. I think I'm all right for a few nobly cardigans, thanks. <laughs> You're a, a spirited lady, Janice. I, I look forward to giving your casework a glowing reports. You are? Well, I, I have to report back on your attendance, attitude, performance. Um, 
after you've uh, mopped the floor, you could make a start on the bric-a-brac. Last month, a bone-handled bread knife I bought from a car boot for 40 pence sold for three pounds ninety-nine. Mmm. Oh, this is my beautiful baby. Beautiful. Tip, tip. With a T. We're not American. Okay, kiss. So, did you pine for your poor old daddy? When I wasn't sticking pins in your effigy. Mm. Oh, be fair. Him and Daryl are big buddies now. Yeah, I can tolerate his company, but only in small doses. Oh, well, he's having a housing crisis. Uh, is he? Uh, yep. Yeah. So, it looks like we'll have to get a place together. <laughs> you what? Uh, back in an hour. No arguing. What? Miss Finland! Oh, Miss Chandler! <laughs> oh, you reek! I have money. Here, yeah, look. Retails at thirty-nine ninety-nine. Uh, excuse us. Excuse us. You are not getting a place with Kebab Boy. He's homeless as of today. Yeah, it's not your problem. Dad. Now listen, you can't afford it. You're too young. You've got a home. Most kids your age would die for. This isn't happening. So I've got to sleep tight in my comfy bed while he's in some manky B and B or a hostel or a box room in some nut job's house that stinks of weed. No, I don't think okay, so. Well, let's compromise. Let's compromise. As a temporary measure, Daryl can, can can have the spare room. Right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to draw up some house rules. Oh, thank you. You're the best. <laughs> he was pining. There are better views than this, you know. Fancy the red wreck? No, I'm fine here. Yeah. I like the cold on my face. Yeah. Liam always had the house like a sauna. Maybe he used to go around to Carla's when he was walking you, eh? I'd be gone for hours sometimes. He'd always come home dead happy, contented. I need to speak to Tony, Tom. I know you do. He didn't wish Liam well. You hated him. Went around to see Kevin Webster before. He reckons Tony's the most vindictive man alive. Really? Nothing makes sense. You're exhausted. Yeah, well, maybe. But I'm not losing the plot, you know. No. They were having an affair, I know they were. And I know that Tony knew. You heard your mother. Look, right, I'll get her out, even if I have to drag her by her hair. That's not a bad idea, that. Gizzy crutch. No, no, whoa, whoa! Oh. Good lad! Oh, good lad! Oh. Oh. strong, son. What have you done? You mad cow. Sticks and stones. You've got to search for the hero inside yourself. Search for the secrets inside. Watch where you put your hands, you filthy beggar. Search for the hero inside yourself until you find the key to your life. Never mind the key to your life. Where's the key to Mel's cuffs? Well, I have to do it the hard way. To pop my chainsaw, yeah? It's in the transit. Mum! Key! There wasn't one. <gasps> Hiya. You all right? Mm. Good. Mm. Hey, you can have this one, you know. I'll put another one on. No, I'll just have a brew. Ain't she's going to undo all your hard work? Eh? Hey? The gym. Well, it cancels itself out, really. You can get addicted, you know. What, to cheese? Exercise, the endorphins. Nah, I'll make you that brew. 
You want to be careful. You back to the live round that gym. What's it called again? I was telling Amber, I couldn't remember the name. Blakeson's, is it, next to the juice bar? If you, yeah, if you want to see the kit. How do you mean? Well, they've got this cross-trainer in from the States. It's proper state-of-the-art job, so I've been giving it the full workout on that one. You know, if you're going to walk down the aisle with a six-pack, I should probably get in shape myself. <laughs> oh, you're perfect just the way you are. You should take me down there. We'd probably qualify for a free session or something. Maybe. Yeah, I defo need to tone up. It'd be good having you show him in the ropes. Won't feel so self-conscious. Uh, get off! I'm going to take you to the highest court in the land! Get off! Now I can start fumigating. That palace is spotless. Uh, the grease on that. <laughs> you are lucky I can't knock you into next uh, week. Mum, shut your face. I dread to think what your bathroom's like. Eddie, phone Kim and Aggie. Oh. Talk about fighting fair. I've got another door on me arm. And I've got a front door with a big hole in it. Oh. See the new neighbours have landed? <laughs> <laughs> Make a poor woman homeless. You'll never get a week of sleep in that house. Oh, Mom. no way, poor Dazza. Mum! Get off me! I'm sure they'll find a bed for you at the funny farm, especially if you tip up looking like that. Get off me! Shoot <laughs> it! Will you give over? The minute white courts will be here in a minute. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no way. What's wrong? Will somebody tell me what's going on? You heard the lady. I can't believe it. Van. Oh, no way am I living next door to those scumbags. I beg your pardon. Phone the landlord, tell him we've changed our minds. We've got to live here now, we signed a contract. Yeah, like that means anything to you people. What do you mean, you people? Don't talk to my dad like that, all right? You signed a contract with us. You only did half a job. We could have built the Taj Mahal in the time we spent in Hang your kitchen. Hang on a minute. Don't tell me these are the yeah. people... Refused to pay me bill, swiped all me gear. Well, I've got news for you. This is a decent street. Decent people live here. So put your scummy gear back in your scummy van and get out of here. You're only doing this deliberately just to wind us up. What? You, are gonna what? <laughs> you lay one finger on him and the cops be here like a shot. She's right. Best we all just calm down. Why don't I put the kettle on? Where are you going now? Casualty. To get rid of these. Here. You, shut your mouth! Shut yours! Shut yours! What's kicking off? Looks like you've got new neighbours. Nice. You should have stayed the other side of the street. Oh, yeah. Much classier, I think. Mm. You still get the odd creme over there, though. Who? You. Me? Will you knock off out your bag? It's for a special occasion, though. Well, so like the judge, or better still, tell it to Molly. No way. I'm serious. Molly's putting two and two together and coming up with 500. It's under control. Don't make me laugh. You're playing with fire. If Molly knew half the stuff you was getting up to... Yeah, well, she's not going to know, is she? But if she did... You won't need all this extra cash for the flash wedding, cos it won't be one. Just leave it will you, Kev. I'm gonna go and join her, Jim. Why, are you gonna go and get fit? Oh, no. To hide behind more lies. I'm not listening. I'll see you in an hour. Did she watch how you talk to my family? You being such upstanding citizens? Ah, you know not about us. We know you ripped out my kitchen. I'll rip some else out in a minute. After breaking and entering my home? Who says? I'll come off it. We know it with you lot. Prove it. Every time the coppers nab you, which is probably twice a day, that's what you say, isn't it? Prove it, prove it. You ripped their kitchen out first. 
you get inside. Well, you got evicted because of you lot. It wasn't yours. You hadn't paid for it. You threatened my dad. He threatened me mum. That's how all the trouble started when he started shouting the odds, scared the life out of me. Oh, frightening women. You had no intention of paying for it. Your sort never do. I've had enough of this. You are asking for a good kick in there, seriously. Leave it, Gary. They're not worth it. Hello, can I help you? Yeah, I'd uh, like to join the gym, please. Oh, we've got a variety of membership schemes, all explained in this leaflet. And, and these prices, are they, um Per month. So can you join for, like, just a day? I tell you, if Jerry Morton thinks he's going to get any rent out of them... <laughs> well, I'll have a word with Daryl, see if we can get him shifted. Don't know why I let him move in in the first place. They probably use fake references, cash in hand. They had me fooled. I know the feeling. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you told me there was nothing to worry about. You had it all in hand. Do you want my advice? No. Just stay out of the way. Don't rile them. He's right. You shouldn't stoop to their level. Well, we can't just let them walk all over us. Trust me, mate. They are dog rough. And by dog... I mean, like Rottweiler, Staffy. Well, I can't believe they seem to think that we're in the wrong. Of course they do. Because with them, everything's always somebody else's fault. God knows what it'll do to the house prices. God knows what it'll do to the neighbourhood. And I don't want you saying or doing anything to wind their son up. Looks like a right lunatic. Yeah. David's a bigger loom. That's why this has started in the first place. Mm. You didn't mention that either when you told me what happened. What, what did you expect, Mum? And just to stand by and watch while they were ripping him off? I stood up to him, all right, and I'd do it again. In a straight fight, my money's on Gary and Len Windass every time. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Jobs a good un. Look at us, all our worldly goods and a few black bin bags. You've got your knickknacks and your mementos. I'm 41, Ed. I should have more to show for life than this. Well, I'm not the materialistic type. It's a good job, isn't it, cos we've got now. And I am materialistic. I want a nice new settee and a whacking plazy screen TV. Well, don't get on there, can we? This is meant to be a new start. Oh, yeah, fat chance of that. Moving next door to people that hate us. Normally it takes at least a week before that happens. It's not a joking matter, Gary. I can't believe you've pulled a stunt like this. Are you completely stupid? Don't look at me. Uh, I'll be uh, off now. I'll uh, leave you three to settle in. I wanted to show that weedy little git who threatened you that we mean business, yeah? Great. So we're labelled from day one. I don't know whether I should bother unpacking this lock. Sounds like we might be moving on again at this rate. Oh, well, love, we're not moving for another year minimum, I promise. Oh, no. Look. Did you pack this box? I told you to be careful. Look, it's broken. It's only a tile. It's not the point. I was going to put it up outside. It's a nameplate for a flat in Iamonte. You can't put it up outside a semi in Weatherfield. It was an apartment. I loved it. I know you did, love. We should never have come back to England. I had no choice. We've had nothing but bad luck since we've come back. Well, things are looking up now, love, I promise. Right, you two, carry on unpacking. Maria. Deb! You were there, weren't you, the night that Liam died? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Did you notice anything suspicious or odd? Maria, it was over in a split second, honey, I'm sorry. We were drunk. All of us. It was an accident. You want to talk to Jason? Jason? Why? I can't repeat it. Tyrone, tell me! Well, he reckoned that the car, or the driver of the car, that he never swerved or tried to put his brakes on. It's just like he drove straight at Liam. Oh, he didn't see Liam because Liam stepped out into the road. Did you hear that? Look, I'm just telling you what Jason told me. Tyrone, thank you. Thank you so much. It's 
so they're not your favourite people at the minute. You're dead right. They've got a vendetta against me, and thanks to you, they're living next door. Eh, uh, I've told you it's got nothing to do with me, mate. Yeah, well, if I were you, I'd just make sure your CCTV was switched on. You cheeky little swine. Do you sell glue? Mm-hmm. Oh, for your gaddy, is it? Super glue. I want two tubes, please. Two? Mm. One to clamp his gob shut and the other for this. <laughs> So, settling in all right? Oven's got no door and the door's got no glass. Well, not to do with me. You're the landlord's son. Oh, yeah, but... So get it sorted, or else we'll do it ourselves and knock it off the rent. Oh, and there's a patchy damp in the box room. Could cause emphysema if it's not sorted. Well, speak to agent. I hate estate agents. They're all stuck up. Two... What are you doing? Well, I'm not paying for it unless I know it works. You paid how much? Well, no. And that's just for a three-month trial. What, for a few weeks and a couple of running machines? Twenty running machines? And the place has got more tellies than curries? Tellies? It just makes it harder <laughs> to concentrate, if you ask me. I nearly fell off. Oh, and the car park, full of Porsches. I know. You're making it worse for yourself. <coughs> Shh, she's in. Hi, boys. Hiya. Just wondering what time we're working out. Whenever you like. Oh, I could murder a pint. Margot? Yes, please. Uh, I'll have a red wine tap. All right. So go on. How was the community service? Hell. Oh, give over. You're only helping out in hospital, gaff. Yeah, but I have a complete dragon supervising me. And she's on me case every five minutes, watching every single move I make. Who is it? Emily Bishop. <laughs> Listen, just because she goes to church doesn't mean she won't crack the whip. I'm telling you now, that woman is power mad. <laughs> Cheers. I really wish I'd keep the change. Jump to the garden. Can we go to the pub now? Yeah, go on then. What are you gawping at? Oh, well. God. Hey. Hey. Come here. Come here. Oi. I'll call the police. I, d I don't want to fight with you, Gail. It is Gail, isn't it? Yeah. I'm Anna. Look, this is... Mad, we hardly know each other. I know you're a windass. All oh, right, so that's it, we're written off. Talk about judging a book by its cover. That and the fact that your lad stole my kitchen. Look, we've got a choice. We can carry on brawling in the street, giving each other evils, or me and you can sit down like grown-ups and sort this mess out. Mental him. Good lad, though. You amaze me. Do I? I'd have never had you down as a type of bloke that pumps iron in a place like this. A customer recommended it. It's got all the latest equipment. Yeah, I can see that. I just don't think it's very you. Come on, then. Show us your routine. I don't really stick to one routine. Mm, you told me you did. What was it you said? Oh, yeah, you start by doing 50 reps on the weights, was it? Build up your body strength. Did I? 60 kilos, you said you push. Yeah, but best warm up first, aren't I? At least you got a new kitchen. This is dead smart. Thought you'd come round to apologise. It was your son who started this, you know. He's very scary when he's riled. Yeah, well, if you paid your bill on time. you never been late with a phone bill? Yes. Bet BT didn't send round a thug with a great big crowbar in his hand. Look, I don't condone what David did. 
We were waiting for an insurance payout at the time. I knew there'd be some sob story. My Eddie had a fall in Ayamante, Spain. Oh, he's due six grand, but it's taking forever for it to come through. I know we shouldn't have started spending it, but you're Joe. It's a very persuasive salesman. Oh, so it's Joe's fault? Me and you are in the same boat. We didn't know the half of what was going on. And if we had, we'd have sat down and sorted it out over a cup of tea. Speaking of which, that kettle just boiled. Sometimes you've got to push the pain barrier, babe. Are you OK? You shouldn't push yourself too hard. Yeah, it's fine, thanks. By the way, this is a copy of the contract. All right, Tan. Let's see. How much does this place cost, then? You can't put a price on your health, babe. Let me see. How much? I think we're very alike, you and me. Well, I'm not sure about that. You carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. I bet that lad of yours has given you plenty of sleepless nights. One or two. My mother had a saying, lads had drown them at birth. Well, he's calmed down since he met Tina. We've moved five times in the past two years. Really? Mm. So you might not stay around here too long? No, I want to settle down. I wanted to settle down in Ayamante. But that's another story. Well, I don't. Let's get the tea on. We have an apartment. I love to say in the word apartment. The master bedroom had an ensuite. Balcony with views over the marina, but that's another story. What meant to be. That's a great pity. Mm. Eddie knows he's cocked up. He's trying to make amends. That's why he ordered that blooming kitchen to get round me. I'm so glad we're having this conversation, aren't you? Well, no harm in being civil, is there? Is that pub at the end of the road any good? It's very nice, yeah. Why don't we go for a drink? Your family and my family. We can knock the lads' heads together. E I'm not sure that they... About get... half seven. Oh, go on, you know you want to. Oh, I think me and you are going to be big pals. Well, I am um, trying to keep myself to myself. You fussy, like me. Do you know what? I think we've clicked. So listen, I'm going to see you later on. Yeah? Hey, kids. The pub. Oh, no. The good star pulls in. Queen in hell, she's coming over here. Um, you've no jurisdiction now. Done my time. Oh, I, I just wanted to say congratulations. You're a real hit with one of the patients. Oh, what? There's a gentleman on George Formby Ward speaks very highly of you. Though I can't condone you giving away free biscuits. They've named a ward after George Formby. George Formby, Gracie Fields. It's a, a who's who of musical entertainers. <laughs> well done. See you again next week. Oh, she was a pussycat. Oh, aye. Off duty. Tell you when she goes through them automatic doors, the mist comes down. If you could see what I can see when I'm wiping tables. <laughs> he was hugging the mother of that psychopath. Physically touching one of them? She hugged me. I didn't really encourage her. You let her into the house? That's a form of encouragement. Yes. Because she said she wanted to sort things out. She was trying to hold out an olive branch. You've been brainwashed. And you did start this whole feud by threatening her. Well, thanks for your support, Mum. I just think that if she wants to put the whole thing behind us, then why shouldn't we? So, you're going to go for a drink with her tonight? Not just me. We all are. Do you know, if that no-mark boyfriend of mine doesn't show up soon, I'll have to send out a search party. It can be a right pain in the bum sometimes. It's all right. Right, so what's on your mind? 
You think I'm mad? I think I'm mad. Mel, get it off your chest. You're gonna think this is ridiculous. Go on. I don't think Liam's death was an accident. In fact, I know it wasn't. Tony knew Liam and Carla were having an affair, but he still asked him to be best man. All right, just stop right there, Maria. And Tyrone reckons that Jason... Oh, I said stop, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, no, but... Shut up, Maria! Just shut up! We're talking about my brother here. All right, we know how he died. You know how he died. And yeah, maybe there was something between him and Carla, but it takes crazy, ridiculous leaps of imagination for you to start thinking that... No, Maria, all right? You've got it wrong. Now get this ridiculous idea out your head. This is crazy. They shafted me. I don't want to socialise with them. Look, we've tried things your way and we've tried things David's way, so now we'll try things my way, OK? I can't believe they're doing this. We can't let things just carry on the way they are. No, nope, but we could force them off our street. And you really think that's going to happen? If you show any sign of weakness, they walk all over you. It, well, they're here now, so I don't want you saying or doing anything to upset them, OK? Hi. Hi, Anna, over here. Six hours I was down at Casualty. Look at you free, though. Lad in front of me had a cue ball stuck in his gob. Mm. Had to dislocate his jaw to get it out. Mm. Could hear the screams in Burnley. See, they've got their feet under the table now, then. Mm. You couldn't stay there forever, Mum. No. No. I don't know it's me who got myself into this mess. Take care of yourself, Mum. Keep in touch. Oh, okay. Hi. Hey. Me and Gail had a long chat this afternoon, didn't we, Gail? Yes, we did. And we decided that there's been mistakes made on both sides, but neither of us wants the bad feeling to carry on, do we, Gail? No, we don't. So we're going to make a fresh start, wipe the slate clean. So, Eddie, Joe, check out. What? Hey. Eddie, do it, Joe. Now, David, Gary. Shake hands. This is obvious, Ed, this is. David! No way, Mum. I'm not shaking his hand. I hate his guts. The feeling's mutual. Look, if you lot want to play happy families, that's fine. You can count me out. It doesn't work like that, does it? It's incremental. You know, you won't see any signs of improvement for ages and then one day, I'll walk through that door and it'll just be like, boom, muscle. So which is it? It's either incremental or it happens overnight. It can't be both. Well, it's incremental. Something is going on, Tyrone. Nothing's going on. Here's my evidence. That place was extortionate. Well, that ain't evidence. You'd never waste our savings like that. You couldn't find the changing rooms. You couldn't work the equipment. Only because I didn't want you to feel intimidated. Oh, only Pam. Hey, so how was the gym? Oh, it was rocking. It was deeply suspicious. Did you see him pumping iron? Is that what he's been pumping? Hey, come Christmas, you'll be like a Greek god. Tyronius. <laughs> Where are you going? Webster's garage. Don't get Saki. I'm not getting Saki. That's genuinely where I'm going. Hey, who's your favourite Greek god, Molly? Uh, mine's Eros. I don't know, Pam. Stop trying to change the subject. See you later. Tyrone! Come on, favourite Greek god. Come I on, Molly. I don't know. Zeus, whatever. We were trying to avoid conflict. Avoid conflict? It's a bit late for that. Well, suspend it then. None of this was my fault, remember? I shook Eddie's hand. I stood there and I shook his hand. 
Stevie, do you want to be talking to? But talking is what we're trying to promote. Oh, we should have had little flags on us tables and microphones. Yeah, well, the girls are yapping, aren't they? So the women. It's not the winning that matters to these people, it's the taking part. Surely it's better to be friends. Actually, I think I'm with David. Well, go and get these handles. Will you be able to fix them? Saw the boy out running this morning. All his hands bandaged up. Must do a bit of boxing. That's <laughs> all we need. Ring craft. Yeah, well, I'm doing a bit of boxing myself if they carry on. Never mind Amnesty International. Middle Street wasn't an alien. You don't know what you're talking about. Of course she was an alien. What would you know? So Granny Weaver was an alien. It was Meryl Streep. I remember the red hair. Red hair? You're on your own, yeah. Anyway, never mind, alien. Get down to that cab firm. Tell them that you don't mind working nights, your licence is clean and you're a people person without being overly chatty. I don't mind working nights, though. No, you don't. You just want me out there in the dead of night risking my neck so that you can lie in bed like a starfish. I want a new suite. It's not right, is that? I'd like an L-shaped one in battered brown leather. <sighs> Have you seen Piccadilly Gardens at three o'clock in the morning? Pimps, button men, old women with carrier bags full of newspapers and tea courses on their heads. You'll fit right in. <sighs> Lucky there's a couple of women between us, eh? Bit of diplomacy. Thatcher you were a woman, but we're that got us. I'm with you on that one, old son. Can I tempt you into a pint later? They might want to bury the hatchet. I'm not about to start supping with you. All right, Captain. Take it easy. Morning! She's had the baby. Who else? My sister-in-law, Yvonne. Oh. Oh, oh, wonderful. Eight pound in weight. Bang on. <laughs> so what they're calling it? I'm almost embarrassed to say. Go on. Electra. Electra? She said they'll give it Lecky for short. I said, you're joking. She said, no. I said to my brother, why can't you put a stop to this? He said, she thinks it's original. I said, when are you moving to trailer park? <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> Could have been more sensitive, but come on, Electra. Oh, it's dreadful, isn't it? Poor little girl. Girl? No, no, it's a boy. I beg your pardon. I'm kidding, it's a girl. Oh! <laughs> anyway, now listen. Maria's coming back to work today. Is that a good idea? No, it's a terrible idea, but I couldn't talk her out of it. And I've told you what's on her mind, haven't I? A conspiracy theory, yeah. Yes, <laughs> but... We don't entertain that. It's our job today to try and take her mind off the awful, awful things that's going on in her head. Murder, she said! Oh, Natasha, now stop it. Don't be light-hearted. She's serious. I mean, well, she's just looking for someone to blame. That's all it is. No one can blame her for that. Oh, Maria! Hiya. I'm an auntie. No, Michelle thinks I'm crazy. I know why you did it now. I've got that straight in my head. Just don't know how. It's important to lay down the ground rules. That's my only piece of advice. You're probably like me. You want to be your own man. Who are you again? If you want to trot out for a pint, for instance, you don't ask, you just go. Well, we don't really have that kind of relationship. We like to treat each other as equals. What's up? The wife. Who are you again? Another rule. Stay on your toes. Think fast. I'm going to the pub. Nice talking to you, though. Oh, yeah. What are you doing for lunch? Uh, probably just going to work through. Or maybe go to Roy's or I'll just go on for a sandwich or something. Right. Oh, it's been Rod Stewart morning on the radio. <laughs> Should have heard some of the harmonies of me and Kev. 
Yeah? Yeah, we started off with uh, Tonight Tonight, and then we did Sailing, and we was halfway through Maggie May, you know, with spanners for microphones and all that, and then this woman come walking in. Woman? Who was she? Do you know her? Yeah, she's just a regular customer, sounds a pound. How old was she? Well, I can never tell, between 38 and 70 or something. Anyway, then Kev says to her, he says, Oh, you're looking well, you've been on holiday. And she says, No, it's rust. <laughs> well, you had to pick us up off the floor. <laughs> Ty. Why don't we have nights tonight for our first dance? Yeah. Maybe. Who played the name woman in Alien? The film? Is it going to be going to? Eddie insisted it was Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep? In Alien? No. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they won't listen, will they? I mean, only complete idiot to think that Meryl Streep starred in Alien. <laughs> Meryl <laughs> Streep? All right, all right. Anyway, thanks for lending us this. Eddie dropped out as downstairs. Well, at least he was doing it. He won. It was in his way, so we booted it. Does, um, Gary ever hoover? Incessantly. Makes all the beds, dust, does the ironing. No. No, he's right. Clobber's easier stuff to shift. But you see, not everybody wants Pink Panther alarm clocks or 2008 calendars. Everyone wears T-shirts. T-shirts, saris, jewellery and socks fly off the shelves. What shelves? Well, the bag then. The proverbial shelves, Tyrone, the proverbial shelves. Hey, have you got any more pink pan for alarm clocks? They weren't right. Well, what was up with them? They were blue. Anyway, the thing is, Pam, I'm having doubts again. I'm not sure if I'm cut out for this. You not cut out for selling? That's like saying Ronnie O'Sullivan's not cut out for snooker. Well, in many ways he isn't. His personality coupled with the pressures of the modern game. I've never seen anyone sell like you. Punters, take one look at your face and put their hands in the pockets. It's beginner's look. Hey, you could sell nostalgia to the Irish. You could move blondes to Sweden. You could sell bacon to Jewish vegetarians. <laughs> Hello? Oh. Uh, I, uh... <clears throat> High the smallest horse ever was. Go on, have a guess. A uh, give in. Six inches fully grown, perfectly in proportion. He never was. Yeah, had little hooves, mane, everything. Uh, one of them shy horses, I think. You know, had furry ankles. Cats towered over him. What's that? What this? That's his new gym T-shirt, isn't it, Tyrone? Yeah, I've been to the precinct to buy it. Right. Well, I think I'm going to have another cup of tea. That last one it didn't take. Is that the gym you joined yesterday? What? I phoned them, asked the woman a few innocent questions like, when did my fiancé join? Well, I didn't join it yesterday. Don't insult me. You've not even collected your complimentary keyring. Complimentary keyring? Well, first few months were free, weren't they, Tyrone? You know, like a trial period. Yeah, and then that ran out, the trial bit, and that's why I joined them properly yesterday. So why didn't you just tell me that? Because I knew you wouldn't approve of the expense. I don't approve of the expense. Well, I'd love to stop and chat about it, but I'm flushing out Ken Barlow's engine. Well, don't be late. Remember, we're going to my dad's tonight. We're vetting the prototype cake. Oh, I won't be late. I'll have prototype cake and Manchester tart. Going to the gym first, are you? After work? Yeah, probably just for an hour, you know. So, you won't be having a Manchester tart on your travels? Not so much as a Manchester pudding. I'll see you later, love. Pam, keep it real. All right. If I lost my hand, I'd actually consider a hook. I think a hook would be quite useful for carrying shopping and so forth. Opening doors. <laughs> You'd be finished as a hairdresser. Oh, not necessarily. If it were a left hook, I'd be all right. I'd still have my right hand for cutting. I don't think the customers would be too happy, you know, seeing a great big hook flying about in front of their eyes. I'd put a cork on the point. Look, I've got to go. I've my hair done. No, it's not for you, it's for myself. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, don't be late. Sorry about that, love. That's all right. I think I'm somebody's three o'clock. Uh, yeah, mine, I think. 
She's just looking for ideas for an hairdressing competition. Oh, well, if you want any practice. It's not full enough. Yeah, sit down, Amy. Mm -hmm. That was my dad on the phone. Oh. I assumed you got a gentleman caller, Amy. Not much of a gentleman about him. He's off to a number of retirement homes. You know those villagey things? Oh, I'm sure he'll be very grateful for your support. Mm -hmm. The widows he's after. <laughs> you don't see much of him, do you? Well, he used to come round for his tea, but then he took a deep and irrational dislike for bus drives, and I don't see much of him now. We don't really communicate well, truth be known. Hi, Lou. Do you think Tony Gordon's capable of murder? Maria, shush. I'll tell you what I think, love. I think if all the streets in Manchester had speed bumps, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The way people drive in this city at night is disgusting. How did the driver know exactly where they were? That's what I want to know. I mean, exactly where they were. He wouldn't, would he, love? Come on, it was just some irresponsible maniac driving too fast. Mm. And anyone who drives erratically and causes an accident like that is murder. Never mind death by dangerous driving. Hey, you wouldn't like to run a brush over these, would you? While you've got the gear out? No, I wouldn't. Oh, go on, just a snit. What am I, your valet? Well, yeah, have a certain butterish quality, yeah. This isn't remains of the day. You can polish your own shoes. Yeah, I think I better had, the way you're going at it. You get kicked out of the army, you know. Oh, and you were in the army, were you? <laughs> Decorated, I suppose. I did my national service. Yes, so did I. Where? Never mind where. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. You put the kettle on and I'll polish both pairs of shoes to show you how it's done. You're not coming anywhere near my shoes. You'll polish over the laces. Well, give me those and I'll show you how it's done. Ha, you've never seen a pair of shoes polished by Jed Stone, have you? No. You can see your face in them, which in your case will be a bit of a drawback. Look, I'll tell you what. We will play a game of Scrabble. And whoever wins polishes both pairs of shoes. Why don't we play something with a bit more luck involved to give you a chance? All right, name your game. Chinese checkers, Norton crosses. I'll win you. Have you run out? No, I ain't got any more perfume, but I've got these T-shirts. Yeah, let's have a look. They don't even help nor summer, to be honest with you, but value's good. Just depends on whether it's your style. Yeah, I'll have one. What, just like that? Well, I'm impulsive. <clears throat> Probably a bit big for you, actually. Best leave it. Well, I like them big. How much? Just a fiver. But Molly must not find out, OK? OK. No, no, listen. Repeat after me. Molly must not find out. I'm not repeating after you. There you go. Why not? It's embarrassing, two grown-ups repeating after each other. All right, you don't have to repeat after me. Just don't tell her, OK? I won't. Oh, and if you get any more of that perfume in, let us know, yeah? Yeah. Oh. And, uh, might look nice with a belt round that. You just need to sell it now. All right. Mm. Keep it real, yeah? You'll hurt my feelings. Least of me worries your feelings. You better hurry up. Should be wanting a tea. What's that? I lent it off next door. When are you fixing ours? There's a new belt. I'll put our len on it. And by the way, it was Sigourney Weaver in Alien. I was right. <laughs> Meryl Streep. You said it were Meryl Streep. Don't come that with me, Edward Windass. Accept it when you're wrong. How did you get on at streetcars? The gaffer wasn't in. The woman said to come back tomorrow to have a word with him. What woman? The brunette who works on the switch. Tarty piece with a chest. Keeps coming on to all the drivers. It's supposed to be a proper little home wrecker. Well, I'm sure you'll resist her and vice versa. There were eight of them stood outside. No jobs on. I said quiet today, is it, lads? No, they said it's always like this. W one of them had a copy of the Racing Post out on the bonnet. All the others were gathered round it. Were they now? Th there's a gambling culture there, apparently. You must think that I was born yesterday. What? <laughs> Straight up. What are we supposed to do? Just nod along and smile? Oh, I don't know. How concerned are you, Audrey? Very. 
And have you tried talking around? Oh, she'll come to her senses. On her own, in all probability. Mm. Mm. Audrey, remind me. No, honestly, no, 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 listen. If you can pop out later, I'll sort this out. No, no, I've had worse. Audrey, I think I might go home after this. See to Ozzy. Let's see if we can get older Carlo again. Yeah, OK, all right. <sighs> Thanks, Maria. Hey, and I, and I hope things brighten up for you soon. Hey, I'd struggle to drink tea with me up, wouldn't I? Yeah, well, you've got two hands, Natasha. How would I hold the biscuits? But I said it was never going to be a straw in the park, didn't I? A hook. Huh. Hey, if you need anything. Thanks, Ellie. I've got everything I need, except the truth. So, I take these empties back to the bar and I say, put them in there, love. But she says she can't, it's not allowed. It's not allowed to put beer back into the same two glasses. But a fellow my age can be dragged out of his house, yeah, by a crook, and nobody bats an eyelid. But put beer in the same glass. Ho, 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 ho. Norris, the world is being run by imbeciles. Mm, quite. We live in a country where I can watch women firing arrows in Olympic Games on television. But can I watch a test match? Can I? I wouldn't know. I mean, do they think that us are so Wardle and Bedsa in, in 1954 at Old Trafford? Do they think that we, we, we've got enough money, hey, to, to pay for satellite television? Ah. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm winning, that's what I'm doing. Well, you can't go up a snake. Of course you can go up a snake. You go up the snakes and down the ladders. Have you not played this game before? Oh, that's it. I've had enough. Where are you going? <sighs> Norris! Norris! An affair, Tyrone. So where is he? Why is his phone switched off? Well, he said you were going to the gym. You heard him yourself. Anyway, we would have an affair with Tyrone. I beg your pardon? No, he's too loyal is what I meant. He loves you too much. No one would get the opportunity. That minx down the road, the one whose car he fixed, Minnie they call her. You should have seen him laughing and joking yesterday. And then there's the perfume. I've told you about that perfume. Oh, perfume. Perfume all smells the same. Does it? Where is the number for the gym? I'll tell you what. Let Emily decide. I think Emily's got better things to do than judge a shoe polishing contest. I wish I had better things to do than enter one. And I find the whole thing juvenile, to tell you the truth. I used to enjoy my Wednesday afternoons. Oh. So my presence here ruined it, eh? Well, frankly, yes. Mm hmm I suppose you want me to thank Emily for her hospitality? Pack me bags and leave. Leave you to your little ways, your little routines. Leave you in peace, yeah? Well, I'm not going to. Emily threw me a lifeline. As I imagine, she threw you one some time ago. And uh, I'm not going to let go of my lifeline, not just yet. So you have to get used to me, yeah? OK? Oi! What? Where did you get that T-shirt? It's mine, isn't it? Answer the question. I bought it. When? Today. Where? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Where have you just been? I've been home for a nap. Why? Have you seen Tyrone? No, no way. I definitely have not seen Tyrone. Is that his T-shirt? Look, I've got to get to work. Listen, I know what he's been doing, so you needn't bother lying. In fact, it's in your best interest to tell the truth, so I'll ask you once again. Is that one of Tyrone's? Yeah. It is. Are you happy? Will you pass on a message for me? When am I going to see Tyrone? Tell him I'm going to my dad's and he needn't bother following. Oh, and I'm spending the night. All right, I'll tell him if I see him. Thank you. No problem. Keep it real, yeah? Oh, nice t-shirt. Love the belt. Wonder whose idea that was. Hey, I got a message for you. No, I can't stop. I'm late. No, it's off Molly. What? Yeah, she said um, she'll be all right on her own tonight. She's gone to her dad's and you don't have to follow. And she's going to be staying over. What, and I don't have to go? <laughs> oh, nice one. 
I'll get out the Jackass DVD, crack open a few cans. Ain't never told her where you got that T-shirt from, though, did you? Me? No, of course not. Top of the class. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, see ya. Just in time, there's some fresh tea in the pot. Tea? All right, if you want coffee, there's water in the cup. Don't want a drink. Doubt I could hold it down. What's up? Was your dad all right? Fine. Well, what did you stop over for, then? Take a wild guess. I hadn't slept. My head's been churning my guts all night. I kept thinking, he'll come over, he'll call. But you didn't want me over there. Are you serious? I thought you didn't come over because you're too ashamed, but no! Here you are, tucking into a fry-up, reading the paper! How could you do it to me? If you weren't happy, you should have just said, not done... Done what? She's not told you, has she? I know, Ty. All about your so-called workouts. All right. Is that all you've got to say? You've broken my heart! What you've done disgusts me! Oh, hang on a minute. It's not like I've killed somebody. I, I knew you wouldn't approve, but... I wouldn't approve! Well, I'm not the first to do it. Pam's been doing it all of her life. Oh, you can leave my auntie out of this! This is between you and me and your fancy piece from the kebab shop! I'm beginning to think there's three of us in this relationship. Yeah? You, me and... Wayne Rooney. Spend most of my breakfast looking at him. It's one way of dieting. So, um, what are you up to today then? What do you mean, what am I up to? Why do you always assume? Well, I'm not assuming anything, Steve. It's just a turn of phrase. Yeah, and a tone of voice. Well, all right then. What are you up to today? This and that. Well, this being... Not that. I'm getting sick of this. Even Amy's noticed the atmosphere. She's crying at the drop of a hat. It's not your concern. <sighs> no. I thought we were a family. Why are you being like this? All week you, you, you've been giving me the silent treatment or, or sly digs. What the hell is the matter? I just happen to think if you've got nothing worthwhile to say, then say nothing. You should try it sometime. So I'm talking to you. You catch on quick. An affair? Babe, I would never cheat on you and you know that. Don't make it worse by pretending. You've been lying to me for months. All that flannel about going to the gym. The only machine you knew about was the vending machine. Heaviest thing you've lifted lately is a chunky Kit Kat. Yeah, I know I've not been a dedicated well, trainer. Stop it! I saw you sneaking around with Minnie. You reeked of her perfume. She was wearing your T-shirt. She even admitted it. Yeah, she probably didn't know what you was on about. Oh, who have you been talking to, Shaggy? Because I tell you now... It wasn't me. Might have been a good tune, but as a strategy, it stinks. But, but it wasn't me, not how you think. Look, as if a cracking bit of stuff like hers ever going to give me a second look. Oh. No, Mal. Thank you very no, much. No, I wasn't saying she could never hold a candle to you. I'll be back for my stuff after work. Molly, don't go... <clears throat> Morning, girl. Love up. How Gary didn't keep you awake last night. Well, actually, when he's had a few whales, he waxed great fights of the 70s on the video full volume. Times have been a walk to the thriller in Manila. Yeah, well, I think I'd better be opening up. This is my man, Audrey, Anna, Eddie, new neighbours. Well, I surmised as much, actually. <laughs> mm. 
jungle drum's been beating. Not as loudly as your telly at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, well, I'll have a word, but I keep a bag of cotton wool balls by your bed just to be out safe, Sad. Listen, Audrey, love, if you want in another pair of hands, I'm red up with the old scissors. Hmm? I do. I'm ready. When he runs a comb through, it can look quite dashing. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, would you mind picking that up, please? Well, I'm sorry, love, I've not been down since 93. I don't. There's a bin there, right? I'll see you both. You well and truly ruined that for me. I only dropped a tab end, woman. It's not my fault that she's got a rod up her backside. You'll have the toe end of mine up yours if you don't get round to that cab office. Don't come back without a job. Can't wait to meet him. Well, don't get too excited. I mean, he's an old bloke, set in his ways. More than a whiff of uh, mellow Virginia about him, so take a tip and stay upwind. What time's he arriving? Lunchtime. Oh, great. I'll bob over in my dinner hour. Uh, there's no need for a welcoming committee. It's not a big deal. Oh, right. So why have you been vacuuming under the settee, put a new tablecloth on and loaded up on Battenberg? Psychiatrist might say that you're seeking Daddy's approval. <laughs> Orthopaedic surgeon might say that you can't speak with a broken jaw. Go to work. Tra. Time for coming. I'm not mad, Tom. But I soon will be if I don't get answers. You've had them, Maria. They're just not the ones you want to hear. You think I want to hear that Liam's death wasn't an accident? Just tell me what happened. We've been over and over. Tell me. Everything. I promise I won't ask you again. All right. We went to the strip club. It was over the road. Tony had booked it as a surprise for everyone. Hang on. Tony had booked it? On his own stag night? You know what he's like. Showing off. Always wants to be in control. And then what happened? Across the road, and Tony asked for the kitty to pay us all in. Liam realised he'd lost his wit. And we thought he must have left it at the last boozer, so... Well, he was well gone. So I offered to go back. But Liam said no. Tom. T Tony said that Liam was the best man, so it was his job to go back. So Tony sent him back? It wasn't like that. You had to be there. No, Liam had to be there. That's why Tony asked him to be his best man. And of course he'd be in charge of the kitty as well, which just happened to go missing when Tony asked about it. When you were about to go into the strip club that Tony had booked. He made sure that Liam was on that night, on that street, and then right in the path of that car. Don't you see it? Oh, do you know what I can see? Tony cradling Liam's head, tears streaming down his face. He was devastated. No, he was covering his tracks. He had Liam killed. You can't say that, Maria. You've got to stop this. He's an innocent man. Well, the police can decide that, can't they? No. You're going to make a fool out of yourself. You haven't got a shred of evidence to support any of this. They'll laugh at you. You can convince yourself of anything if you try hard enough. Let this go. Only Pam! More than enough for me, love. Say! What's the matter with him? If his face gets any longer, he'll be wanting another boot. <laughs> yeah, we should see Molly. She thinks I've been having an affair. She's rumbled the whole gym story. Well, we're never going to take Quarrel, lad. She thinks it's a cover for another girl. We're going to have to come clean about the selling, the wedding, everything. She's moving out, taking her clothes. Oh, there's a world of difference between an overnight bag and a removal van. 
No, we're going to have to go to Dev's. Tell her the truth before it's too late. What? And we're in a big day. Hey, not only would you spoil the surprise, but chances are she'd cancel everything. We'd have grafted our whatnots off for now. Well, I realise that, but... Yeah. Everything's only half paid for. You won't get your money back. You know what our mall's like about brass. She'll be furious, and you'll be back at square one. Well, what other options have I got? There are always options, lad. Listen, I fought my way out to tighter spots than this. Remember the Alamo? Well, they got massacred. They did in the film, John Wick. Oh, well, that was Hollywood. You trust your Auntie Pam. So when I said I was at the gym, I was actually... out flogging Pam's stuff. That's where Minnie got a T-shirt from. I've got loads left if you want one. No, I don't want one. So you two cook this up together? No, it's the truth, love. So there was no affair? May the Lord strike him dead if I'm not telling the truth. But why? Why get involved in selling when we're doing all right? And why lie to me? Oh, come on, love. You'd have put the mockers on it straight away. Yeah, to keep him out of trouble. How could you run the risk when we're getting married? And where's the cash you made? All right, all right. It was to... To help me. I owed money. Got in over my head with some bad people. Then that did for Billy Three Fingers. I knew I'd get the same treatment if I didn't stump up. No pun intended. So are you in the clear now? Aye. And every time I pull on a pair of gloves, I'll be grateful to this lad. He wouldn't rest till he got me out of the mire. Same as you did for his man. Yeah. And I would never look at another girl. Why would I? And I only did all that because it was for a good cause. You're not going to move out, are you? I need time to think. Oh, please. Come on, leave her be. She's had a lot to take in. She'll come round. She just wants you to stew a bit first, that's all. A simple thank you would suffice. Thank you? I just lied through my teeth to the girl I love. Uh, no, I lied through your teeth to the girl as it happens that I love as well, which is why I did it. But I feel like a rat. So she can feel like a princess on her wedding day. If that's not self-sacrifice, I don't know what is. Still don't feel right. Things have got out of hand. Hey, don't worry. The wedding day will wipe away all your sins. We've just got to sell like Trojans so that we can pay for the rest of it now. Well, well I'm not going back out there with that bag again. Molly will kill us. But we're out of the woods now. Onwards and upwards, eh? Might be able to afford that fire eater after all. Stuff your fire eater. I'll get the rest of the money that I owe and then that's it. No more selling, got it? Maria? What's she doing? I don't know, but I doubt she wants the camera, though. Oh, look, he's getting really friendly. Don't oh, mind me. Uh, I've got to go. What do you think you're playing at? Have you got a bag? Oh, I'm going to need to take all this with me. You are not taking anything. Get out! Mum? No, she's just gone mad. Shall I call the police? No, no, I'll sort it. Where's the key to this drawer? Well, I don't know. Maria, calm down. I need the key to this drawer, it's important. Why? Evidence. I know that Tony killed Liam, I just need more proof. The office, don't be forced this open. No, no, wait, wait, we'll get the key. Yeah, Sally and Rosie can look for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to find it somewhere. Oh, yeah. While they hunt round, we'll go over the road. You'll call us once you've found it, eh? Yeah, yeah, of course we will. I know what this looks like for us, but trust me, um, if you knew what I knew... Tell me about it at home. Come on. Amy seem all right to you. A bit quiet last time I saw her. Why? Something wrong? No, not at all. I'm just uh, thinking of throwing a kid's party for Christmas night. You, know. you get visited by three girls last night. <laughs> Friends want her to be happy. Yeah. How are we fixed for this afternoon? Well, you've got to pick up at quarter past. Right, well, I'll do it then. Yeah, it's the infirmary. You've got to drop off at the airport at quarter past. So, unless you have traded your Mondeo for a helicopter. Well, I'll only be a few minutes late. If they're in, just give them the usual blarney. You know, if I was Pinocchio, my nose would be halfway down Rodham Street. People know that five minutes means 20 minutes. You know, it's all part of the game, isn't it? That's right. Can I help you? 
I just popped in on the off chance you need drivers, but uh, what with the credit crunch and all, I expect you're laying off, not taking on, so um, I'll be on my way. I, I, sorry to have wasted uh, your uh, phone. Uh, hey, we always need drivers. Sake of my soul, if nothing else. You got any experience, mate? Ah, well, went a long time ago, man. You used to have to carry a bucket and a shovel. You got their proper paperwork, though. Uh, I suppose. Uh, but we've just moved out, I don't know. I don't think I could put my hand on it. Well, as long as it's somewhere. Are you uh, driven around here before? Uh, well, uh, well, the thing is, I'd want paying cash in hand, and I know a lot of firms don't like it, so... Uh, yeah, it was included. Look, I'm sorry, mate, I don't know. Hey, look, we need drivers. Why don't we take him on trial until Lloyd gets back? <sighs> All right, listen, uh, we'll sort the payment issue out if we decide to take you on, but uh, why don't you come in the morning and then we'll sort you out. Hey. He jumps down my throat at the slightest thing. When he can be bothered talking to me at all. So have you any idea what's brought this on? Beats me. I've not long lost my brother, Becky. I don't expect Steve to walk on eggshells, but... ..is a little bit of consideration too much to ask? No, it shouldn't be. Any boyfriend worth having to be on his best behaviour. What are you going to do then? I don't know. You know, up until now, it's always been caring, attentive, great with Ryan. And he could always make me laugh. Well, you know, it sounds like there's more tears than laughter to me. Michelle, people change. Yeah. No, Becky, I know deep down he's, he's still the bloke I fell in love with. Maybe it's not just him, maybe I... Whoa, no, don't you even go there. In his shoes, I'd thank me lucky stars. What do you mean? Well, you could do a sight better look at you. He... Steve's punching above his way. Hey, <laughs> that's saying something. I don't want Brad Pitt. I just want my Steve back. I miss him. On trial? Well, you won't be the first time. It's a non starter. I don't like cashing out. Well, you're in, that's the main thing. They can't do out without national insurance details. All you've got to do is drag your feet. Talking to which, you're meant to be on disability, not come dancing. I know you worked here. I told you she had it upstairs. I'm a receptionist, not a doctor. We want to register. Right. Oh, you'll uh, need to fill in one of these forms. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, girl, love. With Eddie being on the set, we need to get him fixed up pronto. Could you get him in for a medical next week? What? We need to get things moving. Sorry, my ears are still ringing from last night. What was it you wanted? What I said about the cotton wool bars earlier, you won't be needing them. Good. We're not too late for the 120, are we? No, mate, you've got a couple of minutes oh. yet. I'd get your breath back if I were you. There's a full card, so don't worry. What a hot tip. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, no more lukewarm, I'd say, to be honest. Give it off, eh? Fellow in the pub's got a mate in the stables. Yes, they always have. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, love. I'm, I'm just, I'm just on my way on, on the bus, like. Yes. I... Fellow's got his radio on. Dead inconsiderate, some folk. Well, I don't know, love. Uh, traffic's heavy. Maybe an hour. Oh, what's taking them so long? They'll call just as soon as they've got the key. Oh, yeah, that'll be them now. Oh, thanks for coming. Oh. You're right, sweetheart. Oh, Archie, you'll never guess what I've found out. Everything that I thought is true. Tony did have Liam killed. I haven't got the slightest doubt in my mind. Tom came round before and... Come, come. 
Now, come on, sit down. It's all right. Honestly, don't get upset. Oh. Now, um, why don't I put the kettle on? Because I don't know about you two, I'm parched. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. Fizz, we've got to do something. Like what? Well, we're not qualified for this. She needs professional help. Yeah, but she doesn't think there's anything wrong, Audrey. I doubt she'll see a doctor. <sighs> well, I don't think Maria's the best judge of what she needs just now. I mean, you heard what she was coming out with. Yeah, and you should have seen her in the factory. But if she won't go of her own accord... Yes, well, we might have to take that decision out of her hands. Oh, no. I'll nip over to the health centre and try and get someone, all right? Go out the back way. What are you doing? I'm taking my washing. But why on a rodden affair? It's not about that anymore. I've knocked the selling on the head. I told Pam straight. Pity you couldn't have been straight with me. Instead of lying over and over, going to ridiculous lengths. Yeah, but you don't know the whole story. I only lied so that we could... I don't care why. It's irrelevant now. It's the fact that you could do it at all. If there was one thing I thought we had, it was total honesty right from the off. I thought there'd never been any secrets between us. But, but some secrets are well-intentioned, oh, nice. Like the wedding dress. I was overwhelmed at the time, but when I think about it, alarm bells should have started going then. Well, you was pleased. Overwhelmed? Stupid, greedy? The man I thought I was marrying couldn't have pulled off a lie like that. I'd have seen through him and been glad of it, but you... It was just a daft mistake, but I'm still the same bloke I always was. No. Ty. You're not. I don't know you. I'm not sure I can marry a stranger. <laughs> And Coronation Street is back in half an hour. Molly, please. We've got to talk about this. Why? What can you possibly say that's going to make everything all right? I've said I'm sorry in that. Oh, yeah, funny, but I don't feel any better. Well, you can't just walk away. I mean, me and you was really happy together, Mol. Just you and me, really happy. It's not going to work. Every time I look at you, I'm thinking, what other secrets do you have? What else don't I know about you? Come on, we can sort this out. Get your hands off me! I'm sick of talking. Well, when are you coming back? Don't know. And what am I going to tell people? Jack's going to be heartbroken. We'll make some up. You're good at that. Oh, Fizz, I can't just sit here and do nothing. I'm going to have to find a way to break into Tony's jaw myself. I mean, if you have nothing to hide, why is that drawer locked? Well, don't get your hopes up. You know, it might have been nothing. This'll do it. Maria, can you just... What? Put it down. What are you doing? Just let's think for a moment. What's it going to look like if you go charging into Underworld again, only this time you're waving a flipping screwdriver around? Come on, let's go through to living room. Julie! Hey! Well, she's a supervisor, isn't she? She's bound to have a set of keys. Well, yeah, but... Come on, it's easy. You go through a bag, get the keys for me, bring them Maria, back here, will and you then please I'll... just try and calm Fizz, down? you've got to help me. I know that everyone thinks that I'm just ranting on like some mad woman or something. But you believe me, don't you? Of course I do. Right, so you go and get me the keys then. Right, I will. But you've got to let me look through that drawer, OK? Yeah. You stay here. I promise I'll be back as soon as I can. Hmm? See you later. What's the matter? It's Maria. I swear to God she's getting worse. I was going to call around and see you later. I did have a word with one of the doctors, but he just said the best thing to do was bring her in. OK, oh, come on. That's easier said than done. The poor girl doesn't think there's anything wrong with her. Let me speak to Dr Mocker. What is it? What's happened? Well, we've got to do something quick. She's getting all sort of... Agitated. Uh, doctor, I'm sorry. I know you've got a patient with you, but uh, it's an emergency. It's psychiatric. 
Well, I think your plan's working, cos she definitely knows something's up. I know. I should be pleased, but do you know what he's doing my head in is this, Steve? I really like her. Well, so do I. That's why I'm trying to protect her. Are you sure you're not just being spineless? Cos that's how it's starting to look from here. Look, we've been through all this. If she finishes, then she won't feel all sad and rejected, will she? Hmm. Yeah, well, I hope she dumps you soon, cos I tell you what, I am this close to spilling my guts. Honestly, I'm gonna need my jaw wired or something at this rate. Well, don't do that, because that's only for fat people and you won't be able to eat anything. No, of course. Right, I can liquidise my chocolate bars and then I'll just drink them through a bendy straw. But anyway, duck, I don't even care. As long as it keeps me trapped shut. Whatever. Oh, I was a, I was a teddy boy in my heyday. Jet black hair, big quiff in the front. D8 at the back, I was with and Shaw's answer to Elvis Presley. Oh, question is, can you sing like it? Oh, me, no. Oh. oh, dear. <laughs> Hello, love. I was just going to call you. Uh, yes, the uh, the bus has got stuck under a low bridge. Mm, I know. Oh, it's pitch black here. Steve, can you get us a box of pork scratchings from back, please? Yes, I'm all traumatised. It's a bit like when your mother locked me in the coal hole. No, oh, I'm sorry, love. You're breaking up. Well, what can you do? That Jane Fonda, she won't take no for an answer. Watcher? Yeah. Does the bones check out your dad? Oh, well, that was just him. He's unflaming believable. What? He's on a bus, stuck under a bridge. My backside is I could hear Liz McDonald in the background bring up another box of pork scratchings. Well, it must have been somebody that sounded like her, from the emergency services. Oh, of course it was. Silly me. Emergency services always take snacks to accidents. All I'm saying is it's going to take them firemen ages to saw the top off a bus, because that's what they'll have to do. And all the passengers, they need sustenance. I mean, it's like that plane what crashed in the Andes. They ate each other. Sean, you total dimwit. There is no bus. He's in the Rovers. Oh, look at her state. She's still giving you jip. She's left me. She never has. It's gone. I don't know if the wedding's on or off. I've left 50 million messages on her phone, but now she's gone and turned it off. Come on, mate. You need a pint. Well, if he is in the Rovers, why don't you go over there and drag him out? I had enough of that when I was a child. The amount of hours I wasted chasing after him. If he wasn't in the pub, he'd be in the bookies. No, hang him. Treating my mother like dirt. He's not going to do the same to me. It's a pity. I mean, all that effort you went to making his meal, peeling and a chopping. You are one carrot away from repetitive strain. You've got a point there. If he won't come for his dinner, maybe his dinner should go to him. Have you got the drawer open? Yeah, there's nothing in there but um, a petty cash tin and some filed sweets. Petty cash tin? You're absolutely sure? Yeah, sorry. Maria? Hello? Are you still there? Are you sure this is a good idea? I bothered to cook it. The least he can do is eat it. Father, how lovely to see you. Well, I've just nipped in for a quick one. You're not going to begrudge me a bit of refreshment after my terrible ordeal. There. I hope it chokes you. It looks absolutely delicious. Any, um, any chance of a knife and fork? Oh, don't push your luck with me, you selfish old beggar. It's all dried up and shriveled. It looks like a, a big cow pat. You know, all my married life, I never knew gravy was supposed to be runny. You could stand a spoon up in the stuff your mother used to make. 
And whose fault was that, eh? Spending hour after hour on your idle backside in the pub. Oh, look, look what you've done now. What have I done? You, you, you've turned me into my mother. Thank you very much. You know, the next time that I clap eyes on your ugly mug, I hope it's on the obituary pages of the Gazette. That is harsh. I'd best. Nothing like other people's troubles to make you forget your own, eh? My mum and dad used to fight like mad. I remember this one time she found out he was carrying on with Nelly the fish woman. She took a toffee hammer to his LPs. I've never known anyone who had a toffee hammer. It was his pride and joy, them things. And then, and then she got all the bits together, melted them down, and made a bust of Morrissey. Mm. Never had a dull moment in your house, eh? It's rubbish. What not like him? So we'll get another round of drinks in. Do you know, Molly would never melt down my treasured possessions and turn them into a pop icon. Need keys for Tony and Carla's flat. Well, I've not got them. Don't lie to me. I'm telling you, I haven't. You're Liam's sister. I thought you'd want to know the truth. Look, Maria, why don't you come through to the back here? We can have a proper chat. No, what you mean is shut up and behave yourself. Stop humouring me, Michelle. Maria, for goodness sake, you have got to let this go. So it's all down to me, then, is it? I'm the only one who cares what's happened to Liam. Listen, I know. It's hard to cope. Right? But sometimes, terrible things happen. It's just life. Fine. Don't bother me if you won't give me the keys or break in. No, now what? Maria, my love, now don't get alarmed. Hi, Maria, I'm Dr. Mogra. We thought it might do you good to get things off your chest. You rotten cow! Oh, I'm so sorry, we were only trying to help. You <laughs> pretended to believe me! And all the time you would... Oh, <laughs> no, Maria... Oh, come on, my love, just a minute. Hi. Right. Who's the Titian goddess at ten o'clock? Come again? The redhead over there. Is she single? <laughs> That's Rita, isn't you? She's single. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I seem to have seen her before somewhere. She runs the news agents across the road. She used to be a cabaret singer in a misspent youth. Ooh, what does she call herself? Rita Littlewood, that's it. Rita Littlewood, the voice of an angel and a body built for sin. She's still got the fine figure of a woman, I'll give her that. Hey, never you mind mooning over Rita. Okay. Shouldn't you be making it up with Eileen? You're absolutely right, but I <coughs> I think I need another pint of Dutch cottage first. She's the only woman for me, my Molly. My Molly, Molly doodle all day. You got a pie from it? Put a lining on your stomach. See, I've always been too easily led me. That's my problem. I don't know when to say no. The way to a girl's art. Flowers, chocolate, shiny stuff. Not necessarily in that order. It's too late. She's left me. Oh, never in the world. She's gone. I don't know if she's coming back and it's all your fault. Oh, Tyrone, I'm so sorry. Hey, but don't fret. She'll come back, I'm sure. She thinks the world of you. Not anymore. I've hurt her too much. No, as soon as she cools off, she'll be back. Sure as eggs is eggs. You set me off on a life of petty crime, yeah? And now look where it's got me. Alone, again. I've lost the love of my life and it's all down to you. Just go, will you? Here, take your poxy flowers with you. I'm not told her. Come 
can't believe you've all ganged up on me. You see, Maria, we're not ganging up on you. Are you supposed to be my friends? Perhaps if I take it from here. Oh, this is stupid, this. I don't need a doctor. Yeah, but you've not been yourself, my love. Just leave me alone. We're just trying to look out for you. You're nothing but a bunch of liars. You told me you were going to look through Tony's jar, and all the time I'm you were... I'm sorry, I didn't know what else to do. Yeah, well, you can leave me alone, that's what you can do. Go on, go, you two-faced... Oh, look, go on, I'll phone you later, darling. Yeah, we should get her inside. Hello, I am here, you know. Sorry. And you can leave me alone, and I'll know whose side you're on. Maria, you're not well, love. As I said, I can take it from here. <sighs> Come on, don't be hanging around out here. Let's get you in. Come on. Well, I never. It's you, isn't it? I hope so. I'm wearing my clothes, carrying my handbag. Great a little one as I live and breathe. You don't look a day older. Should I know you? <laughs> of course you should. I haven't changed that much, have I? It's me, Colin. Colin Puzzlethwaite. 1962. Me and you. I'm sorry. I know my memory's not what it used to be, but I can't place you. Well, you can't have forgotten our week of passion at Blackpool. Guest house on the prom. The illuminations were on. Gracie Field's eye winking on and off all night long, but he didn't put us off our stroke. Couldn't have been me. I wasn't like that. I was a good girl, most of the time. Kept my hand on me apron. And there was I, thinking we had something special. Oh, give over. You're making it up as you go along. Well, you can't blame a bloke for trying. You cheeky devil. How did you know I used to be a singer? I'm psychic. I can see things other people can only dream of. Hey, I see you two are becoming reacquainted. I've never clapped eyes on him before in my life. Did you tell him I used to do the clubs? Well, he said you look familiar, so I just thought... Psychic, my eye. You old reprobate. Do you know, for a moment there, I thought I was losing my marbles. <laughs> One for the dog, mate. There's not enough beer in the world that could make me feel better. Go on, Ty. Can't we've got work? You didn't know fit state. I can't have you in the garage. Drunk in charge of the spanner. I'm not drunk. I'm depressed. Come on, let's get you home, mate. Tell Dr. Mogra how you've been feeling, sweetheart. My husband's dead. How do you expect me to feel? I know, but you have been having, well, some very strange ideas, haven't you? It's OK, Maria. I'm here to help. I can see you're overwrought. I could prescribe some sedatives. I know what you're all thinking. Poor old Maria, she's off a trolley. Will you just wait and see? So what do you mean by that? I know for a fact that Tony killed Liam. And as soon as I get the proof... Perhaps Maria and I should have a few moments alone. Oh, you know what? Forget it. I've put up with enough of this. I want you to leave. Oh, Maria, love it. Both of you! Go on, go! Well, look, if you change your mind, just make an appointment at the health centre. We could book in for some cognitive therapy. Oh, you can stick your therapy. And you, in future, keep that out. I was thinking of phoning Maria, you know, check she's OK. Ah, uh, perhaps she might need a bit of space. Yeah, I mean, you know, she'll ring you if she needs you. Have you walked in something? Me? Hey? Well, dog dirt or something, I can definitely smell a smell. Oh, that'll be my kit. Oh, oh, Ryan, you played football last Monday. Mate, that stink could make a pig puke. So that's just been festering in there all week? Yep. Next to a radiator and all. You will never get a girlfriend. Well, unless you find one who's got a gas mask. Oh, techno notice. Some girls like a bit of manly sweat. Ooh, Liz, speak for yourself. Most women I know wouldn't be seen dead with a bloke like that. Well, I certainly wouldn't. I like my blokes to be squeaky clean, thank you very much. Some skanky swine's gone and spilt pot scratchings all over the place. 
I'll sort it. Ah, mm. oh, love, you're a gen. OK. Oh. You're a right chancer, you are. Cheeky beggar. At my age, I've got no left to lose. I suppose you've got a point. So, <clears throat> while I'm chancing my arm, uh, do you fancy another of those? Don't push your luck. If I were you, I'd quit while I was ahead. I won't say goodbye, but I'm hoping that this will merely be au revoir. Oh, get you. So let me guess, later you're going to wring that out in a glass and drink it? At this rate, by the end of my shift, I'll be stinking like a tramp's jockstrap. And that's good because... Because Michelle will eat it, won't she? Mission accomplished. I'm knackered. I'll pull the kettle on. Uh, first things first. Welcome home, Mrs. Gordon. <coughs> Eileen, love, come on up to the door. Why should I? You've had your dinner, go home. But I'm not sure I can make it to the bus stop. Why, have your legs fallen off? My lumbago's giving me chip like this, no tomorrow. I've, um, I've, I've, I've bought you some, I bought you some flowers. Fabulous. I'll more than make up for the 45 years of total disinterest. There you are. A bit young for you, ain't she? Are you following me? In your dreams. Is that your idea of courting? I'm here to see Eileen, my daughter. <coughs> I don't blame you for shutting me out. I'll just sit here on the cold, hard floor and wait. I don't know how long I can control my bladder. This cold Siberian wind's making it worse. Oh. <coughs> I didn't get these from the garage either. Cost me a week's pension, did these? Oh, go on, you come in. Oh, you're a doll, thank you. You have seven new messages. Message one. Tone F. I need to speak to you, it's urgent. Who was that? Oh, uh, just a client. Just as well we come back early. It would appear they can't live without me. Oh, what it is to be in demand, eh? Why don't you take a shower and I'll make us something lovely to eat? Oh, you're a star, you know that. Hmm? You look shattered. It's jet lag. We'll stay in bed. It is our honeymoon after all. What, on my own? I will make it up to you. Go back to bed. Oh, you could come with me. I've got a meeting, remember? Why don't you take a sleeping tablet? Get your head straight. I could come with you. And I'd rather come with you. 
Back to bed. I'll pick you up a new mobile when I'm in town. I still don't understand what happened to me, old one. Well, I'll be back before you know it. Then we can start our honeymoon all over again. Hmm. when you're lying. Oh? Your lips move. Oh, Molly! Happy birthday, Ty. Hiya. Has anyone heard from him yet? Who? Tony. Yeah. You saw, no one's even been in yet. And him and Carla, they're not due back for another week. I must have got my messages. Let me know, won't you, when all the phone calls and emails have been checked, please. Do you want me to come home with you? Make you some breakfast? I'm not an invalid, Fizz. And I'm not mad, neither. OK, big kiss for Daddy before we go. Mm -hmm. Now he's back in like a hedgehog. Oh, charming. Oh, it stinks like an hedgehog and all. A dead one. Well, I can't get in the bathroom for Michelle, and when I do, there's no flipping hot water. I hope you're going to smarten yourself up for Amy's party. Of course. It's my Christmas coming. Well, he's a bit busy this time of year, so I've booked somebody better. Better than for Christmas. General Custard and I allow her. He's a cowboy, she's an Indian. Kids these days don't know the first thing about cowboys and Indians. It's entertaining and educational. What on earth made you choose him? Because he could do it and he was very reasonable. Oh. Cheap and available. Doesn't that tell you something? Morning. Uh, aren't you supposed to be on your honeymoon? Aren't you supposed to be working? Where's Rosie? Warehouse? Well, she wiggled off in that direction, yeah. Find her. Tell her I want to see her. <gasps> Cruella has dumped him. Or he's dumped her. <gasps> Maybe at bottom of hotel swimming pool. Maybe Maria were right all along, eh? Uh, that is not funny. Bit different to Christmas in Mozambique, I bet, Ailes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because when I was there, I couldn't stop thinking about what you were up to. And now I'm here, I keep thinking about them. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a proper Christmas, though, doesn't it, Roy? We are really back. Well, I have to admit it, it does add an extra dimension to the festive ambience, yes. <laughs> <sighs> I used to hate Christmas, you know. Hate it. Apart from what else, it meant I weren't going to be properly warm again for months. But this year, I'm looking forward to it more than since I was a kid. Have you written a letter to Santa telling him what you want? Well, put it this way. I'm expecting something more interesting in my stocking than my own leg. Oh! <laughs> like that. <laughs> you all right? You know, when I was about 12, my mum got nicked for shoplifting Christmas presents. I spent my birthday hiding in the loft so that the social workers couldn't find me. On balance, I reckon that one was probably better than this. She'll come round. Not from the way she slammed that shop door in my face, you know. I'll get us some teas, eh? Two teas, please. I think you mean one, love. Do you know what makes Christmas really special? Uh, well, us being together makes it special enough for me. Well, do you remember that year when we opened up the cafe as a drop-in centre for the homeless? Uh, of course, yes. We ought to do that again. Oh, Steve. Um, I was wondering where I should hide Ryan's Christmas present. Somebody won't find it. Ha, ha, ha. No need to be sarky. No, I mean, where can I put it? You know, I mean, I don't want to be accidentally stumbling on their present to me. Well, uh, in that case, anyway, like. 
All right, so there's still time to drop hints for some serious bling, then. <laughs> Actually, I was uh, thinking of not bothering this year. What, like shaving and washing? What else are you giving up? I'll be shaving and showering for Amy's party, but I'm sick of all the commercialism about Christmas, so this year, opting out. All right, but you've not bothered to tell anybody that, so we all buy your presents, but you don't buy any back. I bought yours. Oh, right, so it was just me, then? Well, the way I see it, I spend loads on you, you spend loads on me, and then we both end up with exactly what we don't want, a huge, great, flipping credit card bill. Listen to me. You've got something to tell me. It's all been a terrible mistake. What exactly? How it happened. At the reception, I, I never meant for Maria to see it. See what? The video of Car Carla and Liam kissing. The one I saw, I got rid of. There was a copy. What? Well, I didn't know what to get for the slob about town anyway. Well, if you carry on troughing your way through stuff like that, I could buy you a tent. Put a hole in the top, put your head through. Bingo. New dress. Do you know what? I'm not the one who's letting myself go, Steve. But I'll tell you what, I do know what I'm going to get you for Christmas. A mirror. One big enough to get your nasty gob and your beer belly in. You're really lucky she just put those crisps in the bin. Because if you'd talked to me like that, I'd have shoved them down your throat. Still in the packet! You called me a slob. Steve, that is one gorgeous young woman. You carry on doing what you're doing and she's going to be somebody else's gorgeous young woman. Bath floor needs mopping. Hey, Webster. Your Rosie's been called into Ed Masters outfit. Sorry? Mr. Gordon's back. I'm sorry to interrupt. Have you told him? It was me that showed Maria that video, not Rosie. You think that makes it all right? I'd had too much to drink. Maria was in tears over Liam and going on and on and... She just wouldn't stop. No, and I, I, I reckoned if I... I reckoned if I showed her what, what he'd been up to with Mrs Gordon, then she'd realise he wasn't as wonderful as she thought he was. I was only trying to help. Go on. Get back to work. That's it. What? I think you should know. Maria's in a bit of a state. Everybody's really worried about her. In what way? Well, the way she's behaving, the things she's been saying. You just... You just get the feeling she's going to do something stupid. Well, let's hope not. After all that's happened. Perhaps I've said more than I should. Don't worry. This won't go any further. If we get some posters up in all the drop-in centres, then we've still got time to get a really good turnout on Christmas Day. It's not like that I made loads of plans. I thought this might work. <clears throat> we want your Christmas presents. Do you get it? It's like presents, like presents. Bit clever, isn't it? Too clever. Well, I'd have thought free food and drink on Christmas Day at Roy's Rolls with Toy Street. Oh. Oh, I, I, think, I think it's very good. <laughs> reminiscent of Lord Kitchener. Your country needs you. <laughs> anyway, um, you really want to do this, don't you? It's all I want for Christmas. Well, 
That's in case under the mistletoe. <laughs> well, who am I to argue? Hey, hey, hey. Hiya. Hiya, Liz. Are yes. you all set for Christmas? Hey, yeah, yeah, I am. Not too sure about Steve, though. Why, what's up with him? He's behaving like a total idiot. I mean, I'm sure Michelle can handle it, but it's clearly upsetting him. Well, children are very sensitive, even to things that they don't consciously understand. Mm. Well, that's why we're having this party for today. Me and Michelle are going to make sure Christmas is really special for her, even if Steve isn't bothering. Look, I know you don't want to talk to me and I don't blame you. Good. Take it out on me, not Tyrone. From where I'm standing, you're both as bad as each other. Well, he did it to help me get out of debt. Look, I asked him not to tell you. Keeping a confidence because you asked him to is one thing. Lying to me is another. I'm not marrying someone I can't trust. Well, you can't let a little tiff stop you getting wed. You two are made for each other. It's not a little tiff. But Tyrone's one of a kind, Molly. I'd trust him with me life, and you could too. I used to think that. Not anymore. It's his birthday. The best present he could get would be a kind word from you. I've got to get back to work. Just give him a break, Molly, please! You're the one who wanted to talk. Ozzy. Yeah. Ozzy. Yeah. Why have you come in the back way? Enough of a circus without everyone and his brother knowing I'm here, do you think? Shall we sit down and have a quiet chat? I'm gonna go and get dressed. I see. Of you. Well, I suppose he's got enough harm of being done. He just wanted to forget about the whole thing. If it had been up to me, I'd have had the both time job centre. Yes, well, fortunately, Mr Gordon is a much nicer person than you'll ever be, Janice. I bet him and Cruella have some right barnies over her and Liam. That'd be why they come home early and he's in work. I suppose I should let Maria know he's back. Don't go doing that. That Looney Tunes will be round here like a shark them in May, eh? Worth seeing, though, eh? <laughs> That's the point. Hey! Hey, this is my mate you're talking about. I got your messages. I'm afraid they didn't make a lot of sense. You knew about Liam and Carla for months. That they were having an affair. I knew, yeah. But it wasn't an affair. I saw the video. That wasn't just a peck on the cheek. No. But Maria, it hurt me as much as it's hurting you when I found out. Carla and I had a long and difficult conversation about it. And what did she say? You really want to do this? Look, I know Liam's death must have shocked and upset you. I need to know. It was when you lost the baby. You split up. And she saw that as a chance to get my husband into bed. <laughs> Liam was in a mess. Carla was the only person he could turn to. All right, so she was just being sympathetic. How thoughtful. I'm not defending her. I'm only telling you how she explained it to me. And you said, what? Oh, oh, fine, let's just forget about it and get married. 
in a way. But by the time I found out you were back together, Carla and I were happy. Might seem weak, stupid even, to forgive a betrayal like that. But Maria, I don't need to tell you when you love someone, when you really love them, that you do things you can't even explain to yourself. Ah, oh yeah. I should have say, Audi. He's Steve MacDonald. Well, if you're not General Custard, one of us is going to look very silly very soon. Eh, uh, Gunner. The name's Jesse. Please, tell me you're not a stripper. What if he is? Steve, I'd rather see you get your kit on. And before you do, that were a joke. So is that Jesse as in your great big or James? James, middle name. Me dad were a wild west nut. Any good to Jesse James? No, I got off lightly. You want to make me sister Pocahontas? That was a joke. Uh, um, uh, well, you're too early. Uh, I'm not coming. What? That's why I'm here to tell you. Why not? My wife's left me. She's run off with a drains inspector from council. Well, I'm sorry. She sent me a text. Marriage over. End of. Could, um, could I have a half, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, how long were you married for, then? Five years. Five? And she dumped you by text. Didn't have the decency to say it to your face. Well, I suppose sometimes doing the right thing is difficult. It's our busiest time and all. Christmas just round the corner. We'll be letting kids down all over Manchester. We? Yes. She was higher lower. I can't do the act without her. Well, I'm sorry, but in about two or three hours, I'm going to have a room full of kids expecting you to entertain them. You can't just pull out. I'm sorry. No. I think I'll go and see Maria. Bear, I just got you drinking. Oh, Ringer. It's not like she can do out well, Tony's not around. Yeah. Maybe she's best not knowing the state she's in. I don't buy this, Tony. Everything I know about you. I could have walked away from her. From them. But everything I wanted in my life was Carla. Now that I can believe. But I remember our weekend away. You told us how somebody who worked for you had betrayed you. So you ruined the lives. Wrecked two marriages. And that was just business. Don't see what that has to do with this. Well, I thought you were just showing off. But I know what you were really doing now. Which was? You were making Liam and Carla worry about what had happened if you ever found out about him. Only they didn't realise that you already knew. And despite everything, you asked Liam to be your best man. Made up some story about having a fallout with your brother. That wasn't a story. I asked Pat. He didn't know anything about you two having a row. It was a family thing. It's private. No. It was so that you could guarantee Liam would be on your stag night. And at your mercy. I've been piecing it all together, Tony. I spoke to people who were there on that night. Like you, changing all the plans for the night so that you'd all end up outside that strip club. Yeah. Guys in a stag night going to a strip club. Liam hadn't arranged one, so I did. You were the only one who knew where you'd all be and at what time. Exactly. All of us in a gang. Any one of us could have been hit by that car, me included. <laughs> Except it was Liam, wasn't it? Who went back alone for that kitty. Tom volunteered, but you stopped him. You made Liam go. Right into your trap. And from 
the way Jason tells it. That car never swerved, never slowed down, nothing. It aimed straight at Liam. He never stood a chance. You've got this all wrong. Okay. You swear. Swear on my unborn child's life that you never had anything to do with Liam's death. This is ridiculous. I'm right, Anna. Oh, my God. You really did do it. And Corrie's back here in half an hour. Please, Maria, you've got it all wrong. You liar. I saw your face, you couldn't swear. No, no, I'm just shocked you asking me to oh, do you that. You couldn't even do your own dirty work. You had to get someone else to kill him for you. You're not a man, Tony. You're a coward. Okay, then. What if someone had burst your little bubble of ignorance? Someone told you your husband was having an affair with Carla? You said it was a one-night stand. And what if it wasn't? What if I'd lied to make it less painful for you? What would you have done then? Because it's all so black and white in your little world, isn't it, Maria? Hmm? Big bad Tony, man hungry Carla, and poor innocent Liam. Poor innocent Liam, who spent the entire evening on my stag night, remember, on the phone to my fiance. Stop it! Stop Maria! it! Maria! You've locked it! Well, I didn't want us to interrupt it. Maria. One million pounds. <laughs> Steve. What's he doing here so early? <sighs> There's a problem. His wife's only run off with a drain inspector. What, she couldn't cope with his headache, showbiz lifestyle? Uh, this isn't funny. He's heartbroken. Uh, so will Amy and her mates be if there's no entertainer. Yeah, well, I've tried telling him this, but the wife was higher lower. Hey, either he does it or you do it. You, uh, know the best thing you can do, don't you? Go and find her. Bring her back. Yeah. No, no. no. Look. Cowboys don't beg. You know, they got pride, haven't they? Dignity. Self-respect. But I'm not a real cowboy, though, am I? I'm an electrician. Hi, hello, is she with the star? The kids loved her, not General Custard. I'm the straight man. I can't go out without her. <laughs> What's this, son? Straight theatre production of Brokeback Mountain. I feel responsible for Liam's death. <laughs> so are you admitting it? It was my stag night. He was my best man. I did send him back for the wallet, and if that makes me guilty, I just don't want you to suffer anymore. Or Liam's baby. Seeing you locked up is all I want. A million pounds for you and your baby. <laughs> It would set you both up for life. Oh my God. I don't want your blood money. <laughs> Maria. Hiya, I rang, you didn't answer. Just get him out of 
out of here. What's happened? Please, no. It's okay, I'm going. I didn't mean to upset you. To be honest, I'm, I'm shocked how bad she is. We are worried about her. And so am I. I really think she ought to see a doctor. Well, we did get one out to her yesterday. Well, I should get them back, because I think she's capable of anything. She's twisting all these facts and bits of nonsense, blowing them up into some terrible fantasy. Liam's death was a tragic accident, nothing more, nothing less. You know that, don't you? Oh, of course. Yeah, you only have to ask anybody that was there. I hope you're not worrying. Nobody believes her. It's upsetting enough for me, but when Carla finds out, it'll break her heart. She was close to Liam. Anything I can do to help, I'm just ask. Yeah, thanks, Mr Gordon. I'd best go and see to her. <clears throat> he admitted it, Fizz. He actually said he killed Liam. He couldn't deny it. He said that I'd have wanted Carla dead if I'd known what he knew. Yeah, but... Look, he forced his way in and locked the door, I'll show you. Oh. You sure it was locked? Yes! He must have unlocked it when I let you in. Fizz, look, he offered me a million quid to keep quiet. Oh, God. Shh, 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 shh. Hey. Hi. Mm. You know, my dad knew this book he wants from Longsight. He used to smoke roll-ups and ride his bike to his shop every day, right? Then at night, he'd ride to his lock-up, sit in his jag and smoke a big fat cigar. Really? Well, I don't like cigars. I'm more Roy's Rolls than Rolls Royce, you know. <laughs> but, just to prove to you that I can't flash the cash, how do you fancy a works Christmas party? Mmm, so that's, uh, you and me? Yeah. Quality, not quantity. Right, so uh, what were you thinking? I mean, now that Concord to New York's not an option. Well, taking your advice not to look as though I'm screwing my customers, I thought we could go to the... Uh... Rovers? Because yeah. we don't spend enough time in there already, do we, eh? Well, Amy's having a party and I'm going to be there with Simon anyway. Oh, it feels more special by the minute. Oh, go on then. Never been to an office party before. You do realise there's a big tradition of workmates copping off with each other at do's like this, don't you? Mm. I'm not really a big believer in tradition, sorry. Oh, well, you've got to stay fairly sober anyway. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Simon's expecting you to help him decorate the Christmas tree. Don't think he trusts me to do a decent job. I don't know why. He said he wants his Auntie Leanne. Mm. I can't think where that boy gets his charm from. <laughs> Must be his mother. <laughs> She's like a hothouse flower. Delicate little orchid. How does she end up with the drains, Inspector? Oh, I should have seen that coming. Shirley. Oh, that's her real name. She suddenly seemed to know everything about rats. Appropriate. Well, it would be the same with me. Before we met, she couldn't even change a plug. But then, before you knew it, she knew more about wattages and wiring than I did. Regular little chameleon. Uh, she changed me and all. You see, before her, I was just a simple spark. You know, pint after football on a Saturday, a bit of gardening, maybe. Then one day, she come home with this uh, cowboy outfit. And I thought, hey, I don't know, what have you got in mind? Like, yeah. <laughs> little did I know it were a kid's entertainer. Anyway, we, we practised a bit and we got good. Well, she did. I was just a sidekick. Hey, don't put yourself down. Double act, still a double act. No punch without Judy. Look over there. I mean, what better way of getting through the pain than putting on a show for Amy and her friends? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you give us that blowing these balloons up. <sighs> Oof. Can hardly blow out a match these days, let alone one of these. Hey, <laughs> this lot are so excited. Aww. <laughs> See you early in tech. Uh, yeah, he's. Wife's left him. Oh. She was a lower. Aye, she were a demon at blowing up balloons and all. She could do it with one puff. Mm. <laughs> didn't have a 20 day habit, did she? Why don't you ring her and persuade her to come back? Or maybe we could get you a standing. Eh? Hey? Mr. 
Michelle's used to being on stage. Well, hang on. I've got a party to organise, thank you. Go on, Eileen. Would you do it with me? Me? Oh, no, no, sorry, no. Oh, Eileen, please. Michelle has gone to all this trouble and Steve would be so grateful. Steve doesn't know the meaning of the word gratitude. All right, forget Steve then. Do it for him. Amy, say please to your Auntie Eileen. Please. Come on, Eileen. Please. when they wouldn't before. Because he's confessed. If I tell well, him... he didn't, did he? Not in so many words. Why else would he offer me a million quid for his... He said to me he was worried about you. Like we all are. Well, we will have plenty of reason to worry when I tell the police. You think I imagined it? Of course not. You don't believe me? I will stuff you. See what the police have to say. Maria, please. Just don't do anything silly. You can have it. Go on. Oh, it's Ta da! You know, is this meant to be higher, lowest costume? It's more like a flipping wigwam. Some delicate orchid. You look great. You haven't got any Cherokee blood in you, have you? <laughs> Not unless they've been hunting buffalo up Cheetah Mill. <laughs> <laughs> right. Focus. You know the routine. I say higher, then you say lower. Then I say higher, only lower. Comic genius. Hey, the kids love it. And I guarantee half the parents in the pub tonight will be doing the same. Yeah, I'll look forward to that then. Come on. Howdy, partners! I'm General Custard, uh, U.S. Cavalry at your service. Oh, woo, 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 woo. That's Eileen. Ah. That's Eileen's Indian cousin. I am Princess Higher Lower. Higher. Lower. Higher. Lower? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, miss. Uh, I need to see someone, a detective. I want to report a murder. Absolutely fantastic. Could you see? No. Oh, honest Indian, you couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, did you see that? Did you see what I did? I did, mate. It's brilliant, that. Well done. Good lad. Have you apologised to Michelle yet? For what? Steve, I'm not having you ruining Christmas for everybody, especially Amy. Bye, two. You taught me into Three. it. Uh, 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 uh. Um, go. Back in here. Give us a shout when it's done, Steve. Try again, Amy. OK, yeah, Dad. Uh, where's Mum? Oh, uh, she's uh, downstairs at busy. So. Do you know the way Indians say hello? No. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Ow. Don't ask me. <laughs> I thought it was iron. Lower. <laughs> All together, kids! Are you? You know what business you ought to be in? Surprise me. Chip oil. That's a business? Yeah, it's in here. It's, do you know you can run diesel engines on it? And, and the takeaway people, they pay you to get rid of it. And Sir Father here, he's been running a fleet of vans over a year, saving thousands. Interesting. I try telling him that. I oh, don't bother. It's all the rage, you know, there's recycling. Saving the planners and that. Look, right now, I'm more worried about saving my wedding, thanks to her. I know this and I feel dead guilty. Good. But Mole's suffering and all. Which is why I went to have a word with her. On your behalf. 
Why don't you just learn to keep your big nose out? It's your interfering and meddling and stupid flipping wedding ideas that got us into this state. I do understand why you're angry with me. I don't care if you understand or not. Look, maybe it's worth trying to have a talk to her again. Right, I will, but you don't, right? OK. It'll all work out, trust me. Those words are never one away from you again. That chip oil thing you were talking about? Yeah. Could I have a look? Uh, be my guest. So. Hiya. I missed you. Oh, that's Matt. You meet not go well. Tony, what's wrong? You're married to a murderer. What? According to Maria, I killed Liam. I paid someone to. Hang on, Maria, what are you talking about? While we were away, she's... She's been telling anyone who'll listen. I heard at the factory, I went round to see her and... Well, what on earth made her think that? She knows about you and Liam. Everybody knows about you and Liam. Well, this is the worst office party I've ever been to. It's the only one you've ever been to. Well, I'm stood here propping up the bar while half the workforce sneak off to the VIP lounge for jelly and ice cream. You think you've got it bad? My work to do is that rubbish, so I actually get crashing yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Get one for yourself. Oh, Ta. Uh, don't get too comfortable, though, because the party's nearly over. Oh, well, you better line up a quick whiskey, then. Anybody else? I oh, no, families. And I've got a tree to decorate. Ah, yes, which I've still got to buy. Thanks for reminding me. You know how animals are uh, creatures of habit? Oh, says you, with your silly little bedtime rituals. Hot chocolate in the same mug every night. Except last night. It, it was you, wasn't it? Eh? You sat there while I searched the entire kitchen knowing you'd smuggled it away. And your point about animals is? Uh, well, his cat. He says he fed it every evening. So maybe it'll turn up at its usual time, uh, which is fast approaching. I'll go back every night, rattling a tin, you know, but silch. Uh, well, maybe tonight's the night. Are you trying to get rid of me? Oh, no. It is. I'm not. My mother. Third call since I left. Major emergency. Mm. She'd lost the TV remote. Oh, wow. I think you need a drink. <laughs> Mum thinks something to keep fit, class. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll have a creme de menthe, please. Well, I'm being naughty. Well, what's wrong with a bit of naughtiness between friends? <laughs> <laughs> oh. He has got such a wicked sense of humour, hasn't he? Mmm. Wicked. Right, that's me. See you later. See you, See you later, later, mate. See you later. It was one night of madness. Months ago, Liam and Maria had had that huge bus stop, remember? I knew Rosie had seen him leave. A video. And that is all Maria's basing this nonsense on, is it? What else could it be? Nothing, obviously. Tony, it was just that once. And as soon as it happened, we regretted it straight away. I knew I loved you. That's all that mattered. Tony, please, I need you to believe that. What I believe doesn't matter. It's what the police believe that counts. Hi! Ma? Ma, please, just let me apologise. Why? Do you think saying sorry is going to make everything better? But what else can I do? Ask my Auntie Pam, it's her you listen to. I hate her for what she's done to us. <laughs> you can't blame her. You're a grown man, you can think for yourself. 
Jack's home this week. And? Well, he'll be dead upset if he knows that you've left me and he's not a well man. Oh! So I'm supposed to take you back for Jack's sake? Well, not just for Jack's sake, no. How low can you go? We split up because you lied to me and betrayed my trust. Part of living with Albie admitting to Jack what you've done. Just go and get your tea. There's some pies in the freezer. Yeah, that's right. Now we're on our own. You and Mary. There is no me and Mary, as you very well know. She seems rather taken with you. Having charms not always a blessing, Emily. Just because a lady takes a shine to me doesn't mean to say I'm encouraging it. You're not the only lady killer around here, you know. I haven't lost my touch. Hey, darling, come here. Come and sit next to me. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, don't be tiresome, please. What was I saying? No, well, it, it'd be like asking me not to breathe. Uh, Mary, love, there's just one thing I'd like to say to you. If you're looking for a touchy maturity, go for a bloke with something about him, you know what I mean? Not like him over there. Oh, really? <laughs> Just get up and go. Just got up and gone. Oh, I think you're mistaken there. <laughs> Give me a pub full of drunks over a kid's party any time. <laughs> Eileen will be wanting a pay rise at this rate, multitasking, Indian princess, switch operator. <laughs> I want you to drop the bad boyfriend bit with Michelle. Eh? Hey, why? Well, just until Christmas is over. I don't want to ruin it for everyone, especially Amy. Hmm. Me neither. What about you? Oh, well, I've managed plenty of Christmases without you. I reckon I can manage one more. But you've known about this video since September, Tony. Why didn't you say anything? We could have talked. You chose me. It's all that's important to me. I love you. You do believe me, don't you? Like you said, it's a place that counts. We were pretty much expecting you. So you know why we're here? Maria Connor, by any chance? Just want to ask you a few questions. Sure, have a seat. You don't want to do this in private? No, no. Uh, there's no secrets in this house about anything. OK, now for the decorations. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the big ones, OK, and then we're going to work our way down to the small ones. Mr Methodical. Well, yeah, but you can't just fling stuff on any old house, can you? That's not the Barlow way, is it? It wouldn't be. Right. What's in this box, Daddy? Ah, no, we do them later, son. Is it chocolate? Yes, it is chocolate, but they go on the tree. Now, if Santa sees you eating them before Christmas, you won't get any presents. Oh, Simon, he's only kidding you. I'll let him have one. Oh, go on, then. Just one. Ah, uh, one. <laughs> Tell you what, you're going to ruin that lad. Look, he's took two. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, um, you haven't seen Maria, have you? No, I'm sorry. You're closing early. We always close at six. What, even around Christmas? Well, I wasn't here last year, but as far as I know, I can't remember. Audrey's not said anything. She's missing out there. Why? Oh, run up to Christmas. Folk are rushed off the feet. Evening's only time some of them can manage. Well, yeah. We're chocker next Tuesday. And Wednesday. Yeah. I sent them back to the bar, but not so some hitman could come screaming round the corner and run into him. That's what she's saying, isn't it? She's saying you more or less confessed to doing it. Of what? What to whom? To her. This is really starting to get out of order. But you did go and see her today, didn't you? To ask why she was making these accusations, to make her see sense, yes, of course I went to see her. But you didn't confess to doing it? 
She's been wandering around the streets in her pyjamas, raving on about me like some mad woman. Our boss had to call the doctor to her the other day, apparently. If you could just answer the question, sir. I absolutely deny it. OK, um, if I could move on to this affair your wife had with Mr Corner. I'm sorry. It was hardly an affair. We slept together once. And when did you find out about it? About two months before we got married. That was very forgiving of you. Asked me to be a best man when you knew about that. It never really mattered to me, like Carla says. It was more of a fling than anything. Even so, I'm not sure I would have had him at my wedding, let alone ask him to be my best man. That's not how I saw it. How did you see it? As a way of putting it all behind us. Carla had chosen me, not him. End of story. I wanted to move on and for us to stay friends. And did you remain friends with him? Very much so. His death shattered me. Look, if I wanted to kill him, I'd have done something smarter than have him run down in front of witnesses where any number of things could have gone wrong, don't you think? Can you? You're very good in there, are we? Enjoyed it at the end. You've got the makings of a pro. I bet you say that to all the scores. <laughs> oh, I mean it. Took me right back. Remember Little Plum? Little Plum, you red, red skin, skin chum. chum. <laughs> <laughs> I love the beano. Oh, yeah. mm. Happy days. <laughs> Sorry about your wife. Me too. Still, it won't be the first time I've rode off into the sunset on my own. No? No. Just get back in the saddle and make the best of it, I suppose. I know about that. I guess you'd had an interest in life. First time anyone's called it that. It's a shame I have to uh, mosey on out. Oh, how you going? Got a big casino job on the East Coast. What, like Atlantic City? Great job. Oh. Got to keep the wolf from the door while the dust settles. Well, I hope it works out for you. It's only a, it's only a few hours' drive from here, you know, if you're at a loose end. And... I'll bear it in mind. For you. Tomorrow's another day. Yay! Yay! Looks great, that. <laughs> okay, go and get yourself a bag of crisps and I'll read you a story. I don't know. Simple pleasures, isn't it? A Christmas tree and a bag of crisps and they're on top of the world, aren't they? But you know what? I don't feel too bad myself. Oh, hey, good lad. <laughs> you got him well trained. Oh, yes. You want one? Uh, no, I'll, I'll wait. Now. OK. Story. I want the answer read. OK, <laughs> see? Chosen one again. There you go. <laughs> All about the wicked witch. Oh, okay. Oh, she's not got a Polish hip, has she? Acid tongue, terrible betting habit. <laughs> you shut up, Dad. Hmm? You tell him, Simon. Oh, here we go. Oh, can I have a word, Michelle? Yeah, of course, Betty. Oh, Nick Gordon's invited me down south, you know, for a few days over Christmas. That'll be all right, won't it? I think Steve's put you on the road to. He knows I usually go. Yeah, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and Boxing Day. Well, he never said. Well, I think he thought he was doing you a favour. How come? Well, he said you don't really get on with Gordon's wife. No, well, I don't. And that you're always glad to get home. Oh, I'll say I am, yeah. Right. And he thought, well, you know, if you had to work here, then that'd give you an excuse to say no. Oh, yes, that's very true, love, yes. I still like to go, though. <laughs> Bye, guys. So... This is my humble little empire. Very nice. <laughs> and my trusty crew. May I present Potty?
happy, everyone. My friend from Brazilian Crunch. <laughs> this is Betty. I'm pleased to meet you, love. And you. And Michelle, our Steve's other half. Hiya. Hi, yeah. And Becky. You're right, got. <laughs> and uh, could we have two glasses of red wine, yeah. please? So, Poppy, what do you do then? I mean, apart from Brazilian Crunch, of course. Same as you. Oh, what barmaid? Come on. You are a little bit more than that. <laughs> well, I ran the last place I worked in. Yeah? They made a big mistake letting you go. I've seen her in action. One of the best barmaids in Weatherfield is Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave it there for now. If there's anything else, you know where I am. Actually, um, there is one other thing. Mrs. Corner said you offered her a million pounds to keep quiet about all of this. Over five years. A million pounds? Well, is it true? I can hardly afford to pay the factory wages, let alone throw bungs like that around. You can check my bank accounts if you like. <laughs> He's right. We're going through a really sticky patch at the minute. A million pounds, if only. Why would she make it up? We did offer her some financial help with the baby after Liam died. But she's losing it more than I thought if she's saying things like that. OK, um, we might have to ask you a few questions at some point, Mrs Gordon. Sure. Right. We'll be in touch. You know, I'm starting to think there's some sort of curse in me. Why do you say that? Well, it's only a couple of months since I was in the frame for Rosie Webster's disappearance, the girl that was kidnapped. Yeah, I remember. Our father swore blind to the police that it was me. I had the motive. It all added up. It couldn't be anyone else. That was um, our old teacher in the end, wasn't it? I didn't do that. And I didn't do this either. I've never fallen off a ladder in my life. I'm talking about a gale seizure. She could tell the doctor them bangers your incapacity benefits. I'm doing her a favour, putting these up next to her. I'll she'll get the pleasure of them. All right, Gail. <laughs> Not too bad. You? Nice to have a few lights at Christmas, isn't it? A few, yeah. Evening, Gail. <laughs> Didn't know you were a handyman. When the mood takes him. <laughs> Any little jobs you need doing? Got Joe for that, thank you very much. Oh, of course. Providing his tools don't go missing again. <laughs> no, I don't. What? Want any ham or jam or lamb or spam? I only came in for a small donor, if that's OK with you. Oh, I can take my custom elsewhere if you'd prefer. No, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, what do you do with your used chip oil? Uh, some bloke comes and collects it, because of fortune and all. You don't just chuck it down sink, then? That's illegal. And it blocks your drains, anyway. Well, I could take it off your hands if you like. Who's going to want to buy used chip fat? No, I turn it into fat balls. Feed the birds on the red wreck. Well, how much do you want? Oh, I'll take all of it. All right. Did he sleep? Oh, yeah, he went down eventually. He got himself that excited about that tree, you know. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, I remember that feeling. Hmm. We can afford one most years. Oh, here we go. Lived in a shoebox in Midlet Road, did you? Do you know what? It wasn't that far off. You were lucky. You were lucky to have a shoebox. I tell you something, when we moved it, it was the first decent house we'd ever lived in, you know. Oh, Lee, give over. All right, yeah, it's all right for you, wasn't it? Middle class. Middle class? Mm. My dad was a teacher, wasn't he? That don't make you middle class. Does in my book. Mm. <sighs> no wonder Fizz is so concerned about her. So that was the first time that you'd heard about me and Liam, then, when Rosie showed you that video? Like I told you. 
It's in the past. Stop beating yourself up. But I'm curious why you never said anything. What was the point? It was over. You know, it's not like you to let a thing like that go. Well, I wasn't best pleased, but I didn't want to make an issue of it. Did you say anything to Liam? No. Or Maria. No point in breaking up their marriage because of it. What would you rather have had? No. I'm just surprised you didn't speak to Liam. It was a dilemma. Oh, so you did think about it? Obviously. I find out the woman I worship slept with my friend. Who wouldn't want to kick up an almighty stink? So why didn't you? Because it wouldn't have done any good. You'd have found out about it, would have argued. I might have stirred up feelings you still had for him. And I could have lost you. And since that's the last thing on earth I wanted to happen, I didn't say anything. To anyone. Oh, Becky, um, did I tell you that I'm cooking Christmas dinner for everyone? Yes, um, I did hear you say that. Right, well, you're very welcome if you want to join us. Well, I, I did have plans, but, um... Fallen through? Mm, kind of. Right, so you can come then? No, I've, um... You see, I've promised I'll help Roy and Ellie with the soup kitchen thing, you know. Oh, oh well. Well, you know where we are if you change your mind. Go. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Uh, can I have a word, Liz? Fire away. Well, the thing is, Gordon wants me to spend Christmas with them, but uh, Michelle says that I'm on the rotor. Yeah, ask that I'd talk to Steve. Betty, if you want to go to your gardens, you've got it. Are you sure, love? Mm, positive. Oh, thanks ever so. Oh, I'll go and phone him and tell him. Thank you, love. Hi, Just as long as I'm not doing double shifts over Christmas to cover for her. I'm sure we'll manage. And if she do not want the work, I'm sure there's others that will. I used to drive the old man mad with this one. Hmm. I think I know how he must have felt. Well, hey, you put something else on if you like. No, no, he's fine. Oops. No. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a bit peckish. So do you fancy a takeaway then? Yeah, yeah, if you like. Uh, it's a pity we've got Simon or we could have gone out. Mm. Still, it's cosy in here, eh? the two of us. So have you got any menus then? You want? Menus for the takeaway. Oh yeah, yeah, the food, sure, right. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll open another bottle oh, while no, I'm at no, it. no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, come on, Lee, you've got to keep me company. Yeah, I, I am doing, I just, I just don't want to get bladdered, that's all. Oh, well, the night is still young. <laughs> Tina says it's David's 18th on Christmas Day. It is. Got anything planned? Um, not really, <sighs> no. I was uh, sort of hoping that he might take her out in the evening. <laughs> and why might that be? <laughs> I can't possibly think. <laughs> what on earth? I had a few left over shades of waste them. But I don't want them. You don't want them? I'd like you to take them down, please. You'll have to cut Rudolph's nose off. And I'd like you to turn that music off. You said you liked them before. Well, I don't think I said that. It's not about liking them. 
on someone else's property you didn't even ask. Well, I wouldn't mind if you put them on ours. Nor me. I'd be well chuffed. And it's not costing you a penny in electric. How are we supposed to get to sleep with those lights flashing through the curtains all night? I'd like them taken down. I'm not sure I could do that. Not in a ladder in the dark. You put them up in the dark. Yeah, but if my hip starts playing up... If you don't take them down, I will. I tell you what, we'll turn them off when it gets late. Yeah, what, what time do you go to bed? And we'll keep the music off as well. How's that for a compromise? He can't chop his nose off. It's the best beat. Oh, go on, Gail. It's Christmas. What'd you say? Where's this takeaway that I owe? Oh, Peter, don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> oh, come on, Leanne. Why, you know, what's wrong? I thought that's one thing that me and you had in common. We both know how to have a good time, don't we? <laughs> oh. Uh, we are having a good time, aren't we? Eh? I mean, you'd tell me if I wasn't giving you what you want, wouldn't you? Hmm? Leanne. Relax. Peter, stop relax. it. Stop it. Leanne. Will you stop oh, it? Get off! Relax. Peter! What's wrong? Oh, my God. Come on, Lee, we're just getting warmed up. Yeah, well, maybe that's what worries me. Hey, you can't leave. I've ordered the food. Peter, get off me, Look, I'm sorry, I just don't see what the problem because is. Because you're drunk. I'm not drunk. Yes, you are. Just get off, I'm Peter. Not. Just Lee. get off. We'll see you in the morning when you're sober. You haven't eaten all the chocolate sandwiches, have you, Dad? That's why we came home early, isn't it? You knew about Maria on our honeymoon. Uh-huh. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to spoil things. We just got married. We were having an amazing time. And this is why my phone went missing. I'm sorry I lied. I did it with the best intentions. So when were you going to tell me? As soon as I talk to her. And get to the bottom of it, which is exactly what I've done. A million pounds. You don't believe that, do you? No, of course I don't. That's crazy. Then what? I can't get my head around why... how you would have forgiven me and Liam so easily. I didn't have a choice. It was either that or risk losing you. <laughs> what you did to Kevin? I mean, he just didn't back down, so you waged some massive big campaign against him. I'm more important than him, aren't I? So? So why wouldn't you go further with me or Liam? Like killing him. Driving someone like Kevin out of business is one thing. It's just business. But killing? Do you really think I'm capable of that? Even if I was, I wouldn't know where to begin. You've got to believe me, Carla. I... I had nothing to do with Liam's death. Of course I believe you. Look, no more lies in the future, all right? From either of us. Hey, what have I told you? Come on, look lively. You're gonna be late. I need a towel. What for? For swimming or what? The nativity. <sighs> look, Dad. Oh, dear. What's this? This for me? 
Dear parent, carer, blah, 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 your child is playing the innkeeper in the school nativity. Ha ha, hence the towel. I've got you. I've got you. It's a very important role, that, you know. There will be a public performance at 2.30 on the... today. Well, that's today. Mate, why didn't you give me this sooner, eh? Will you come and see me? Yeah. Of course I'll come and see you. I'm going to be on the front row, and so will Gran and Grandad when I tell them. Now, oh, look. What's all this? I can see I'm going to have to check this backpack a bit more regular. Oh, mate, I... how long's that been in here? It's not funny. Oh, oh, here we go. What's going on? Have they let you go? They didn't lock me up. But they are charging you. They've got to be charging you. No. But you're a murderer. Hey, don't be stupid. And don't go repeating that in public. Otherwise, you'll be the one who ends up talking to the police. You whore. You lying, cheating whore. OK, that's enough now. Come on. I'll take you home. Come on. Christmas next week. I've got loads of parties to go to, and then I go and get a big fat set. I can't see any spots. Well, yeah, that's because I've got like two whole sticks of concealer on it. It's there, all right, waiting to erupt. So vain. My tea time tonight. It's like a big red fairy, like glowing in the middle of my chin. Maybe we should put a little star on your head if you look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, way up. More teacher and lurch are you? Morning. Can you give us a few minutes, please, Rosie? Yeah, of course. Um, shall I go and get you some coffees? Remind me why I can't sack her. If you sack her, you have to sack Sally too. You just fan the flames, so let it go. Thanks for what you did outside. Stand by your man. That's what the song says. Tammy Wynette, who also had a hit with D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Besides, any little nagging doubts I had were all banished, weren't they, when I saw Maria howling like a banshee? Are you a closet country fan? It's only fair everything's out in the open now we're married. Morning. One of the monitors is on the blink. All oh, right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll fix that. I've already phoned the service company, but they can't get anybody out until tomorrow morning. Thanks. Uh, look, Lee, uh, about last night. Don't want to talk about it. Right, okay, that's that's fine. Uh, only, did I make a complete idiot of myself or what? I'll, I'll take that as a yes. Just content you open up then? Yeah. Blimey. I thought it was frosty outside. How did you get on in Blackpool? May as well not have gone. Got your own illuminations here on Coronation Street. <laughs> oh no, they keep them on dead late. Keeps me awake. Mm. How have you been then? So good. Wedding's off. Molly's left me. <laughs> Very funny. I'm not joking, Jack. Oh. Ah. Hello, Mary, love. What can we do for you? I I've got a Christmas card for Norris. I, I don't want to interrupt him at his work. Oh, what lovely handwriting you have. I get a lot of practice with all the competitions. I, I, I like to make a good impression. <sighs> It's lovely, is that? Uh, look, you haven't got a moment to spare, have you? Uh, why? Well, I'm trying to untangle these fairy lights and they're impossible. Could you give me a hand? OK. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, Leanne, guess what? Simon's in the nativity at school. It's nice. Yeah, he's, uh, he's playing the innkeeper. It's good, isn't it? Boo's running the family, does it? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to see him this afternoon. If you fancy it, come along if you like. I'll, I'll close shop. 
I'm going shopping with Janice. I did tell you, but obviously you've forgotten. No, 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 I, I, I remember. Right, that's it. It's time to hold clear the air talks. You are? Me and you are going to the Rovers. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Your solution to everything. I'm starving and we need to talk, Leanne. It's my treat. I'll get your coat, OK? Come on, Rosie. Be brave. You're a big girl. Not very nice when people creep up on you, is it? Try and catch you out. Is that a good idea? Oh, yeah. Well, a couple of glasses each. Wash down this hot pot, won't we? Harry the dog, you mean? Yeah, I, uh, I do feel lousy. I'm not surprised the amount you put away. No, I, I mean, I feel terrible that I offended you. Good, because I was angry. I still am. Yeah, I know. Well, it won't happen again, Leanne, I promise. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. Lovely, this. Mm. No, not for me, thanks. Oh, come on. I said no, thanks. Are you scared I'll get all amorous again? Well, if you do, you're going to get a fat lip. I just don't want one. It's only 12 o'clock. Right, well, you can collect a few glasses then, maybe, while we're quiet. Right, OK. <laughs> Hey, what do you think? Do you reckon she passes muster? Well, I don't see why not. Good, because I'm going to make her assistant manager. You doing what? Well, I know you've got a music career to juggle. I didn't think you'd want the job. Well, you might have asked. You betrayed me. Not on purpose. After everything I did for you. I know. I took you under my wing. Promoted you. I trusted you. I know. I really messed up. Messed up? Oh no. See, photocopying the wrong invoice, Rosie, that's messing up. But following me around, spying on me. Call I wasn't spying on you. I just happened to be at the flat. You scheming little witch. You did it because you thought you could get one up on me. Blackmail me. No, no colour, I swear. Only you're so stupid, aren't you, that you showed it to Maria, a woman who's lost her husband. Yeah, but that was my mum's fault. Your mother did not take those pictures, Rosie. Yeah, but she told Maria. Don't try wriggling out of it. The repercussions of this are massive. My marriage is in tatters. And it's all your fault. I'm so sorry. You're going to sack me? Oh, no. But I'm going to make your life a complete misery. I promise, Carla. Carla, I will make it up to you. <laughs> Keys to this place. Now. Me putting up with it, it's your pub. I can't interfere. Why not? I can't undermine my mother. She's the gaffer. I like a drink at lunchtime, you know. Where's the harm in that, eh? You're going to the school later, aren't you? Yeah, I know I am. And I'll be fine. I can take my booze, you know. Are you trying to lecture me? No. If you think the only reason that I made a pass at you is because I was drunk, then well, you must have a very low opinion of yourself. I've got a very low opinion of you. Oh. Ouch. And I don't know what you think you would have done if I had stayed the night, because you could barely stand up. All right, don't. You know, it's not exactly romantic being mauled by a bloke who slurs his words. Well, you should know. Thank you. That was a joke. Come on. Right. Now we've got to the bottom of it, haven't we? You think because of me past, I'm an easy touch. 
No, I'm just winding you up, Leanne. Come on, if you're going to give it out... Do you know what, Peter? I resign. What? Oh, great. Well, so much for clearing the air talk. You think all it takes to win me round is an hot pot and a garbled apology? Two garbled apologies. What? I have apologised to you twice, but no, you're right. I've underestimated the seriousness of this whole situation, so... OK. So sit down, please, and let's let's talk. This is my uh, contribution to the festivities. Five quid down the market. They're lovely. Oh, hold still a minute. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting more like that Twister game, isn't it? I'm a bit of a demon when it comes to Twister. It used to be a ritual in our house at Christmas time when I was little. Oh, I'm going back years. Before Mother's hip went. Oh, these party games can be lethal. I don't mean she did a hip in playing Twister. I mean, now she's infirmed, she can only watch and cheer. Uh, but she's all right now, then, is she? Bearing up. Oh, hang on. Yeah? Mm. Oh, <laughs> clever you. <yeah>. Well done. <laughs> I do hope I'm not interrupting anything. Uh, well, no, it's, it's not what it seems. Uh, she was just helping me untangle the lights. First, I just want to say I would never take advantage of you because of your past. That's what it looked like. We've all done things we wish we hadn't. But you know, that doesn't necessarily make us who we are, does it? True. And if I did think like that, I wouldn't have employed you in the first place, would I? Unless you were thinking an ex or can no kids, oh, just what I need. Look, Leanne, you get on great with Simon. And that came completely out of the blue. Yeah, and for me and all, I don't normally get on with kids. Well, you get on with him, and he thinks the world of you. So you can't leave. That's blackmail. Well, I'm going to stoop to any means to get you to stay. Leanne, hiring you was the best decision that I made since I came back here. Peter, I don't need the acro. I know, I know. Look, I've put me all into this job. I've helped you out with Simon. Well, that's what I'm saying. I need you. He needs you. It's just the drink talking. No, it's not. I just want you to know how much I appreciate you, really. Right, I'm going. I've got to go and meet Jan. OK. But you'll be in later, yeah? <sighs> yeah. Can I have a double scotch, please, love? Coming up. Thanks. Oh, I, I, I don't have a card for you. It's OK. I wasn't expecting one. I, I, I don't do Christmas cards anymore. Oh. It, it, it's not just humbug. It, it, it's just that we sell so many of them in the shop, uh, far more than we used to, and oh, it seems such a waste when you know come January you'll just end up in the bin. Listen, I'm going out to get some spare bowls for the lights. Oh, all right. Bye. Thanks for your help, love. You're welcome. Was he pestering you? Yeah, Jed, I mean. Only you looked embarrassed when I came in. Only because it looked like... I don't know what it looked like. Well, I, mean, I suppose he's a nice enough chap, but he does have a roving eye. He's lived on his own for a long time. Uh, told you the story of his life, has he? Just snippets. I like him. Not in that way. Oh, well, I mean, of course not. I mean, after all, he's old enough to be your father. Well, um, I'm not bothered about the age difference. When um, people are uh, 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 attracted to one another, um, <laughs> um, age is uh, irrelevant. Oh, I quite agree. I, 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 I wasn't being ageist. I, I was just being jedist. There's a lot of nonsense flying around about me and Liam. I thought you might like to know the truth. Straight from the oar's mouth.
Oh, this seat is taken. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Ashley. We're waiting for Deirdre. Oh, that's OK. Oh, turkey's in, by the way. £12 on the right. If I had my way, we'd be having a goose. Just pick it up whenever you want. Thanks. Where is this daughter of mine? Well, it doesn't go whether she makes it at all. Peter only told us today. Oh, hang on. There she is, Deirdre. You're cutting it fine. Where's Peter? Yeah, you tell me. He was very keen that all of us should be here. Yeah, all of us. That way it's less noticeable when he doesn't show his face. Right then, I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to ask me questions or shall I just talk? Well, you've probably already got your answers worked out, haven't you? You and Tony are good at that. OK, this was a mistake. How long was it going on? It was never a full-blown affair. Why are you doing this? Because you loved Liam. You deserve to know the truth. So, night when you had that meeting in Birmingham? Birmingham? No. Nothing happened there. What about that night that we came round to yours for dinner and I went home earlier? No. OK, we slept together... We slept together one time. When you split. After the baby. You sit there, calmly telling me how you screwed my husband after I lost our baby. I want to smash your face in. I'm not proud of what I did, Maria. That's why I'm trying to be honest with you. And what do you mean, driving myself mad? Well, the thing you're saying about Tony... Oh, right, yeah. That's the real reason you're round here, isn't it? Cos he sent you round to try and knock some sense into me. He doesn't even know I'm here. He practically admitted it to me. He tried to bribe me with a million quid. This isn't going anywhere. I'm sorry. Damn right, it's not. Now, get out! Go on, then. Get back to him! Get back to your murdering husband! Sorry, I've, uh, I've not missed the start of it. There's been a slight delay. Mary had a little accident. Oh, is that, what's that? First night nerves. <laughs> Too much orange squash, I think. Hey, and your Simon looks a treat. I think he'd be very proud. Hey, you know, I, I could have missed this. I only found the letter in his bag this morning. You should really let people know a little bit more sooner. Well, we send out a newsletter every week. People need to organise the time, you know. I've got a business to run. How would he feel if I would have missed this, you know? You should let people know sooner. Have you been drinking, Mr. Bark? Well, it's hard not to at this time of year, you know, especially in my line of work. Anyway, I'd best get in. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't let you go in. Right, right. No, I've just had a word with Molly. Oh, Jack, it's probably best if no, you no, stay no, out. Listen, listen. I've just played the sympathy card. Oh, I. Looting about, picking up ready meals for one. And, and? She fell for it. Coming to the house after her cooked me dinner. Providing you are not around, but you are going to be around. Oh, it's pulling stupid stunts like this that got me into this no, mess. No, look, look, I just say that I've got an important call to make. I disappear, leaving you two to talk. Won't work. Look, she wants to get back together again. I can feel it. Yeah? Yes. Look, she just wants to teach you a lesson, make you sweat. That's all. Six o'clock. Remember... Look, it's starting. I'm going in. I'm sorry. 
We have a strict policy which prevents anyone who is drunk... I'm not drunk. ...or appears to be drunk from entering school premises. You signed up to this policy when you enrolled Simon at the school. Listen, if we would have had that rule in my day, we wouldn't have learned out. Half the teachers were down the pub every dinner time. Oh, oh sorry, mate. Uh, emergency. There's a little accident. Just uh, carry on without us. Peter? It's a public safety issue as much as anything else. It's flaming ridiculous. Look, you know what my little lad's been through this year, don't you? I know, and I'm very sorry, but the policy, Mr. Barlow, you're not... Look, a star. Behold, the Son of God will be born this night. Get ye to Bethlehem. Sorry, but I have to ask you to leave. I have a right to be. Mr. Barlow, Shush. you are not stopping me from watching my son, OK? No way. And the street returns in half an hour. Is it she? Eh? Oh, what is he doing? Oh, come on. Come on, this way. Come oh, on. yeah, come yeah, on. yeah, come yeah, on. no, it's the innkeeper. Yeah, I remember now. He's hit the big time, eh? Hey, I was a rock once. You remember that? You're upsetting eh? the children. Yeah, come on, mate. No, mate, you're upsetting the children. All I want to do is support my son, OK? Get him out again. Hey, there he is. Hello, my mate. Hello. Oh, Pete! Get up. Get in, Get in. Get up. Get up. Oh, lad, Pete. look at him. Oh. Get him up. What are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? Get off! What are you doing? Hey, how good is this, eh? We hardly recognised you. Is Dad in my lantern? Of course I have, son. Hey, you can't be innkeeper without one of them, can you, eh? Come on, come come on, on. let's on. get you outside for a minute. Sure. Calm down a bit. Hey, come give on, us please. a smile, Sai. It's OK. I'm calm. I'm all right. All right, let go of me. I'm going. All right. All right. It appears that I may have pressing business elsewhere. Your lad is in tears. He's not. He's fine. Aren't you, Si? You're fine, mate, eh? His first Christmas without his mummy. Don't you think he has enough to go with? You're not upset, are you, eh? Where's my dad be going? Oh, I'll only be a minute, mate. Don't you worry. I will be right back, Si, OK? Don't you worry. Peter. It's all right, Mr. Barlow. They'll, they'll make sure he goes. Why don't you sit down? Simon wants you here. Now then, children, everyone to your starting places. Can somebody round up our Mary? Where's my daddy going, Grandad? Hello. What are you doing here? Tell me your business. Oh, what a shame. I need her to come back to all the movie stuff and all. We're just trying not to let it upset us. What did Tony say? Apparently, he's known about me and Liam for months. Oh, right. I know I had no idea. I thought no one had ever found out. So, why didn't he say anything then? Well, he reckoned. He didn't want to break it up, you know. He might wreck everything. And, um... Might make me think more about Liam, you know. Yeah, I know, but you think he was? He was afraid, wasn't he? Afraid that we'd have an almighty row and I'd get really upset and then he'd lose me. leanne has been brilliant. Good. I'm glad. And he knows about Maria and all. Telling the police that he murdered Liam. Or had something to do with it. Or whatever other mad things popped into her head right now. So how's he taken that? <sighs> He's been amazing. I mean, very understanding. I never had him down as the forgiving type, to be honest. It just shows you, doesn't it? I mean, any other guy would have gone right over to Liam and beaten him up, I suppose, wouldn't it? I mean, I suppose it's not like him and Liam were ever friends, is it? Aye. Carla, when you've got a minute. Sorry. Well, I would appreciate a word or two. Well, 
I've not decided if I'm going with the Gazette yet. I might get a better deal with the magazine. You'd be better off going with a responsible investigative reporter. Yeah, but have you seen your photos? They're like rubbish. Well, we're not a glossy fashion mag, but I can promise you a double-page spread. My Weeks of Hell by Rosie Webster. Straight after the trial, when the news is still hot. Hmm. And can I write it? I don't think my editor would go for that. I'll write it, but as if it's you. Well, how do I know you're not going to put words into your mouth? Or be on tape. Well, how much will I get for an exclusive? Um, will I get a makeover for the photos? I will need a full colour spread. Right. So this video everyone's talking about... I know. And I'm sorry. So it is what it looks like then, is it? Look, we never meant to hurt anyone. We tried our hardest to make sure nobody found out. Well, everything except behave yourselves. You have to understand, Michelle. Liam didn't do this deliberately. Hurt Maria, I mean. It was just a silly mistake. It wasn't even what you'd call an affair. But you admit there was something going on. Yeah, a silly, stupid mistake. And I defended you. I told Maria that she was imagining things. Sorry. Do you know what really stinks about this? Is that you pretended to be upset about Paul. I was. Right, but not upset enough to fall into bed with his brother. Hey, it wasn't like that. I... Do you know what, Carla? I actually don't want to know anymore. Oh, come on, Michelle, you've got to believe me. We didn't mean for it to go anywhere. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you betrayed Paul with his own brother. Paul was dead. His memory. And you, you cheated on Tony and Maria. But you know what? Right, it's done, OK? I've had me say. You can't say anything to make things better and there's absolutely no point in me making things worse. I just hope that this is the end of the nasty surprises. Kiss you. Right. Yeah, it's very good, isn't it? Yeah. I really like the singing. Oh, yes, and you knew all the words, didn't you? We could see you singing along. He's a little hero, star of the show. Oh, no. All right, no trouble. Hey, Daddy, tell you for a Christmas treat, eh? Come on, mate. Are you in a fit state? Of course he isn't. Hey, come on, get in. What do you want? Do you want a pizza or do you want a burger? Hmm? Grandad. No, you stay here. Daddy's not very well. Oh, Daddy's never been better. Come on, mate, get him. Come on. I'll take him home. I know what we could oh. do. We could take Simon home with us. No, there's no need for that, Ash. Oh, it's all right. I'll let the boys play together. You can have his tea at ours. No, I'm taking him out for his tea. I'm sorry, Mr Barlow. We can't let you do that. Oh, you can't stop me. You see, he's my son. You're drunk. You go. And you're an officious little jobs with what I'm going to be sober in the morning, mate. You sure you can manage? Yeah, really go. Get Josh out of this. I know, I know. Of course you do, mate. Hey, we'll have a pizza on the way then, eh? We, we can go to the park. No, look, you know, you're not taking it. It's Christmas and he's had a drink or two. He doesn't need you gulping at him. Clear off. Yeah, go on. Go on. Keep walking on your way. Crawl back to your own miserable life. Stop feeding on ours. Mine. Give me them back. You have to knock me down if you want them. Are you that far gone? Just give me the keys. No. Please. Sorry, son. No. I'll come with you, Daddy. You could have let yourself in. Well, there's no need. I saw you coming from the bookies. So, I thought fish pie. Oh, you make a grand fish pie, you do. <laughs> Son, look who's here. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mo. 
You promised me it'd be just us. You said it'd be out. Oh, lovey, lovey. Never lovey. mind, lovey. This is so unfair. You've set me up. I've been to the supermarket and planned everything. Uh, I'll go. Stay there. I really thought you wanted a nice dinner with just me. Well, I, I do, with both of you. No, it's all right, I'll Sit go. down. And do you know I'm to have a sit down with him? What for? I've got nothing to say to either of you. I'm going. Oh, you'd behave like this if Alvira was still here, would you? <laughs> no, you flaming wouldn't, because she wouldn't allow it. She'd bump your flipping heads together. She'd have understood. She couldn't bear lying, so don't you try oh, that no, no, one on, on me. Come on, don't go, Molly. I've, I've, I've had nothing to eat today. Well, there's some fish there. Make a white sauce, boiled how, potatoes how, how, how and mash make, them. How do you make a white sauce? Just get some butter and flour. And, butter and, and, and then what do you do? Do you pour it all over the fish raw, like, you know? Forget it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just you stay out of my way. I'm glad you're enjoying my book, Tyrone. Do you anything you want to tell me? No. I don't understand it. It was full a minute ago. Sorry, sir. No more tonight. No. One more drink and then home. We'll be very glad to see you tomorrow. You'll see me now and you'll get me a drink. I want a pint and I want a whiskey and I want it now. Sorry. I can make you a very nice coffee. If I wanted a coffee, love. Oi, Liz. I want to speak to the landlady. Liz, what sort of bar staff are you employing? Is there a problem? Yeah. She won't serve me. No. Must be time you went home and served up then. What gives you the right to tell me what to do? Eh? If you look above that door, you'll see my name. So please, take your temper and leave right now. You what? Don't give my staff any more trouble and we'll start fresh tomorrow. Cause a fuss and I'll buy you. Come on there, sweetheart. You can spend as long in the bath as you like. And then we'll have tea and a bedtime story and then bed. How does that sound? Yeah? Come on, then. <sighs> I don't know. It's unforgivable upsetting you like that. Oh, I'm all right. Just tired. I mean, it's not enough to be a drunk. He's turning into a bully, too. Poor little Simon. He'll never forget this. Yes, he will. He will, Blanche, really. Yeah, you know, I feel like disowning him. And Peter. Poor, poor Peter. How you got rich? Long hours, all on your own. Hard work. I was never afraid of it. What do you want? Or was it something else that made you rich? If you're here for more cash. Like being willing to stamp on people who got in your way. Maybe you should remember that and scurry back under your stone. OK. What did you want? Um, I thought you ought to be forewarned. You're senile. I'm not the only one who knows a snake when he sees one, you know. <laughs> that Maria. Oh, she's got your number, hasn't she? Maria's half mad with grief. Well, I'd better call round then. Compare notes with her. Yeah? Hiya. Thought you'd gone home. How was the place? School's small, don't they? I mean, you forget. You walk in. 
There it is. Kids and kids plasticine and kids lose and kids. Did you get there on time? Oh, yeah. Time to spare. Much good that did me. What did you do? Nothing. Oh, thanks for that. Just assuming that, you know, that I did something. Well, did you see the play? No. No. They won't let me in. They won't even let me take him home, you know. It's my own son. Where is he? It's with Granddaddy of the Flaming Year. My sainted father, you know, you'd think he'd stick up for me, wouldn't you? You know, and the sad little teacher had a go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do you know he joined in? He got kicked out of the nativity. Hey, you know what? I'm glad that I've got you to come home to. We'll see them all off, won't we? Hey. Good night, Peter. Oh, no. Wait. No! Don't go. You're not good company when you're like this. All right, look, I'll have a coffee, I'll sober up. I'll go get the kid. Do you fancy having a night in with us? No! And the best thing you can do is let Simon stay where he is with his granddad. Oh. Thanks for the advice. Like you're somebody that I would take advice from. Good night. Yeah, with your blameless life, Leanne. Good night, Peter. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. We've only made enough for two. Oh, come on, Moll. What are you doing? Making my tea. You can have mine. I can't. No, you're all right, Jack. I hate fish pie. You never told me. You never asked. There you go. Very balanced. Will you give over, you two? No, you're all right, Jack. I'm not letting her get to me. Yes, you flipping are. No, I'm not. I'm sick of arguing. I've apologised over and over again. And if she can't accept that I move on, then... Oh, I've moved on. Sauce, Jack. Hi. I've moved on and out of your life, Tyrone Dobbs. How's your day been? Miserable. I miss you. He misses you. And you miss us, both of us. Did I put enough salt in it? Dad! Dad! Deirdre! Deirdre's putting Simon to bed. Oh, God, I'll, uh, I'll go up and kiss him goodnight. You will eh? not. He's had enough upset today. Look, Dad, all I wanted to do was watch him in his no, flaming I don't want to play. slang him out. I don't want to slang him out. Simon needs a little normality and you are not coming in. I've got his teddy, look. He don't like to sleep without oh, his teddy. give it to me. I'll take it out. No, I'll place. give it him. You're not coming in. Well, then you're not having it, then. Oh, for goodness sake. Go away and sleep it off and we'll talk in the morning. When I've seen my son. No, actually, scrub that. When I've got him. When I've got my son all right, back. you can threaten all your life. Who's threatening? What, what did I say? Look, he's crying. I can hear him. Satisfied? I want my son. No! Simon! Simon! You all right, Blanche? I've gone all dizzy. Get away from us! Go on, get away! You poison! You wreck everything you touch, you damage every life! Get away! Simon! Simon, come on, let's go home. I've got Teddy, look. Look, I've got Teddy. We used to get our gossip free. Now you have to pay for it. Yeah, but it's not gossip, is it? It's news and celebrities. Celebrities know nothings with money. Famous for being famous. Wouldn't it be great, though, opening a magazine and seeing your own face? It depends on the face. I would be totally made up. Bye, Rita. See you, love. Bye. Wait! Uh, uh, hey, 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 we're closed. Come in, Jed. You've just made it. We're closed five minutes ago. Is he always so irritable? Only most of the time. Look, some of us have put in a 12-hour day and need to go home, that's all. <laughs> He's in a rush to see Mary. Can I have an evening paper, please, love? Yes, well, that's where you're wrong, cos I've planned a quiet evening in. Ah, hang gliding off the viaduct. Last one. 
Oh, the wit and repartee of the retail trade. Serious question, Norris. Have you got any feelings for her? Certainly not. So, are you just friends? Oh, how many more times? So, if I was to... Court her? Spend some time with her? Be my guest. Nothing to do with me. Oh, thanks. Thanks, I will. Mm. You absolutely sure about that? Look, do, do, do you really think that Mary, that intelligent, perceptive woman, would give him the time of day? I think she might give him a few evenings, as soon as you've thrown them both together. Oi! I want my son! I want my boy! Oi! I'm not going away! I'll break this tiny door down! Oi! You can see it when you're sober. You don't decide when I see my son! All right, would you rather social services took him? Oh, don't try and talk sense to him, can you? Just make him worse. I want him home, and I want him in his own bed. Well, don't you think we all want that? Shut the door, Ken. You can't reason with him. Well, leave him screaming and yelling all night. Well, call the police, then. I said you should have called the police. Yes, yeah, she's right. We'll call the coppers. We'll let them decide who should have my son. Me, or the worst father the world has ever known. Pizza. And not forgetting you. Not forgetting the mother of a murderer. Yeah, you're right. Go on, I'll call him. I'll call him. Yeah, OK, go on and make it even worse. Because I can't do a worse job with him than you did with us. I'm sorry, Peter, but Simon doesn't want to see you. Oh, it's true. Simon doesn't want to see you. Liar. We told him you were coming back tomorrow and he said he didn't want you to. He said you shout too much. So come back when you're sober and we'll see what we can salvage from this mess. No, you've turned Wait, him against no. me, you jealous, nasty old man. Yeah, go on, go on. You've been itching to that all day. Peter, no, They stop won't it. let me have my son. Come on, come away. Listen, they're turning him against no, me. You've done that all on your own. Oh, Ken, come inside. Come on, come on. We can go and talk about it. Come on. He's my son, and I want him. Well, why don't you try? He's my son, and I love him. Oh, oh God, you manage that. No, Peter, don't. I just wanted to get Christmas right. Just wanted to sit with all the other dads. Why couldn't I do that? You're right in hell, all of you. Sleeping it off, is he? Oh, I don't know. Well, if you do manage to get hold of him, I'd like a quick word. Voicemail. Hi, it's Leanne. Listen, I'm outside. Where are you? Just give me a ring, right? I mean, I don't want a row or anything, but Simon's missing his teddy. We've done our best to distract him, but he loves that bear. Well, I don't know where it is. Well, Simon cried himself to sleep last night. Tell him that, will you? Is this a bad time? Is this about Tony Garden? Yeah. Come in. So what's the point? Why come and see me? Well, we thought you'd want to know that we thoroughly investigated all allegations against Mr Gordon. And found nothing? Well, sometimes there's nothing to find. So what are you saying, that you think it was an accident? Well, we are still looking for the driver of the car. But leaving the scene of an accident is still a crime. He more or less told me that he did it! He denies that. Maybe you misunderstood what he was saying. So what are you going to do now? Look, I understand that you're upset and angry, but as far as Mr Gordon's concerned, there is no case to answer here. You are letting a man get away with murder! I'm sorry you feel that way. It's a liar! Why can't anyone see it? 
promise he just bribed you like he tried to bribe me. I think I'd better go. How much does it cost to buy yourself out of a murder charge? I fulfilled my professional duty. Look, I'm sorry you're disappointed with the result. Maybe you should speak to someone. Yeah, well, maybe you should do your job properly. There you go. So you haven't seen him? I've left messages. He's done a runner. No, he wouldn't leave Simon. He could be anywhere. Happen is rejoin the Navy. He could be 20,000 leagues under the sea. Well, I'm not going to be able to open the shop. I haven't got any keys. Well, I think the shop's the least of our worries. I mean, the way he went off last night, anything could have happened to him. I'm sure he'll be OK. He doesn't deserve to be a dad. Social services should take him into care and knock a bit of sense into his thick skull. Well, I thought you were all for giving him a second chance. Second chance, yes. Not third, fourth and fifth. The way he went for you last night is a feckless, drunken waste of space. And he's none of my blood in him. Oh, so it's all my fault. You said it. So what happened to you? I don't know. Have we calmed down now? Were you, uh, were you waiting for me? Well, I've not got the keys for the shop, have I? So I couldn't open up. Oh, oh, well, never mind. Where's Simon's teddy? Hey. Simon's teddy. He took it with you on a pub crawl, and he's missing it, Peter. Od kupienie win, od kupienie win. Oh, that was beautiful. It's made me feel quite festive. Yeah. Oh, would you like to see one of your carols? No, that was one of our carols, Silent Night. It's a traditional Polish carol. No. No, no, it's a traditional English carol translated into Polish. I think it's German, actually. Huh? Uh, oh. Oh. This has just arrived for you. Oh, for me. Yeah. I, I, I think it's one of your competition things. Oh, it's Harrod's Christmas hamper. Oh, <laughs> Harrod's? Oh, I'm impressed. No, this was the top prize. Oh, hey, let, let me see. Perniske? Pierniki, Polish Christmas cake made with honey. <laughs> Mushroom dumplings. Also Polish. Beet soup. Polish. Carp, herrings, noodles. All these things are Polish. Let, let me see. <laughs> it's a Polish Christmas hamper. How amazing is that? I was just singing famous Polish carols. <laughs> Will you be going home for Christmas, Vicky? Oh, I'm afraid not. It's very expensive to travel at Christmas. Uh, I've just had a wonderful idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so have I. How would you like to buy Polish hamper? Why don't you come round and have Christmas with us and we could have a Polish Christmas? I can cook for you special dishes. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> well, well, what about the, the, the turkey, Brussels sprouts, you know, Christmas pudding, brandy sauce? Polish food is better than that. Uh, I don't think this is such a good idea. Oh, you can invite Mary if you like. Oh, I'm sure she'd love a Polish Christmas. She's much more adventurous than you are. Well, I'll... I could ask her, I suppose. I can teach you Polish carols. Uh -huh. We'll have a big sing song. <laughs> Here. Thanks. Right, where did you go first? Oh, I don't know. Not the rovers, then? No. Oh. No. Where the arms? I, I don't know. Oh, come on, Peter, work with me. He loved that bear. He used to take it to the hospital every day when he went to visit his mum. He used to hold it so tight, I thought he was going to squeeze that stuffing out of it. And when he gets upset, that's the only thing, you know, it's going to calm him down. All right, come on, just think. Can you remember anything about last night? D did you have the bear with you when you left the street? Oh, yeah. I remember knocking back tequila slammers in this cocktail bar and the bear got hit upon by this tall blonde bird <laughs> and they went to a nightclub together. Oh, it's all coming back to me, Leah. All right, fine. 
Okay, do you know what? I'm obviously wasting my time. I tell you what, I'll go downstairs, open up the shop, you go back to bed, and we'll just forget about Simon, shall we? It suits me, hey, makes yeah, my life a whole lot easier. I'm sorry. Do you know what? You apologise a lot. Why not try doing something that you don't have to apologise for? The King's Head, Corporation Road. Right, you went there? Yeah, I just remember they kicked me out. Well, did you have the bear with you then? I don't know. Where's your phone book? You're having your Christmas dinner with Norris and Emily? I'm cooking a Polish feast. Oh, so they only invited you as long as you do the cooking. Isn't it great? Oh, you can come round and cook hours if you like. It's 12 courses. I, I don't think I'll have time. Uh, uh, we've only just started this bread. Uh, yeah, Keckle's just boiled. Uh, I bring glad tidings. Why, have you seen a star in the sky over Bethlehem? <laughs> no, but I have just seen a little email. <laughs> from the lottery company saying you will be receiving your winnings shortly. Oh, no, we're getting us money. Oh. And as a gesture of seasonal goodwill, I will be raiding the hospitality budget for a slap up Christmas party oh. for you. <laughs> More good news, this is my lucky day. <laughs> I told you I was a bearer of glad tidings. What's going on? I've just given the ladies the good news. No smile from you, Janice? Look, I'm glad the girls have got their money. I still feel bad about what I did. You should be the happiest one here. You could have been locked up. Yeah, I know all that. What shall I wear for the photo shoot? Right, and will there be a makeup artist there or shall I bring my own? OK, OK, well, I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> How did you know I wanted anything? I'm telepathic. What do you want? Carla, please, can I have an early lunch? How early? Now. Please. It's Christmas, why not? Oh, thank you. It's sort of chocolate brown. White paws? Uh, white paws. Um. I don't know, um, a foot, 12 inches? No, smaller, eight oh, inches. Sorry, sorry, it's, it's probably a bit smaller than that, about about eight inches. Right, OK, well, can you let me know if it turns up? It's just, it's really important. All right, thanks. No sign of it in lost property. Are you sure you didn't go anywhere between the anchor and the cocktail lounge? Why did I take it into town? What stupid point was I trying to make? Can I help you out with that one? What? Uh, why are you helping me? Because you pay me wages. I'm assuming you still pay me wages. Yeah, I do, but... Oh, I don't know. Do you know what? Believe it or not, I'm actually quite good at helping people. Did it with my dad often enough. Cleaned him up, dusted him down. And besides... Been on the other side and all. I've done my own fair share of stupid things. You ever broke a kid's heart? Not yet. But neither have you. Well, I've only lost the one thing he loves, haven't I? Oh. Okay. Time to go and tell him. Time to face the music. Uh, Peter, I think you should go and clean yourself up first. You're a mess. <laughs> you think that's going to make it any better? Can't make it any worse, can it? Go on. I'll open up the shop. <sighs> oh, uh, hello. Um, I'm looking for a bear. <laughs> Sorry, a teddy bear. <laughs> I asked you if you wanted the pie when I went to the shop. You said no. I don't want a bite. Yeah, and I want a whole pie. Not a pie with a bite missing. Tell him to give me a bite. Now look at your belly. You could both do with staying up the pies for a while. Hiya. 
Any chance of a cab into town? I'm on a rescue mission. Oh, I'm sorry, but our only drivers are lard buckets and have wedged themselves into the chair and cannot get out. <laughs> that men have to be funny. The only way they get the girls. Please. What do you want? Nothing. You're lurking. No, I'm just keeping my eyes open. It's amazing what you can see if you keep your eyes open. Do you live in a happy world or a sad one? I'd be happy to see you get what's coming to you. Maria's delusions come from grief and pregnancy hormones. What's your excuse? You coming? Yeah. You wrap up warm. You don't want to catch a chill. Nothing. Where are you taking me for lunch? Wait and see. Scales. Look, I am no more than half a stone above me fighting weight. What's your fighting weight? Eleven stone, give or take. Come on. <sighs> All right, what's the damage? Twelve stone, eight pounds. Is that right? Uh, they're state of the art. Michael. Twelve stone, eight pounds. That's morbidly no boot. <laughs> oh, well done, Steve. What does he say? Thirteen stone dead. <laughs> And now I feel trim and svelte. Well, but, you know, I've got heavy bones and I'm taller. And besides, you're as much as a fat pig as I am. I don't care. I could lose it. Easy as that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just cut back a bit, get a bit of exercise, it'll fall off. These are me heavy shoes. Well, I'm the same. I could lose a stone in a week if I felt like it. Yeah, I just don't feel like it. Are you questioning my ability to lose weight? Yeah, I am. Oh, steady, boys. I challenge you to a slimming duel. Oh, keep talking, fat man. All right, then Eileen weighs us today. Yeah? And again in a month's time. Uh, make it Valentine's Day. And uh, whoever loses the most weight wins. All right. Wins what? A year's supply of pork pies. <gasps> Done. Woo! Game on, eh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I messed up. I know I did, and I'm sorry. Can I see my son, Deirdre? Please, can I come in? Thank you. Did you phone Mary? Oh, oh yes, yes. She said she'd be delighted to join us. Uh, her mum's got some do on with her friends. Uh, uh, no, she seemed quite excited about it. I'm beginning to think this wasn't such a bad idea after all. And I have more good news. Oh, oh yes. I've asked Jed to join us and he said yes. Jed. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Oh, look, take these away from me. Ah, yeah. Steve told me about your slimming challenge. <laughs> I'll give you your money back. I don't want it. If I have money, I'll only spend it on pies and crisps. I never realise how many snacks I eat. You know, if you really want to lose weight, it's not about how much you eat, it's calories in, calories out. I know what you need. What? Brazilian crunch. What, Rice Krispies aren't fat then? No, it's an exercise class. It's a mixture of salsa and aerobics. High energy, low impact. You have to put a pineapple on your head. <laughs> you can burn 
500 calories in one 40 minute session. Do you do it? Three times a week. Yeah, but it's for girls though, isn't it? Yeah, the odd bloke, isn't it? Yeah, odd. Being the operative word. Fine. Maybe I'll mention it to Stephen. Oh, hang on, eh? Hey, hey, hey. Mm. I'll give it a try, but listen. <laughs> Gotta keep this between me and you. You want me to lie to my own son? Yeah, we're having a bet. <laughs> you found it then? Yeah. Did you have a pleasant evening last night? Delightful, thanks. Right, okay. Let's wipe our feet and I'll take your coat off. Right, in you go. That'll be them. Hello, big man. Yeah, I found Ted. Safe and sound. I'm, I'm sorry for taking him off last night. I am. I'm really sorry. Simon wants to do his line something, nativity for you, seeing as how you missed the show. It's all he'd talk about. Really? I'd love that, mate. I really would. Any time you like, that'd be great. Well, he was the innkeeper. I know he was. So, uh, you could be Joseph. If you'll be Mary. Oh, why not? Fancy <laughs> being the donkey. If you'll be the drunken Bethlehem bookie, passed out face down in a pool of your own... I tell you what, Simon, why don't you use the uh, door as the entrance to the inn? Yeah. Go on, then, give him his cue. Hello? Do you have a room for the night? Sorry, there's no room at the inn. But my wife is heavy with child. You can sleep in the stables if you like. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. That's it. <laughs> well done. Oh, Come on, take a bow. Well done, that's it. <laughs> that was brilliant, that. That was really brilliant. That was the best acting that I've ever seen. Really, honestly, it was fantastic. Well done. I loved it. <laughs> well, should we go and get some juice, eh? Oh, I think there's some biscuits in the tin as well. She's up to something. Oh, I'm not interested in Rosie Webster. She has it dead easy in there. I could do her job. You can't add up. Uh, I'm dead good at maths, mate. Seven times eight. Oh, so much. Oh, it's fun. Five to twenty. Fifty-six. They've got a calculator. I've seen it. Oh, I am all. Do you want a drink? I'm not stopping. I've just come to say, I've got as much right to live in that house as you. Yeah? So I'm moving back in. Yeah? But I don't want you getting any ideas. No. We're not getting back together. No. And I don't want this affecting Jack. Oh, no. So we need to sort out some arrangements. Yeah. I will sleep in our bed. Yeah? And you can sleep on the sofa. Yeah. So is that clear? Yeah. Right. You are getting ideas, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how can he do that? I mean, how can he look at me like that when all I ever do is let him down? He loves you. Why? Well, he doesn't know you well enough not to love you. You're all he's got. I can't do this. Well, you don't have to get it right every time. Oh, I can't get it right at all. I'm out of my depth, Dad, and I feel like I'm drowning. Oh, no one's pretending that this is easy. I don't deserve a kid like that. Well, maybe not, but what does he deserve? He needs you. And it seems to me that you need him just as much. <laughs> yeah? I, I think you and I need to have a little chat. About a, a murderer.
And Corey continues in half an hour. Thanks. I just feel so flaming useless, you know. I know. No, you don't. Peter, I know exactly how you feel. When your mother died and I suddenly became a single parent, I was absolutely terrified. And why do you think you and Susan ended up with Grandma and Grandpa? It wasn't because I didn't love you. It was because I simply couldn't cope. How come you never said? I never said a lot of things. It doesn't make them any the less true. Let's get you inside. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So what's this about a murderer? Uh, it's a bit nippy out there, love. Uh, you haven't got a, a drop of whiskey, have you? Would a brandy do? Uh, oh, yeah, even better. Yeah, yeah sit down. Thanks. And look, I didn't mean to be melodramatic out there, but... Uh, well, you can't help being melodramatic, can you, when people are being bobbed off? Would you mind getting to the point, please? Yeah. Look, you've been going around saying that Tony Gordon killed your husband. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. Thanks. Most people around here have been measuring me up for a straight jacket. Mrs Connor. Maria. Look, you're, you're as sane as I am. I think we should pool our resources. You see, Tony Gordon evicted me from my home. He forced his way in and he shoved me around. You, you, you should have seen the look in his eyes. Yeah, I've seen it. I had a stroke. I got so worked up. You had a stroke? Yeah. What, while Tony was there? Yeah. Yeah, I collapsed right in front of him. So he phoned an ambulance? Oh, no, well, he did. He'd have done that to cover himself. Just like I know that he didn't kill Liam himself. He'll have hired someone. Uh, and I think I know who. Who? I don't know his name, but he's just a thug that uh, does odd jobs for him. And this is someone you've actually seen? Yeah, Gordon sent him round to evict me. Well, that's a start, isn't it? Yeah. Shall I uh, have another dig around and see what else I can throw up? Yeah, definitely. Hello. Oh, lovely. Uh, look, I was just passing that nice greengrocer's, so bought you some fancy fruits. Well, look, Audrey, it's not a very uh, good time at the moment. I was just on my way out. Oh, right. We'll, okay. uh, we'll talk again, yeah? Yeah, yeah. See you later. All right, well, I suppose you better come in, then. Straight after Christmas, I'll go and see Simon's teacher. Only this time, make sure you don't turn up squiff-eyed. Blanche. No, she's right. More than anything, I want to be a proper dad to Simon, and we're starting now. And the first thing we'll do when we get back to that flat is we'll send off them last-minute requests to Santa, eh? <laughs> what do you say? What? Don't you think you've got enough on your plate right now? How do you mean? Why don't you leave Simon with us? Yeah, just till you get yourself sorted out. That's incinerator. Who's incinerator, eh? The body, of course. Oh. I'm not sure. I mean, Christmas is an important time for kids, isn't it? We're not pushing you away. You're free to come and go as you please. It just gives you a bit of space so you can get your head sorted out. What do you think, Si? Do you want to stay with Grandma and Grandad, eh? Dad, you're talking over the best bit. There's your answer. Now, let's see if you can get off the juice. Oh, you needn't have any worries on that score. Oh? Uh, this tenor says you don't get beyond Christmas without getting k -lied. Yeah? Make it 20 and you're on. Oh, I didn't want to rob you, but if you insist. Oh, and while I think of it... Oh, it's for me. What's this? Just a little something to further your cause. Oh.
Oh, it's a breathalyzer. <laughs> Thank you. That's just what I always wanted. Call it an early Christmas present. Tony threw Jed out of his house, and he did it in such a way that he had a stroke and nearly died. Oh, I explained it then. Explains what? Well, why he's come back stirring up trouble. Tony evicted him, so he's trying to get his own back. Audrey, you're not listening to me. Maria is a dead leg. And, from what I've heard, he's an ex-con into the bargain. That doesn't make him a liar. No, it doesn't exactly make him reliable either, does it? Well, you know what? He's on my side. Which, quite frankly, at the moment, is a very welcome change. Now, will you listen to me, young lady? If you go on accusing Tony Gordon of something he hasn't done, he's liable to take legal action, then you are going to be the one that ends up in the dock. That's great. Thanks for your support, Audrey. Oh, <sighs> sweetheart, you're grieving. You're just looking for someone to blame. Um, Steve, mm -hmm. <clears throat> listen, I know it's really short notice and everything, but uh, JD just phoned and he, he just wants to know if I can do a gig on Christmas Eve. He didn't say yes, did you? It's our busiest night of the year. Yeah, um, you're right. Sorry, I'll, I'll cancel. Uh, no, actually, lots of second thoughts. Um, what is the point of having a talent if you can't share it with the world? Oh, do you mean that? Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you're a lovely man. I'm in fresh clothes the other day. And I saw this little old lady buying a TV Christmas dinner for one and one individual Christmas pud. It's gonna be me, is that? And me. Apart from the carers. Never snows. Telly's rubbish. Now, it's just the anniversary of when you felt just as flaming miserable the year before. I'm just dazzled by your beauty. <laughs> oh, thanks. You look like you just stepped off a catwalk or something. Well, close. I've just been to a photo shoot. So you are a model, yeah? Kind of. Oh, I just knew it. You've got model written all over you. <laughs> are you doing anything Christmas Eve? I'm having a party here. It's my 18th. Oh, I'm not sure. You've been famous and that. I think you might be a bit out of my league. Yeah, well, why didn't you come over and find out? Is, there are lots of busy young professionals who can't get to a salon during the day. Maybe. Well, I've had loads of inquiries. I know the business is there. So, I was thinking about maybe opening three or four evenings a week. It's up to you, really. Do you know, Maria's really beginning to worry me. Audrey, have you even been listening? Listening to what? My business plan. Yeah, no, oh. My darling, I'm sorry, I've got a lot on my mind. What, 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 what? My idea is that when you go home, I stay open. We could call it Natasha at Audrey's. I do the work, you get a generous cut for the use of the premises. Well, um, why don't I give it a try, see how it works out? Really? Well, what harm can it do, huh? Oh, thanks, Audrey, that is brilliant. Go on, Sunny Jim. Sunny Jim. Come on, lover. Come on, Dindins. Foodies. Come on, lover. Come on. Well, well, well. Oh, no. <laughs> I've just been talking to my friend, Mrs. Connor. We're going to start a campaign to raise the public awareness. Basically, we want to alert the people to the fact that you're uh, a murdering swine. Don't you dare speak to me like that. Why? What are you going to do? This conversation's over. Huh?
Thank you for taking time out your busy schedule. What do you want? Well, that's nice. Nice way to treat a friend. <laughs> I have a life, you know. I know. I thought you'd appreciate an update. Yeah? A certain widow went to the police. I think I've convinced them she's losing it. So why are you telling me this? I'm sorry. When I'm in the frame, that's when I need to know. Who's that? Nobody. Looks like that old wine and woman cat we kicked out of the house. Oh, great. Well played. He's not important. Not important? He's just seen us together, you idiot. Don't call me again, you hear me. Are you sure you're all right with us coming over Christmas Day? I don't want you to be snowed under. Yes. All right, you're really welcome. Mm. Do you want us to bring out? No, just yourselves. I mean it. Or even a bottle of champagne. Well, Tony, we are a pub, so we have all the booze we need. No, I just want you, honestly. I'll tell you an actress I never tire of watching. Audrey Hepburn. Mm. She's a bit like you. Get away with you. She was nothing like me. Well, I, I don't mean in looks. I was talking about her aura. Even at the end of her life, she was so radiant she could light up a room because everything that was beautiful about her came from inside. You're the same. I wonder how radiant you'd think I was if you saw me marking up the papers at six o'clock in the morning. Don't do yourself down, Rita. You're a class act. Mm. Whereas you're just an act with no class. I love you too. Yes, you do. And she loves you. So you can both stop pretending you're fooling nobody. Why? Don't tell me you've forgotten. You've forgotten what? Your Brazilian crunch class. Oh, Liz, I'd, I'd love to, but I've been drinking. So, you'd be drunk in charge of the leotard. It's not a criminal offence, is it? Please don't make me go. What's the big panic? All those women there, I mean, what if they laughed? I don't think I could take the humiliation. Listen to me. You are not unattractive. You're a perfectly okay-looking man who's just let himself go a bit. Oh, gee, that looks... And again, if you're not interested, I'm sure I could always invite Steve. He's desperate to lose weight. No, no. If anyone deserves to be a laughing stock, it's me. Come on, Ta. Night. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Oh, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for finding Ted. Ted? Who's Ted? Well, I'll give you a clue. His middle initial is E and his last name's Bear. Ah, well, it was my pleasure. I know what it's like losing someone as a kid. I've never quite recovered from losing my toy rabbit on a bus when I was six. <laughs> what was your rabbit's name? <laughs> Funnily enough, it was Peter. In fact, I was that rabbit. So, uh, how are things with Ken and Deirdre, then? Oh, yeah, no, they were great. They even offered to have Simon over Christmas. Oh, that's brilliant. It's great. It'll give you a bit of space, eh? Yeah. Ah, which reminds me, there's an empty flat up there, so... I could bristle you up an omelette. Oh, sorry, I can't. I'm off into town. Oh, OK. It's just I've, I've not done half my Christmas shopping yet. Look, it's it's not because you think I'm a liability or anything. No, we're still mates. Mates? Is that all we're going to be? Mates? I haven't decided yet. But whatever you do... Don't stop trying, eh? See ya. See ya. Oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't have the art to say no. Nor me. Would have been nice, though. 
winter to get away. Who yeah, would you? Maybe next year. Maybe skiing and San Moritz. Or Aviemore. Aviemore's really nice. Are you sponsored by the Scottish Tourist Board or something? <laughs> Kid is in hospital. Yeah, you count me in. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, I hope steady on tones. <laughs> Didn't mean you had to buy the whole toy shop. God bless us, one and all. <laughs> yeah, ma'am, thanks for this. She seemed a bit surprised. Well, I am the only one who knows how big your heart is. You fancy Philip? Yeah, I do. What? We didn't get a chance to finish our little chat, Mr. Gordon. This is getting very monotonous. Or maybe you'd like me to tell the whole pub about your henchman of yours and his, his terrible driving. All right, I'll see you around the back of the pub then. See you in an hour. Hello, Norris. Can I buy you a drink? Uh -huh. Why would you want to do that? I've just won a very lucrative bet. Oh, in that case, I'll have a port and lemon. Much of uh, Double scotch for me, please, love. Where's your lady friend? If you mean Mary, who is my friend, and also a lady, she's at home with her infirm mother. Well, between you and me, Nozza. I mean, do you mind if I call you Nozza? Yes, I do. Uh, I think she sees you as a sugar daddy. <laughs> if she sees me as anything, she sees me as a Renaissance man. <laughs> she thinks you were born 500 years ago? For your information, a Renaissance man is someone who excels in many fields. Ah, oh, in your case, running a news agents, entering competitions, and spying on the neighbours all at the same time. Thanks. Thanks, love. Woman, come here. <laughs> ow, oh, ow. Oh, but you were such a hit. I could tell all the girls really liked having you around. That's only because when I stood next to them, they looked an awful lot slimmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, you can't give it up yet. At least come to the party next week and then you get to know everybody properly. Where are you off? Home, so I can pass away peacefully if you sleep. <laughs> And so, Norris, when you're in the shop with Rita, how on earth do you keep your mind on your work? I exercise dignity and restraint. I'd advise you to do the same. You tell him. I intend to. <laughs> so, will I see you on uh, Christmas Day, love? We eat it too. Well, I look forward to it. You see, I knew she loved you. What can I buy her? Well, you know her better than me. Once I did, not anymore. We kind of drifted apart. Well, my ex was very fond of perfume. Ah. Well, it would have to be something classy and elegant. The kind of fragrance a woman like Rita would wear. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, my favourites are Folly and Etranger by Tisha. He painted pictures, didn't he? I wish I had a picture of you, Rita, then I could show Santa what I wanted for Christmas. Right, that's it. Where are you going? I, I, I can't keep up with this conversation. It's far too uh, highbrow for me. Sorry about that. He's very sensitive. <laughs> well, that's one word for it. Mr. Gordon! Are you there? 
there, Mr. Gordon? Do you mean to persist with this? Oh, yes. <laughs> because I've got your number. It's a bit like 999, like what you died when I had my stroke. If you were uh, turning upside down, hey presto, you've got your number. You think I'm the devil? I'm flattered. You don't frighten me. I know that. Mrs. Uh, Connor and I both think that you paid your crony to murder her husband. And you're an old drunk and she's insane. So why should I give a damn what either of you two think? Because it's the truth. Look, I could go to the police, or you and I could come to some sort of civilised agreement. What do you say? I say you're an old boozy loser who nobody respects or particularly likes. No one believed you in the past. Why should they start now? But you know what? It's that time of year when you forgive your enemies and take pity on those less fortunate. And since you seem to fall into both categories, you can take this and count yourself very lucky. I was right then! Don't push your luck. I'm warning you, Gordon. You're not getting off that easy. It's going to take a lot more of these for me to keep your mouth shut. If your do gets a bit boring, you can always come to ours, can't you? Oh, thanks again for my subscription to Vogue magazine, Mrs. Gordon. You're very welcome. You nipping home to get changed, or what? No, I'll stay and get things ready. Hmm? I've got a little wrapping to do. Oh, bravo. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? Exeter? I believe he was serious. And then he said, No, no, I said, etc. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we laughed and laughed. Oh, what a fantastic misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah you see, it, it, it's like the first time you mentioned Jed Stone. I thought you said you'd gone to the hospital and found a gemstone. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I bring you glad tidings and, of course, gifts. Oh, for course. <coughs> oh, this is very thoughtful. Strictly between the three of us, Jed is about to come into some money. Oh, I do wish you'd stop referring to yourself in the third person. It's irritating in the extreme. What kind of money, if, if it isn't impertinent oh, just to ask? Uh, unforeseen bonus, Emily, you know, but I can't say too much at the moment until the ink's dry. But oh. the point is, I shall be soon out of your hair. <laughs> Norris will be thrilled. Oh, and Jed will be even thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> and Emily, as usual, will be completely in the dark. Well, I bought some port the night you was born, and I says to your mother, I said, the day she turns 18, we're going to open it. But a few years later, we got smashed <laughs> and drank it. So, we've got you this instead. Oh, I'll get some glasses. I don't like port anyway. Uh, no, this is for later on. Yeah, we're going to be back by 12. We want this place empty, cleaned and tidied. And then the four of us are going to sit down as a family and raise a glass. Mm, to see Christmas in and to celebrate our little baby girl's 18th. <laughs> <laughs> Very fetching negligee. Congratulations, Mr. Stone. You're now officially getting my wick. Was it now? More money. More crackpot hypothesis followed by a drunken dribbling attempt at blackmail. My, my, you're not as stupid as you look. <sighs> feel good. Doesn't feel any different, to be honest.
Now then, miss. Oh, Susan's greetings and all that. So, have you been on my MySpace page yet? On your what? Well, I put the article about my ordeal up there. With pictures from a photo shoot. I don't even know what a MySpace page is. <laughs> Can't be doing with computers. Oh. Cool. So, are you still coming to my party tonight? Or to your party? Yeah. Nah, I doubt it. I was full of drunken teenagers, not really my scene like. Can I get a pint of lager when you're ready, please, sweetheart? Well, you know, I'll be there. Bring my knife and fork, shall I? Don't forget your napkin. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, be back before midnight and your rags will turn into a ball gown. <laughs> Says he of the short sleeve shirt. You'll say it, Ibiza awaits. Night, kids. Knock them dead. See you, Steve. Take it easy, James. Break an arm. What? If Michelle kissed JD under mistletoe, just, just a little peck of me as a mate, would you still be jealous, despite everything? Not one iota. What I really want to do is get you under there. Why? Mm. Publicly? Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, by the looks of things you can. Do you think it grows in trees, Mr Stone? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm beginning to sound like my mother. <laughs> it was all going so well for you, wasn't it, eh? I mean, you battered away in the police, you swatted them like a fly. If there's nothing to find, no one can find it. Except if you didn't bank on me. Do you think my bunging you a few quid is an indication of some sort of guilt on my part? That's exactly what I did think. Perhaps if you'd cooperated, your eviction might have gone more smoothly. That man who uh, came round to bully me on more than one occasion. Uh, I saw the same man with you yesterday. I uh, wrote down his registration number. I can tell it to you if you like. Jimmy had nothing to do with this. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Now we've got a name and a face. And that pretty little girl who everyone thinks is mad, she's not really mad, is she, eh? Because she knows that you've got someone to kill her husband. I know I know who that someone is. Yeah, and what do I get for knowing all that? A few measly quid. Do you know, if this gibberish had any merit, you'd be down the station, not standing here twisting my arm. I don't want to see you charged, Mr Gordon. I'm not interested in justice. I've got, what, 10 or 15 years left if I'm lucky? No, I don't want justice. I want to be fed, I want to be housed, I want my pride, I want security. Because you, you took my home away. I want some real justice. You stole my self-respect! You'll get nothing more from me. So go to the police. They'll see for what you really are. A sentimental, babbling old fool. I mean, Jed. <laughs> what kind of name is Jed? It's my name. And I will go to the cops. And I'll tell your wife. And I'll tell everyone what you are. You're a coward, Tony Gordon. You're a coward. And you're a killer. And you're not going to get away with it. That's where you're wrong, because I am. Get away with that. <laughs> Do you really think I'm in here and threaten me? Do you think I can be blackmailed? <laughs> Sucking them lemons, granddad. <laughs> Right, well, I better get over to Studio 54. Mm -hmm. What's that? <laughs> oh, Kevin, it's a famous nightclub in New York. You don't know anything new. Oh, stay and have another one. Yeah, go on, have another one. I can't promise Grace Jones or Bianca Jagger on a horse, but it's cosy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you? You see, he knows about Studio 54. Yeah. Everything all right? You've gone a long time. Well, I got stuck in a lift in Kendall's. Can you believe that? So is it true then, all that stuff it says on your MySpace page? Of course it's true. There was a lot of, you know, sexual tension. I didn't read the story, but I like the pictures. Especially the one where you're looking all like, you know, surprised, like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, what's with the uh, doorstep? 
Oh, I am so sorry. Did you not get my text? Oh, the party's been cancelled. What? So I have to tell Ben and Shine it's off now. Uh, who said they could come? Plus, I don't think a house full of drunken teenagers <laughs> is really my scene. <laughs> Plus, my publicist said I should uh, really keep a low profile. <laughs> Your publicist? Well, yes. The woman at the uh, newspaper who sorts out my expenses and everything. The one you give your bus tickets to. <laughs> oh. Quick, we're in Rovers. Oh, no, let's go straight over. Oh, please, please tell me. You've got a plaster in there. These shoes are absolutely killing me. Oh. Imagine if they really were killing you. Okay, in you get. Come on. Garden. With my own bare hands. Oh, it's so lovely. Three cheers for Mr. Garden. Hip, 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 hooray! Hip, 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 hooray! Hip, hooray! Oh, look, you've dropped your Santa hat. Well, put it on then. Oh, it looks terrified, doesn't it? <laughs> right, who's for a cup of good cheer? Sorry, a, a glass of good cheer. Oh, who's for a beer? <laughs> me? I am. Oh, me no. Me too, me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, just to wish David many happy returns. Can we all come? Of course you can. What's this? Oh, um... Uh, nothing. Just uh, a drink uh, for David's birthday at our house. <laughs> Smashing! What time? Afternoonish. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Excuse me a minute. My grandmother got it off her grandmother. I have a terrible memory for verse. Songs I'm all right with, but not verse. Emily now, she knows twas the night before Christmas all the way through. They'll be here shortly. We can put in a request. And you like their company, do you, Norris and Emily? Well, company's company. I can't say as I enjoy Norris's company. Emily's company I like, but oh, I don't know. Go on. Christmas. It does funny things. Another year's rolled by. Don't feel any older. Oh, well, you certainly don't look it. Thank you. Another. I'll just excuse myself for a minute, if I may. Taj Mahal? I said, the Taj Mahal? Grandma? That's the 
traffic centre. <laughs> you know, you know, with all the dogs and everything. <laughs> oh, mind you, it's not funny, is it, dementia? Well, I can't believe that she thought traffic centre were an Indian restaurant. <laughs> and have a dance. No, no, I'm the bartender. Oh. No, no, I'll be barmaid. You go and bust some moves. Yeah. Can't dance with me, Mr. Gordon. Excuse me, I asked first. He's my boss. He's my husband. This is the soundtrack to my youth, Mrs. Gordon. I listen to this song and I'm back in Targovec, mm -hmm. running through Lasek Brodowski with my best friend Anya. I never felt so happy. I never felt so free. I never felt so alive. I think I was a little bit in love with her. Don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me? Oh! Here you go. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I ask you something personal? Whew, don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. Why did you say that? No, um, nothing. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. No, not at all. Here you go. What is it, mate? I've been evicted. I've had me flat repossessed this afternoon. Oh, you never have. Christmas Eve. <laughs> Christmas Eve and they come and board you up. Why? Why do you think? I'm up the creek, Kevin. And I'll tell you something, there is one hell of a current. Oh, you've got to talk to Gail. She won't see you on the street. I won't be on the street. Put on my gear in the lock-up, same place I'll be sleeping. Well... Tina's practically living here now and she never calls round, so... She's a good sort, is Gail. She's not a good sort, Kevin. She is the best. So don't say anything, will you? Not even to your missus. I, I just need a bit of time to sort myself out first, now. Just, just keep it to yourself. Sure, no problem, mate. Here, hold that. I'll go and get us a couple of whiskies. Thanks. Single or double? Treble. <laughs> Coming up. You should probably call it a night. Oh, no, no, we should call it a night, and you should go into town on me and get absolutely trolley. Vicky, yeah! <laughs> you can be banker. My problem. Oh, Julie, in that case. Only Julie, the most responsible person in the world, can look after money. <laughs> Are you coming, Sal? No, I'm going to head off to the Rovers and get Kevin because we're bringing Christmas in with the girls. Uh, Everyone with your street car! Oh, Do you fancy going to the Rovers for a night, Cat? No, you go ahead. I'm going to squid up a wee Oh, don't be long, then! Jimmy, it's Tony. I need you over here right now. What? Carol service? We well, can tell your auntie you need to help a friend in his hour of need. Jimmy? Jimmy? sort of thing, because it's Christmas. Me. Nobody believes her, you know. Right? 
Everyone's on your side. They got cars, big as bars, they, they got, got rivers, rivers of gold. gold. But the wind blows right through you, no place for the old. When, when you first took my hand on a cold Christmas Eve, Eve. you promised me Broadway was waiting for me. You were handsome, you were free. You were free free to Hey, have you seen those pictures your daughter's put on the internet? Talk about racing. Tales of temptation, she calls it. Then she goes on to describe everything that went on in that little house with him who's kidnapped her. I haven't seen the pictures myself. It was the lad in the butchers that told me. I've always been a bit useless with, you know, gestures. Well, you've chosen a good place to start. What would you say if I invited you out for Christmas dinner at a nice little restaurant I know? I eat there most years. I would say yes. But I thought you were spending Christmas with Eileen. Oh, don't worry about Eileen. And thank you. What's going on? She cancelled it. Why? Rosie, are you coming down for this champagne? I want all this rubbish about the internet. Do you know anything about that? All these pictures of herself on a web page. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, you. <laughs> his droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly. But Seriously, then, right, why did you not just get off with that girl? Jelly. She was practically throwing herself at you. Sure, oh, that's someone else. Oh, right. What she spoke there for. And I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself. A wink of his eye. And a next of year, his then, eh? Soon gave me to know. Definitely him. next year. Nothing to dread. He said Definitely not next word. week. But went straight to his work. Definitely, may appear. And filled all the stockings. Then turned. You are joking. With a jerk. I'll fill some bin liners. And putting his fingers Just a few streamers and a couple of empty bottles. No, I forbid it. We're getting a cab on the pair of us. After Emily's finished. He sprang Shh. to his sleigh. To his team, gave a whistle. And away they all flew. Like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim. Ere he drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> 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 See why he wanted me up so early. <laughs> oh, is this for you or for me? <laughs> I don't have legs. It's very nice. And several cuts above our stuff. Shame about the creases, though. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm like at wrapping. Must have pulled the ribbon too tight. Well, they'll drop out in no time. Or maybe, just maybe, we can make some more. I'd love to, but I've got a bit of business to do. On Christmas morning? Yeah, there's been um, a break-in at one of the new developments. I've got to go and speak to the police. Rotten scumbags. Who goes on the rob at Christmas? Well, criminals are no respecter of season. 
I'll see you in the Rovers. You won't be long, will you? Mm, I'll be back with more than enough time to pull my cracker. Mm, we've done that long since. <laughs> hey, we'll give this a trial run later. So much for the silent night. Yeah, well, I didn't mind getting woke up. I got my birthday present early. Ah, oh, you like it? Yep. Same will do for Christmas and all. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Trouble getting down chimney? <laughs> I wanted to finish the kitchen. Never mind. It is finished. No thanks to you. You could have helped. What do I look like? An elf. Anyway, it is my birthday. Any happy returns. Now help me clear up before your mother... Before I what? Oh, Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry ah, Christmas. Sorry about the mess. I want it to look perfect for you. <laughs> you finished the tumble. <laughs> it's the tumble marble. Did it cost some Nah, not if you're in the trade, no. Anyway, it's a Christmas present. Talking of which... No excuses for dinner being late now. <sighs> you shouldn't have. It's beautiful. It's Christmas. You can't push the boat out today. Happy mm. birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear. What's his name? Yeah, all right. I get the message. No, no. What's my coming of age next to wall tiles and a flash watch? <laughs> Happy birthday, Dave. Whoa! Oh, I can't believe you're 18. A responsible adult. Mm -hmm. That'll be the day. You can do all sorts now. Vote. Serve on a jury. Actually, I can't with my record, but I can legally get ratted, legally tattooed, visit both kinds of pawn shop, uh, gamble. Yes, the world certainly is my oyster, all right. I'm 18, I can do what I like. Not under my roof, you can't. Oh, well, I'll go to his place then. Hey, Gary Windus isn't the sort of lad you should be involved with anywhere. You want mum? Name one boyfriend you've approved of. But well, Rose says more about you than he does of them. <sighs> Look, I'm growing up now. Just concentrate on making her life in misery. Maybe I'll have it out with him instead, eh? Can. Oh, no, mum, let him. You wouldn't be Christmas if you didn't attack my boyfriend. Hey, nobody's attacking anybody. Yeah, well, good job. Because Gary's younger, fitter and boxes. So unless you want your turkey through a straw, stay well clear, Dad. Happy Christmas. Oh, this puts me in mind the last Christmas morning, watching the sun rise over Lake Malawi. Yeah, well, nip out and you can watch it rising over viaduct. Well, at least you're still doing good work. I, I, I'm we're together this year. Do so they know it's Christmas? Well, many Africans are Islamic or worship folk religions. There won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time. Well, I'll wager that it's not icing sugar that's coating the slopes of Kilimanjaro. No rain or rivers flow. What about the Nile, the Zambezi, the Congo? Roy, feed the world. That's the important bit. Today of all days. Don't remind me. I'm not sure that four turkeys were sufficient. Hope we don't run short. No way you're carving love. See plate pattern through them. There's no point in us doing this if we're going to give them scraps. No, sorry, yes, I'll, I'll try and be a little less... Uh... Skinny. Mm. Oi, don't be too hard on him, eh? While you were mooning over Lake Mugabe... Malawi. Whatever. He was jumping a mile every time that phone rang, just desperate to hear your voice. You're spending Christmas with a bloke who loves the bones of you. You don't know how lucky you are, Ailes. What, what, what's that? Overdue. Merry Christmas, Roy. Ah, Merry Christmas. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Dave. So, are you happy with what Santa brought you then, darling? I saw him this morning. <gasps> what was he like? Tall and flat with a big red kit. Oh, when you were in your red dressing gown this morning. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you were. 
And you had the odd up because you said your ears were cold. Yes, ho, ho, flaming ho. <laughs> That'll be me, Mum and Dad, excuse me. What's that? It's a CD. Vernon did it for me. Love for one. Sounds about right, the way things were like. Who's that? Uh, it's Lloyd. Um, Susan's greetings. Oh, there. Give him a bell. Steve, uh, Mum and Dad just thought a word. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll, right, I'll come now. <laughs> My debut trifle. What do you think? Oh, hundreds of thousands. Very appropriate. One minute you're scratching your backside, and now it's marble tiles and designer watches. She liked them. That's all that counts. I think your bank manager might say different. <sighs> Ga Gail thinks the world of you. You don't have to play I'm not bit playing anything. It's Christmas Day. It is the one day of the year you can put everything out there to one side. It's a precious time. Don't spoil it, eh, love? What are you doing? Uh, no, nothing. <laughs> What's his lordship doing is more to the point. I mean, will he be gracing us with his presence this side of Boxing Day? Jed isn't there. His, his bed hadn't been slept in. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, he was tucking into mull wine before I'd opened the first window of my advent calendar. What are you suggesting? Well, he'll have got kale-eyed, won't he? No, he, he was bragging last night about some sort of windfall. He, He's, he's probably sleeping it off on a friend's sofa. So Jed's not dead, baby. Jed's not dead. Quite a situation, don't you think? If you were in my shoes, what would you do now? Just as I thought. Look after number one at all costs. Because that's why you came here, isn't it? To screw more cash out of me. But fortunately, I'm a better man than you. I didn't mean to kill you. I never did. But you pushed me too far. A rush of blood and here we are. I need this. I barely slept. And when I did, all I could see was you turning a nasty shade of puce. And I came in here to discover that my worst nightmare was no such thing. I'd have paid any price to undo what I did. So when you did your Lazarus act earlier, apart from a wee bit of surprise, I felt a great sense of relief. Because you know what, Jed? I feel like Scrooge on Christmas morning, getting a second chance. Because contrary to what you and Maria think, I am not a cold-blooded murderer. Not yet, anyway. For first course, we'll have barsht. Ah, 
Oh, you see, when I uh, prepare Christmas lunch, we generally start with soup. It is soup. It's borscht, beetroot soup. Beetroot? Oh. Beetroot in soup? Oh, no, 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 no. No, there's a tin of cock in the cupboard. We can warm that up. Absolutely not. We asked Vicky to make a Polish meal, and that's what we'll have. It's all right, Emily. I will make a bash for us, and I'm sure I can handle Norris's leaky. A, a, a cocker a leaky. Uh, Ushka! Uh, in English, this means little ears. Oh. Ears? E ears? Oh, 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 no, no. I, I, I'm sorry. Look, I, I'm as cosmopolitan as they come, but uh, in this case, I can't help thinking east is east and west is... They're not real ears. They're mushroom dumplings for the soup. They look like ears. Yeah, it's very appetising. Well, I mean, you might like fake lug holes bobbing around in your soup, but I'll stick with croutons. Yeah, maybe we ought to get out from under Vicky's feet. Oh, no, it's, it's far too early, and it gets decidedly parky in that church. <laughs> the Catholic church was lovely and warm earlier, but... <laughs> Then, it is a modern building. Mm, see? See, the Reformation wasn't all bad. <laughs> well, I, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to uh, grab a decent pew before the fair-weather faithful snapped them up. <laughs> well, I, I think it's good to see a church full. Well, well, not when the regulars can't get a decent seat. You know, you know last year I, I, I was jammed right up against the font. <laughs> I had scenes from the life of St Chad impressed on me backside for days. Well, well, you, could, you could have done a rubbing. Yeah, I, I don't think that uh, Vicky wants to hear it. Come on, uh, see you later. <laughs> You're going to take this damn stupid thing off my head. Come on, Jed. Where's your sense of Christmas spirit? It's your hat, and I think it looks rather jaunty. Now, as I see it, there are three ways this could go. Shall I? <laughs> I'm happy for you to do the talking. Well, there's the obvious. I finish you off, and my problems die with you. If you do that, you'll have to look me in the eye and live with it afterwards. If it was the only option, so be it. You still have to get rid of my body. It's not easy. I've got access to construction sites. Deep, deep holes. Loads of concrete. I could give you a list of locations if you've a preferred resting place. Alternatively... Alternatively, you could move above ground into a finished flat. I don't understand. Well, thanks to the vagaries of the economic cycle, I've got a lot of empty properties in my hand. I could give you the keys to a studio, all mod cons. You could live there, rent-free. I'll even throw in a few grand to set you up, provided you forget about our misunderstanding. Why the hell didn't you say that yesterday? I had no reason to then. You were a minor irritation, nothing more. Even if I'd tried shutting you up, you'd have still haggled. Because you're a greedy little man. And today? Well, things have changed. I think we've both explored the alternatives in more detail than we'd have liked. I think it's a very generous offer in your shoes. And cheap at the price in mine. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Where have you parked your sleigh, love? Oh, I wish I had a couple of little helpers. No, Tony. What if his properties have been broken into? Is that to go down there? Oh, no. He's going to make it, isn't he? He better add. Where's the man of the house? What, Ryan? <laughs> Steve's lying low. Mmm, dodging sprout peeling duty, is he? I wish. You know, I, I told you that we weren't going to get each other presents for Christmas, and... I did anyway, cos I knew Steve would. I think you know where this is going. Oh, Carla, he was so embarrassed. Wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't scouring the corner shop right now looking for a gift. I tried calling you earlier. I did! I... Never mind watching The Great Escape. I've just had to flip in reenact it getting out of that pub. Yes, it was a lovely message. Thank you. Look, I haven't got much time. I want to meet up. 
I'll be at street cars at half past twelve. Just be there. Yeah, I love you too. Excuse me. Merry Christmas. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. You look it. Never mind, just unwrap some of these nibbles. Anything to keep the queue back. Oh, chillax, Roy, they'll wait. It's not like they can ask for the brass back. <laughs> I never dreamt there'd be this many. They keep coming in waves, it's like ropes drift. Forks drift more like. You'll have no cutlery left come closing. Oi! Look, just make up another tray, will you? Then start pricking Actually, some sausage. I need to tip out in a bit. Well, you never mentioned this before. Well, I didn't know before. Something's come up. Don't worry, I won't be long. No time at all, I expect. This is hardly convenient. So I dropped my wages for today. But you're not being paid. I don't understand. One minute you're strangling me, and the next you're offering me the keys to a new flat. You, you reckon you're Scrooge? I think Jekyll and Hyde's nearer the mark. Much as I like spending the afternoon sharing literary analogies with you, the clock's ticking, Jed. It's Carla I want keeping me awake at night, not you. It's as simple as that. Oh, earlier you, you, you said there was another option. Yeah, you accept my offer and then you betray me. And I go to jail for attempted murder. No, 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 I won't. I won't my words be bond. Yeah, but you would say that, wouldn't you? But know this. If you do go to the police, they'll want to know why you were here. And I'll let them and everyone else know about your grubby little attempt at blackmail. You see, we've got to look to the future, Jed. What are you doing? If what are you doing? Said, you've got one. I'm branching out into the removal business. Someone's going to have to collect your pile of miserable belongings. Otherwise, Emily may get suspicious. Well, she will if you go waltzing in there. Why don't you let me go and get them? That's a very good idea. Why don't you just stay for Christmas dinner while you're at it? I'll go. Fortunately, Emily and Norris are good Kirk-going folk. But they could come back at any moment. You're taking a very big risk. Yeah, you don't have to worry about me, old man. I'll be fine. As for you, I couldn't quite say. You've got a lot to think about. We both have. Oh, Steve, you can't just leave now, babe. We've got tons to do. My dad wants a drink on Christmas Day. I haven't seen him for 12 months. With good reason. I'm amazed he's even got the brass neck to call here. And I'm even more surprised that you want to go sup with him. Oh, so me and him are finished for good now, are we? Because if I can't forgive him now, at Christmas, when he's reaching out... Well, when you put it like that. I've got to take over from Lloyd anyway. Look, just because I've got a family doesn't give me the monopoly on Christmas. He deserves time off and all, you know. Stop, no, I'm filling up. Look, I'm just trying to do the right thing. Mm hmm Yeah. Ducking out of uh, helping out here and going boozing. Then probably sleeping it off in the cab office. They broke the mould, Steve. <laughs> oh, no. I know you mean well, babe. We can manage. Just don't be back too late, eh? Yeah. Mm. Hey. Did this to me with my bears. Yeah! Oh, um, no one's in. Um... It's nothing. I got the Christmas stuff from Debs. Most of it was half price because. Shut it... up! Sometimes you know you talk too much, McDonald. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right. I can't help thinking this is going to be my song next year. Easy egg, shut up. Look, we're going to see 2009 in it together. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Look, I want to spend today and every Christmas day from now on together. Get that bottle open. I'll have to neck it in one as it is, love. Uh, we've got a couple of hours, yeah. How have you managed that? Don't ask. I'm not proud, but I had to do it because I thought I might not see him. It's... Uh, uh, uh. You've, uh, got the mistletoe. Who needs flaming mistletoe? <clears throat> Sure you don't want a hand? Oh, you could sort some place mats out. Ches is terrified we're going to scorch the bays. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, the, in that sideboard. Are there any good movies on this afternoon? No, oh, I've not looked. I'm going to go to the cemetery. Visit Liam and Paul. All oh, right. Do you fancy some company? Yeah, OK. You got a card off time? Oh, yeah. Cheek of it, eh? Thought you'd have binned it. Yeah, well, as soon as I saw it was from, I just shoved it in there. Couldn't stand looking at it. Really? Really? Can we drop it? He's the last thing I want to talk about at Christmas. Once he's sentenced, he's going to be spending a very unhappy New Year in prison. More besides. End of. All gossip at the best of times, particularly amongst my friends. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I hope I'm not too early. I, I considered walking up and down the street for a while, but, but with the bottle I thought I might look like an undesirable one. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, with some of the rogues out there today, you'd have fitted in perfectly. You know, Roy Crop has yeah, no come right... Come in, my dear. <laughs> This is for you. Norris says you're very partial. Uh, well, I, I do enjoy the odd glass, but uh, I'm not bound for Gin Lane quite yet. Uh, thank you. Take Mary's coat. Oh, yes, that's a pleasure. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> very much. Well, come on. Go through. How's the wine? Yeah, it's fine. Really compliments the turkey. Which is more than anybody else has done. Oh, I'm sorry, Gail. It's gorgeous. It, it really is. <laughs> I was joking. So was he. <laughs> no, I wasn't. In fact... Oh, no, no speeches. Quick, shove a turkey slag in his car. <laughs> Unaccustomed as I am. <laughs> well, actually, um... I, uh, I am unaccustomed to this. Spending this, this very special day with the people I love. It's going. <laughs> I don't apologise. It's times like this you get a bit of clarity. Realise what's truly important. And it's vital you hang on to that when other things come along to knock you. Um, what, I'm, what I mean is, um, this, this is what life's about. And all the rest is just, uh, is just froth. To the most wonderful people I have ever met. <laughs> Get this party started. What the hell do you think you're doing? We're here for the party. Afternoon, you said. Yeah, after lunch, I meant. You said instead of. We could have gone round to your mother's with Gary. I, I thought you were a buffy. I've got, I've got the wrong end of the stick. Well, now you've got the right end. See you later. Uh, we've no in. Instead of making dinner, I've spent all morning making stuff for your do. Perhaps we could park ourselves on your sofa, Gail, and have a pick at these to keep our hunger at bay. Why don't you just go home? No. Join us. 
With plenty of food, I'll get some plates and cutlery. Gail, no! This is what Christmas is all about, helping one's neighbour. <laughs> Bring for a little one. You look a bit pushed for space. I'll have mine over here on the tree. Have you got the remote control, Andy? Sorry for the delay. Best laid plans and all. So, talk to me. Talk? I can't even spit. Come on, Jed. I'm late for dinner as it is. What do you want me to say? Of course I agree. Who wouldn't? Not good enough. If I can't be certain, I'm not so squeamish I won't finish it. There's nothing... I can say that it make you certain. You just have to trust me. But look, I'm not going to gain anything by going to the coppers. It's, it's against my nature, any road. Good. Very good. Now, I've got some studios in Wigan. You can have one of those and, uh, let's say, three grand. Don't haggle. Oh, the, the money's fine. But, but Wigan, I don't know anybody there. I don't want you in my face anymore. I don't want you drunk in the Rovers, letting your mouth run away with you. I don't want to see you again. And I don't want you to tell anyone about this. I'll have to say my goodbyes to Emily. Maybe. In time, if necessary. But not looking like that. Not sounding like that. So do we have a deal or not? Well, how do I know you... You're not going to drive me to some quiet spot and do me in anyway. You don't. You're just going to have to trust me. <sighs> Voicemail. Oh, tell me about it. I've been trying to get over to Tony for the last hour. Well, Steve must be at the cab office by now. I'm going to go and fetch him. Well, why don't you call the office? But and wait another 20 minutes while he has one for the road, we lied. He's coming home now. Listen, can you keep an eye on that veg for me? Yeah, no problem. Jeez. Hey, love for one. Oh, Vernon. Any good? Trust me, we're uh, better off with Slade. Mm. Hello. Oh, you've got a nerve. Tanked up with Dutch courage, are you? No, you were boozing with Steve because he told me. You called in this morning. Well, if it's not with you. Ah, lovely. They are real suede, mm -hmm. right? I don't think they're all mannish, and they're actually more moccasins than slippers. Well, don't apologise because I love slippers. Mm. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Plus. Oh, it's not a lot of sex in underwear, is it? I love thongs, me, except when they go Just, right just, right. just oh. open it. Not just a blanket, an emergency night in kit. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Miss Dickens, this is brilliant! Oh, hello. There's mask, what are you trying to say? N nothing. It's, it's, it's pampering, isn't it? My mum swears by them. All right. Well, it must work then. Mm, I don't know, Steve. Walking around with a face like Tinky Winky of an evening, ain't my idea of a good time. But, well, I'll, uh, I'll get something more expensive then. Yes, because if it costs an arm and a leg, then that means you love me more. <laughs> that ain't the way I work, Stevie boy. I'm only uh, messing with you because <laughs> this baby is perfect. Yes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> been Lloyd. I told him not to. Not oh, to forget him. Sorry, uh, I couldn't hear you over shaking Stevens, so... Uh, what was the door doing, lot? Have you seen? Outside, there. There's a load of undesirables knocking about. I think there's money on the premises. Uh, Steve, just cos they're homeless don't mean the villains, love. What's with the grotto? Uh, the Lloyd's doing... Right. Have company, did he? Yes! Uh, they, they went upstairs to the flat soon as I got here. Oh, no, you didn't catch him at it, did you? Uh, very, very, very close shave. <laughs> anyway, come on, dinner's ready. Well, I've got to ring Lloyd because, you know, um, he, I've, he, he's got to take over, so... Right, we'll call him while we walk. Come on, you can lock up for five minutes, can't you? And the doctor says to him... <laughs> Deck the halls! Oh, I, I, I do apologise. No, I, I'm enjoying myself. Lovely food. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, well, uh, it <coughs> was certainly different, and the, uh, the, the rum barber was quite passable. Needed more alcohol. I know how it feels. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're all right for washing up liquid, thank you. <laughs> this is Nalevka. Made to my family's own recipe. This will put hairs on your dog. I don't know. On your chest. Hairs on your chest, hair of the dog. Two entirely different things. <laughs> uh, will cherry glasses be all right? Perfect. At 45% proof, you don't want pint pots. It's a vodka-based liqueur, isn't it? Very good. You have Polish roots. Oh, no, no. She's a citizen of the world. She knows a lot of things, does Mary. I believe Nawelska is currently being registered for appellation within the European Union. Oh. Well, uh, a lot of regional specialities are protected. Um... Stilton, Rock Four, Gorgonzola Brie, uh, Parma Ham, Serrano Ham, Jersey Royals, <laughs> Cornish Clotted Cream, Whitstable Oysters, Orkney Beef. No! Polish feast is complete without a toast. Jedzcie, pijcie i popuszczajcie pasa. Eat, drink, and loosen your belt. My father would stand up and say this each Christmas. Yeah, just before his trousers fell down. <laughs> Norris. <clears throat> Knock it back in one. As my father also said, it hits the back of your throat of a carpet. Another? Uh, hey, Merry Christmas! Come in, come in, let me take your coats. Okay. You had a nice day? Lovely. How's Gail doing? <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. Um, is Gary here? He's at his grand's lobby, he'll pop in later. I'll fix you a drink. Well, let's start getting cocky with me, I swear. I won't be responsible. That's exactly what you'll be, because you're the bigger man. <laughs> Manage. I'm not having it, Gary Wind. I see her. No way. So what are you going to do? Cause a scene? Ruin another Christmas? See what they're doing? This is meant to be his birthday, our day. Nobody wants him here. They are here. So green and buried. I am. Gail, get some of that That for Paul. Mm. And William. Little reminder of Ozzy. Nice flowers. I didn't put these here. Oh, maybe they're from Michelle. Oh. Oh, sick 
can you get? What? Maria, what are you doing? Cut the who? Carla and him. Oh, how dare he set so many little only flowers? Right, Maria, calm down. Come on, he's all right. No, he's not. Oh, I thought this is the one place I could come and find some peace, and even here he's laughing at me. How is he able to do this? Rub me nose in it time and time again without any comeback. That man killed my husband and no one cares. He killed him. But even you don't believe me, dear. If you can't convince me best friend. I, just, I don't know what to think. Yeah. So you think now? You just turn a blind eye like everyone else. Maria, where are you going? Where are you? I'm really melting your mouth, these volibants. <laughs> I've got to go and get another one. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all right? Yeah, gotta be. It's Christmas Day. You uh, you said anything to your missus? No. You, uh, you talk to Gail. Go on, spoil the whole day, no. I need all the comfort and joy that's going right now. I'll get it. You'll keep it to yourself. Ah, it's your business. But if I was you, I'd say something. I'll do. Seconds out, round one. Hey, love. Yeah, no. ah. Mwah. Hey, there's plenty of skin in the kitchen. <gasps> I never thought you were going to get here. I cannot stop thinking about it. Any chance of a beer? I'm spitting feathers here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go and get you one. All right, Pops. <laughs> Ignore him, Kevin. I think the atmosphere's just took a turn for the worst. Oh, right. Sorry about that, love. You know what I'm like after I've had sprouts. No, the mood, idiot. Nip home and get their presses pronto. Oh, oh. 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 So you got your plans New Year's Eve? Not yet, no. I was talking to the lady. I know a lot of doormen in town, so we can get in most places, like. Oh, could be. Great. <laughs> you not got a cold one? Yeah, yeah, I'll go and see. So, what's your girlfriend this Christmas? A squeaky toy. What girlfriend? I'm young, free, and single, me. Got an eye on someone, though. Like a dog. I feel like walking over there and sticking Calm this down. camp. Victor Bush, please. First of all, we we'd like to thank Gail and Joe for your hospitality. And as a token of our goodwill, we'd like to give you these, Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, that's for you. Tool belt? <laughs> Is this a joke? Well, you saw it be Andy like. You steal me tools, you take me livelihood away, and you give me a tool belt. Yeah, it's very kind of you, Anna. Thank you. David, put some more music on. I'll side with that. Fine. Fancy one. I don't smoke. Who said out about smoking? You know where I am. Oh, uh, no. David! Leave him alone, you tart. What? I said outside. <laughs> you want to be careful, pal. Because your face is writing checks that your fist can't cash right now. Look, just leave Tina yeah, alone, all right? She's not interested. Does she say that? Because she's telling me something different. What? I know women. You want to upgrade. And she's aching for it, mate. Fine. I'm going to have her. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I want to talk about freaks. I'm not the one who went out of the kidnapper twice my age. Oh, no! Oh, hey, 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 hey! Back oh, in you, you two! Back, baby! Oh, oh, Back in oh, Everybody oh, out! Oh, now! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! It's just the ale! Look, everybody just calm down! Let's Shut up! Enjoyed. Shut that great flapping mouth! All I wanted was a bit of breathing space. One day. A relative peace and sanity with me family, but no, you had to turn it into a free for all. You barging and take over, talking, talking, talking about nothing, less than nothing. I'm not finished. Nobody here can stand the sight of you, any of you. 
And I don't want you here. Now, tomorrow, ever. So sling it off! Well, if that's how you feel, I'll be taking on my volivants. Oh, you can have them, mate. With my blessing. <laughs> there you are. How about some mini Scott Jigs and all? Hey, go! <laughs> You're not time! Stop it! Yeah? Yeah. You're feeling a bit peckish and all, eh? That's it. Junior's got the right idea. You want some more, do you? Come on. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. I think you better go. <laughs> Come back to play me, no kidding. You want to lock it up. Come on. Come on. Right, I think it's time we went and all. You, oh. We know where we are. Thanks for the buffer. All that about. I warned you what would happen. Over and over. I knew they ruined things. They'd ruin things. This is nothing to do with a wind asses. You were out of control, Joe. I didn't recognize you. You frightened me. I wanted today to be perfect. To be everything I know we could be. Could have been. But sometimes just wanting something isn't enough, is it? Too many other things get in the way. Tell me what it is. Everything. Nothing. That's the worst part. I'm sorry. Joe? Joe, wait. You all right? Where are you going? I'm sorry. I can't. It's not fair. Dad! Don't, don't go! I strongly advise you never to try that again. How dare you lay flowers when you're the one that put him there? I've not been there since the funeral. Must have been Carla. What, and that makes it better? I don't want to see either of you two anywhere near that churchyard. Don't you walk away from me! Shut up and leave me alone. I've had just about enough of you. I will not rest until you pay for what you did. It takes me the rest of my life. The way you're going, it might not take that long. Are you threatening me? You're threatening you with your stupid behavior. Stop pushing me. A what? I'm not frightened of you, Tony. <laughs> really? You really think I'm a killer? Maybe you should be. There's more than enough space beside hubby and baby in that boneyard. More than enough for you to spend New Year together as a family. Merry Christmas, by the way.
always was, so it's gone everywhere. Oh. Penny for him. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was only saying penny for your thoughts. I was just disappointed with your opening offer. A penny. Oh, we're for the businessmen, aren't we? Well, I tell you, I will tell you my thoughts for nothing. Because as you abandoned me yesterday, I thought you might like to take me for a nice Boxing Day stroll. As in, join the crowds of people escaping their families? As in, a romantic couple of hours somewhere gorgeous, followed by a pub lunch. But if I want romance and gorgeous views, why would I leave this flat? Oh. You think a smooth talk and silky negligees will get you out of anything, don't you? And are you saying they can't? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh. How are we going in there next? Looks like we're sure that Dip and Dab will have to wait. We can be seen in the same shop together, though. That Rita, she can smell sexual chemistry from 40 yards. Is it true she was a stripper? Dancer. We a snake. With this, what? Who told you that? Oh. Must have been the other sort of boa. Anyway, good honour for having a shady past. Says you. No, <clears throat> I'm still working on mine. Hi, Anla. Hello. Hiya. Right, Norris. Well, I've only your word for it that Jed's back. His door was open when we went out mm -hmm. yesterday. So, unless it was you oh, who shut it? I can assure you, Jed Stone's bedroom door's no concern of mine. Right. Well, he's back. I'll pop up later, take him a cup of tea, and check that everything's OK. Oh, <laughs> so that's what you have to do to get room service round here, is it? Behave like some errant student, swanning in at all times of night, then lounging around in bed. Ah, Hans. I've been buying a paper. Pockets. Get off. She's fully messing. <laughs> What's that? I was looking for fags. <laughs> Since when did I have to give up smoking? Some health kick. And what are you going in there for, Mother? Circuit training? It's for Amy. Oh, Steve, Amy can't move for sweets. <laughs> uh, you go on. I'll be in in a sec. Don't do that to Amy. I've been waiting for you to tell me what happened with your dad. Oh, uh well... Seen as he rang yesterday. And you hadn't even seen him, let alone spoke to him. Well, if you let me finish... He was knocked off the list by more pressing matters, like um, buying a present for Michelle. So what did you get her? How do you two make me feel so oppressed? Oppressed? I want to go to the police. What if they do now, like last time, and Tommy finds out that I went? What exactly did he say? That he'd kill me. He said that there's room in that graveyard next to Liam and baby Paul. Come with me to the police station. At least if there's two of us. What can I say? He's evil, Fizz. If the police know what he's said to me and, and they know what he's capable of, and if you're there to back me up and all... I can't say something I've not seen. This is what people always say, this, isn't it? When someone's done something terrible. Oh, he seemed like such a normal bloke. I can't believe he'd do out like this. But I can't go marching into the Nick saying, oh, he seemed really normal to me, so he's probably dangerous. <sighs> oh, right. Let's see. Not I'm fine, Tara. You can go now. Maria. <sighs> no, seriously. You're not going to help me. I'd rather just be on my own. <sighs> I'm on your side, you know. Go for cheers. Thanks, love. Hey, Steve has been caught in possession of contraband. Contraband? Yeah, sweets. <laughs> he claimed they were for Amy. Uh, it's probably just a tactic, you know, make me think he's slacking off. Mm, we're sure's and Steve's weight loss bet. 
Oh, fancy doing that over Christmas. Bonkers. There is a Boxing Day burn-off class this lunchtime at Brazilian Crunch. Not me. I can't see Lloyd in Lycra. Heck, listen to the humble shop girl. She has wisdom way beyond her years. <laughs> OK, you're lost. Well, again. Bye. Have you heard out from that Jew yet? News travels fast? Look, I've just been in the shop and Norris told me that Sal had been in and said, well, there was a bit of a do kicked off here yesterday. Do you want half a dozen dead volivants for your bird table? Oh, oh lovely. Well, at least there's one good thing, I suppose. You've seen his true colours now, haven't you? Huh? Who's? Joe's! Is that your opinion or Norris's? Do you want me to stop here with you? Strangely enough, ma'am, I can look after myself. Audrey! Oh, oh. hi, Fizz. Oh, have a nice day yesterday. Yeah, I've just seen Maria. Oh, how is she? What? She's saying that Tony's been threatening her. What? Yeah, probably because she's embarrassed because she really kicked off yesterday at the time of the trip. Yesterday, isn't it? Because she found flowers on Liam's grave from Carla and Tony. So now she's saying he's threatened her, so she's just... Have they tried to find a decent florist yeah, open on Boxing Day? Cemetery's usually a good bet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. I'd be tempted to dig a hole and climb in. I mean, don't get me. I feel so. Dear, all these accusations she's made. Thirsty? I am the first to know how it feels when no one would. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is it true? I mean, with Maria, this is all just grief, isn't it? Mm. Oh, hello. She's yeah. looking. I'll go over there. I'm coming over. Come down. Good luck. Yeah, see you later, Fitz. I should have grouted Grey. You weren't to know that it would be Mushroom Volivant that hit the tail. Might have been prawn. Don't. <laughs> nice bouquet. Didn't know your flat had a garden. I bought them. I've been doing a lot of driving. I passed an old lady sell them in a garden this morning. Oh, yeah? On my life. I'm not a liar. And I'm not a kick-off merchant either. I don't behave like I did yesterday, I swear. All night I've been thinking what I must have looked like to you. You don't know me well enough I to be able... I hope I see it again. You won't? I don't know. I do know that up until now, you've been the only one in this ridiculous kitchen nonsense that hasn't smashed anything. Or anyone. Hope. And you've been provoked more than once. Thank you. I want to say, I believe it was a one-off. But I've been wrong about men before. Not this time. I'll prove it to you, I promise. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I was strong, I'd stand up to him. Tell him that I won't be intimidated. Whatever Tony said. He said that he'll kill yeah, me. All right. All right, let's come on. Don't upset yourself. Why will no one listen to me? Maria, we're all listening to you. We all want you back in the world with us. Looking forward again. I mean, working in the salon, sleeping in your own bed, not... and eating properly. So when are you back from town, Lloyd? Only everyone's giving excuses and we are three drivers down. I'm miles away, mate. By the time I get back, the shift... Aha! I knew you were up there. We need a driver. Oh, give us a break. I'm working later as it is. Hi, you. Come on, Goss. I'm getting out from him. Goss? I knew your slimming thing wouldn't be just about you, pair. There had to be a woman involved. The winter wonderland thing in there. Dead romantic, that was. So come on, who's the mystery woman? Oh, come on, babe. Every man's entitled to his secrets, leave him alone. As it happens, the mystery woman had no interest in me whatsoever. Hey, 
It's a good job we're drivers down, mate, isn't it? I get to borrow the cab. Yeah, but I'm going to the gym. Aw. How could she not fall for him when he'd gone to all that trouble? But she's a right cow, whoever she is. Well, happy Boxing Day, uh, Maria? Are you okay? What's he done to it? Well, done to what? We'll go through. No, honey, no, listen, don't do that. You got yourself <gasps> to. Oh no, Mickey, stop! No, no, it'll, it'll stop. It'll stop, stop it, Dev! Listen, the program to set him No, you don't understand. He will kill me. Shh. Tony will kill me. Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> So now you've got to take her for a drink. That is so lame. Yeah, because I couldn't possibly be doing something for the good of somebody else, could I? Tara, hi, it's Amber. You all right? Do you do the Christmas thing? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm fine. Well, actually, I'm not. Um, it's me and Daryl. Yeah, problems. Uh, Tony! Steph! Yeah, has your alarm company phoned you? Hmm? Yeah, well, listen. <laughs> yeah, I know, but really, nothing to rush over for. Yeah. Oh, poor Maura. Poor Maura. She did exactly the same last year. What, she got sick? Arranged a Boxing Day class, hoping it would stop her getting Polax Christmas Day with her evil twin sister. She turns into her evil twin. Oh, she's really got an evil twin. Last year, the two of them spent Boxing Day in intensive care with hypothermia. Oh. Fell asleep on them roundabout, both dressed as Dolly Parton. <laughs> so the class got cancelled? Without notice. We had to vote on who'd run the class. Hey, girls, who votes Liz takes it today? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Mate. You've got to. I had brandy butter and custard on the same pudding last night thinking I was coming here. Well, we've no music or anything. Machines in that cupboard. We just need someone who's got some good sound stashed away in the glove compartment. You could have started without me, you know. Hmm. I was just about to send the search party. Same again, Dev. Packet of crisps from our pregnancy range. Colon piccalilli. No, I'm fine, Ty. Hey. We could go to the factory and give it another go. And Tony said that the inner flap thing can't stick sometimes. Have you spoke to him? Yeah, just to say it was a false alarm. But did you say that it was me? Well, I said it was an accident. No, he'll kill me. No, Maria, he understands what an accident is. Well, Liam was an accident. Oh. Maria, listen. No, just leave me alone, Dev. Did sort it out. Hey, I haven't seen you skip close to a sweat yet. Ah, oh, one finger DJing, babe. It's a dying art, needs forward planning. <laughs> I'm mashing it up for Puffy in a rock pudding style. Come on, Albert, think of those calories you're burning. Mistress McDonald and DJ Washboard laid it down fine while you shed the waste pine. I'll, I'll, I'll work on that thing. Uh, yeah, I do. Come on, think of the 80s. Hey. I uh, see Joe's van's parked outside, Gail. Yeah, so what are you now, air traffic control? Oh, I just hope their next-door neighbours haven't seen it yet. Yes, well, maybe their radar isn't as sensitive as yours, Norris. It's gone. Oh, hello, Audrey. Hi. Gone? Who else? Uh, Jed. I took the 
cup of tea up. He didn't answer when I knocked, so I opened the door. But well, may- maybe he wasn't back in the first place. Oh, all his things have gone too. I mean, he's shipped out. Oof, how rude. Yes, Becky, what is it? Oh. Let me now give us a chance. Go on your brows and become a crime. A lot of things have become a crime if I had my way, including ingratitude. I'm sure he had his reasons. <sighs> well, if browsing and ingratitude are crimes, I dread to think what stretch Maria's going to get for what she's doing to that factory out there. Oh, no. What now? <laughs> oh, Maria. Oh, Maria. What are you doing? Oh, Dear, oh dear, she, she's not even spelt it right. Oh, Maria. She? No. What are you doing? Oh, I am, uh, Mudderer. Oh, man, come. that is tragic. Leave me alone. Something more damage no, she don't want to do with the clear head. Do yeah, but no, we, we should inform the police. Maria, are you don't you dare. Don't, don't interfere, interfere Norris. I am sympathetic. Maria, oh, for heaven's sake, give well, it to me. If everyone knows this. Yes, they'll think you've lost your mind. Oh, that's what you think, isn't it? Of course not. Audrey, if everyone sees this, then he won't dare hurt me, now will he? Now, stop I? it. Now, don't talk like this. Don't. Please, Maria. Come on, darling. Let me get you home. No. Oh. oh. I'm sure that Audrey will Come sort me. things out. Oh, yes, yes, I'm no. sure. Where did you get this paint? This isn't going to do any good at all. Oi. Maria, are you, you listening to You better not be grassing her up. Look, I've just about had enough. If I die, people will remember this. They'll start to ask questions. Die? Audrey, promise me. Even if it looks like an accident, that you'll have it properly looked what into. What kind of talk is this, Maria? With a little baby inside you? Oh, sweetheart, come on. Nobody is going to die. Nobody. Two more. One. Two. That's it. Well done. OK, wide legs. Shoulder rows. And if DJ Washbard has got something nice and calm, can do anything. Chilled out is my default setting, Mistress McDonald. <laughs> okay, feet together. And big inhale exercise. And now reach down, breathe out five. She said five. I don't think I can't see your pants. <laughs> Panting, the men panting. You lot are filthy. I'm sorry. Laughter's relaxing. <laughs> and okay. Oh, nice tight tummies. That's it. We're finished. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like in the morning. <laughs> Hanging around on street corners now. <laughs> Look at that. She lost it, what? Norris has gone and found police. I think it's spelling what's upset him. I feel sorry for her. People will laugh at that. Yeah. So stuff. You said you'd have to wait for your sherbet dip dab. Well, you've waited for enough, so. I'm so scared, Audrey. I know you have I honestly, I do. Come on. Home, come on. <laughs> hey? See ya. You're still selling, aren't you? After all that's happened? Well, I can't just dump me old stock, can I? I've paid out for it. And now that I'm having to do everything on my lonesome... Oh, don't start that. Well, surely you don't begrudge me shifting the last of it. I know you're principled, but I'm sorry, that's just hard-faced. What have you got in there? Uh, nothing that I won't be able to shift in a week or two. Well, not from here, you can't. Molly's been trying to ring all morning. She wants to make up. If she knew about... Well, she, she doesn't, and she won't. Two weeks, Max. What, with you well out of it, we haven't even had this conversation. I'm skint, Tyrone. All my life, if I've been skint on Twelfth Night, then I've been skint all year. Not a word of exaggeration. Two weeks. I mean it. And keep me out of it. <laughs> Maria, come on! Get off me, Audrey! Oh. He's a murderer! See? Will 
giant. Everyone's looking, Tony. You can't touch me. Maria, put it down now. Put it down now. Stay away from me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just Christmas. She's up. Oh, you don't like near me. Maria, what's that? I am trying to get her in. He killed Liam and he said he'll kill me. Come inside, eh? You threatened me. Do what your friends say. Maria, yeah? come on. Look what you've done. You won't win, murderer. Oh, oh shut up, stupid cow. Right, just leave it. You're making it worse. What, and let her get away with this? You think uh, you can kill me now, eh? In front of everyone. I'll have to join the kill them. Look at it. They all know. Now you're going to get Nothing. She won't do anything. Yeah. Like oh, no, I thought you meant Pam. What? No, that? What's happening? I have no What's idea, but I reckon we're best off staying out of it. She's doing. Maria, you've made your point, now come in! See, and the police will oh. remember this and all, it'll all go down on record. Look at all the witnesses! But I don't care what she's been through, you can't keep rolling over and excusing her. She's paid for the damage of this car! Fine, but not now, we'll deal with it later, all right? Did you do that? Do what? No. I did it, it was me. You confessed to defacing that building? Yeah, because no one believes me! He killed my Liam, and he said that he'll kill me and all. I'm arresting you on suspicion of criminal damage. You do not have to say anything, what? but it may harm your defence if you do not She's mention not my question what something said. you later align in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. And Coronation Street will be back in half an hour. If this weren't so sick, it'd be funny. He murders my husband, threatens to kill me, and I'm the one being arrested for graffiti. Just calm down, Maria. Come on. Whatever your grievances are, it's still an offence to cause malicious damage. Malicious damage? He's destroyed my life! Excuse me, officer. Might I possibly have a word? Whatever he tells you is a lie! What's going on? What have you done, Maria? You can't arrest I'm not her. I'm afraid we can, sir. I'm not willing to press charges. She's already admitted to the offence. No, she's not herself. I had noticed. And that's because in the last 12 months, she's lost the baby and her husband. OK. Uh, I take it that's the same, Liam, she's claiming you had murdered. Yeah, I've already discussed this with your colleagues. There was a hit and run a few months back. I was there when he died. She needs someone to blame, unfortunately. I'm that someone. You seem rather understanding, considering... I gave my word to the man I'd look after Maria. The only thing that girl's got left is the baby she's carrying. She's pregnant. Just over three months. Look, I know you're just trying to do your job, but she needs friends, family, not the inside of herself, especially not at this time of year. Well, you like we know for what? This is my wife. Unfortunately, she's not as forgiving as I am. Yes, yeah, so what's happening? You'd have to ask the officer about. Well, just give us a mo. What did you say to him? What had to be said. How was the gym? Banging, mate, banging. Feeling ripped? To the max. Not exactly a bursting out your shirt there. Are you calling me a lie? I'm just concerned about your health, mate. Oh, is that as a mate? Or as an alibi for yesterday? He's not going to let that lie, are you? But you can't blame him, mate, eh, can you? You're playing with fire, and Muggins here is holding the petrol can. Oh, I think I've got to know. I've got it What do you think they're talking about? No idea. I'm going to have a word. Uh, no, maybe you shouldn't get involved. I'm a brother, Fizz. Well, if you ask me, it was only a matter of time. Oh, poor, poor child. Mm, and no doubt he'll demand they throw the book at her. Have you just calm down? Kirk's having a word. Right. Letting her go? The gentleman kindly explained the situation. He also refuses to make a complaint. That's brilliant. Doesn't change the fact your sister isn't well. We'll get her through it. Make sure you do, because I'm warning you right now, I won't tolerate a repeat of this. It won't be. Right then. I'll leave you to deliver the glad tidings. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Everything sorted? We hope so. Thanks very much. Our pleasure. Got yourself a saint there, love. <laughs> Don't ask. It's over. How do you mean? Everything's OK. You're not under arrest anymore. Oh, Kirk, what in heaven did you say, love? I think it was more what Tony said. Come again. He sort of stood up for you. I just want to put all this stuff behind us. You're not all falling for this. Maria! It's evil! 
home. Oh. Let's get home, right? I know what you are. That is a not Audrey! No, I mean it. Just look at yourself. Look at what you're doing. I'm sorry. Yes, well, it's not me you should be apologising to, is it, eh? Over my dead body. Oh. I don't know what to say. Forget it. You were saying about our Mr. Gordon? Mm. Well, one swallow doesn't make a summer. Oh, gonna have to get back to the gym. I mean, start going. Does it really hurt you that much? It'll be all right. I might sleep on the floor tonight, give the sofa a miss. Hmm. Yeah, just, uh, excuse me, just a second. Game on. What are you doing here? I'm um, looking for Amber. Are you looking for Amber? Yeah, she called me earlier. She said she was having problems with Daryl and she wanted to chat. What kind of problem? She didn't go into any detail. Excuse me, I just... Uh... What? I think we've been had. Sorry, Dad. Had to be done. Buy Tara a cocktail and be charming. Nearly there. You wait, he's got a plan. Everything he does, he does for a reason. Look at the state of these hands. When was the last time you gave your nails some TLC? Hmm? I know what you're trying to do, you know. I'm not mad, OK? I don't care what anyone says. Look, nobody thinks that. Folks are just worried about you. Yeah, well, it's Tony they should be worrying about, not me. Right, uh, run your bath, go on. I don't need a flaming bath. I just need someone to listen to me. No, Maria, you listen to me. Now, you've got to stop all this. It's not good for you, and it certainly isn't good for your baby. She's right, kiddo. You'll feel better after a soak. A few bubbles. Merry Christmas. Oh, and the same to you, love. Cracky, you're full of the joys. I know, isn't it wonderful? Hmm. Take it you had a good day yesterday? Indeed. You might say your loss was my gain. You've lost me. Your father and I, we shared Christmas together. I thought you knew. He told us he was coming down with flu. I mean, has that man got no shame? Oh, Eileen, I'm so sorry. Oh, forget it. Believe me, he's pulled worse strokes than this. That doesn't justify his actions. Indeed. I have been stuck in a B&B &B for the last two weeks. And it's gorgeous, as you can imagine. Now, we were at each other's throats and... Mom practically moved back into the house. My dad is acting like nothing happened. What has your best interests at heart? <laughs> so what now? Edinburgh, or bust. I am moving up there in Jan. Wow. A friend of mine started her own consultancy, and she's asked me to come in, and I just thought, what the hell? Good. <laughs> Are you sure it's the right thing to do? I don't know what to do, but I do know I have to get away. Scotland. It just seems a lot, long way away to escape from your mum and dad. We both know this isn't just about my family. And the least you can do is wish me luck. With bells on, babe. Hey. Here's to, um, fresh starts. I think you should call round. Maybe later. I'm really worried, Fizz. I'm going to clean that paint straight away. I just wanted to catch up with Fizz first. Relax, don't worry about that. This is an extremely awkward situation and I'm probably not the right person to suggest this, but I think um, you should try and get Maria away from Weatherfield. There's too many reminders around here. I think she needs some distance. I've been thinking the same thing. I believe you've got family in Cyprus. Yeah, my mum and dad. 
they'd love to see you. Oh, I don't know. Well, I'd be happy to pay if money's an issue. Well, don't be silly. No, I know things can be tight just now. We can cope, but thanks for the thought. Well, fair enough. But the offer's still there if you change your mind, all right? OK, now I'm totally confused. You feeling OK, are you? Not coming down with Summit. Here we go. That girl does not need a holiday. She needs a shrink or a cell. Look, we doing the honour. Don't think you're getting out of it that easily. <laughs> I hardly think that qualifies as a kiss. Oh, Why? You think you could do better? <laughs> now that's how it's done. And it was up for you, Lloyd. We've still got it, kid. Uh... <laughs> Given it here yesterday, but what is it? Open it and see. I saw you salivating over it in that nerdy shop you dragged me in. Oh, it's awesome! It's got an ejector seat and everything. Yeah, thanks. Oh, come on, let's get you home. I'll give you a massage. Don't go getting any ideas. It's strictly medicinal, like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Goes without saying. Now, are you sure you don't want another one? I had better make Why? a move. Why? Why? What's the rush? I don't want to get too comfortable. Because? Because it'll make going back to that crummy room that much oh, harder. OK. Now, look, look, look. If I'm out of line, you can tell me where to go, but I think it's crazy for you to waste all your money on a B&B &B when there's an empty flat above the shop, right? The, mm. That is very kind. But... But no, 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 you're going to uh, move away. You're going to have to save every single penny, right? And you'll be doing me a massive favour because I know for certain that uh, Amber and Daryl have got their eyes on that place and that is a no, 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 no. <laughs> so just, uh, just think about it, yeah? OK. I'll think about it. And you know where I am, right? And I'm sorry. I really am. And I wish I could go back and um, make everything. Uh... How's that? Oh, smashing, babe. Beg your pardon? Sorry, I mean, it's very therapeutic. <laughs> Good. Because I'm not doing this for my benefit, you understand? Absolutely. As long as we're clear on that. Defo. Mm, still nice and relaxing, though, you know, with all the candles and whatnot. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Only pen! Hey, I've managed to get my hands on some lovely devil. Um. Right, er, uh, later. We don't just lie there. Get your kit back on. Uh, give me a minute. Oh. Right, yeah. If you're waiting for an apology, you can forget it. Amber, it baby, had to sweetheart, be done. it was embarrassing. Oh, yeah, because you're not totally used to that anyway. Dad, what do you want from me? OK, well, if you must know, I do feel sort of responsible for the breakup. Satisfied now? Well, it wasn't your fault. Doesn't mean I can't try and put it right. Yeah, but I blew it right. Not you. You love her. Don't deny it. So why are you letting her leave? Because... I'm not a good enough reason to make her stay. You're an idiot, Dad. Yeah. 
Big time, babes. Big time. So you're sending me away? Oh, no one is sending you anywhere. We only want you to think about it. Everyone needs a holiday. Yes, I mean, a bit of sun works wonders. Can it bring back the dead? Look, I'm sorry, but I can't just up sticks and run away. Being here isn't healthy for you. I'm fine! No, Maria, you're not. Whose idea was this? Mine. It's not running away. Please, sis. I'm scared for you. Don't say that. Is this how you all feel, then? That you're seriously worried for me? <sighs> all right, fine. I'll go. I'll go to Cyprus. Look, we're just mates, all right? We could do a lot worse. Maybe I could do better. Only in your dreams. You smell intoxicating. Give over. A true lady doesn't just wear a perfume. She enhances it. You're still in the doghouse. But I'm enjoying the barking. You guys are so cute. <laughs> That's it. You want to watch Peter and your dad talk about going for it big time. I know, it's frightening. <laughs> so are we Christmas love? Oh, passable, yours. Top. Really? How come? I don't know, it just was. So you didn't exactly miss a certain <clears throat> son of mine? Do you know what? Not even for one second. Jason just wants another chance. Oh, no, it ain't gonna happen though, love. Sorry. Got you at a bad time. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just doing some like urgent uh, uh, paperwork. Uh, excuse me. Where are my manners? Uh, please. I can't stay. Yeah. Um, look, this is really awkward. I was wondering if I could take you up on your earlier offer. Oh yeah, sure. Only if the flat's still available. Uh huh. Uh, it's yours. When do you want to move in? Um, tomorrow, if possible. Yeah, it's not a problem. I'll uh, meet you there. A midday call. Perfect. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll uh, see you then. Then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen. Thank you. Mm, it's uh, nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <Yeah. laughs> Whoa! I can't remember the last time I was called cute. <laughs> Don't believe that for a single moment. Yes, well, uh, I think I should be getting home. Oh, so soon. Well, Norris and I are watching It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Well, uh, enjoy your evening. No, we will. Good night, love. Good night. Good night. You fancy going into town getting something to eat? I'm surprised you're in the mood. I'm not prepared to let anything else ruin the rest of our Christmas. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to disturb you. Not at all, Emily. Well, I, I just wanted to say that the compassion you showed to Maria was most uplifting. Yeah, that's one word for it. Yes, well, you did a kind and generous thing today, and I, for one, will never forget it. Well, I've seen everything now. Uh, before you start, I did not put her up to that. What the hell are you up to, Tony? And I'm warning you. Don't give me any flannel about it being the season of goodwill. I feel sorry for her. Not good enough. She needs treatment. She doesn't deserve to be behind bars. Mm, still not feeling it. You really want the truth? Would be nice. I've had enough of the nutter. So sue me. Same again. 
tap water, please. Tap water? Mm, that's right. Well, given your newfound rep, I figured you could turn it into wine for us. Happy Christmas. It is now. Second thoughts. Let's scrub the wine. I might have a little late present back home for you. <laughs> Thanks, love. Mm-hmm. Do you want the good or the bad news? Why do I get the feeling it's going to hurt either way? I have just convinced Maura to let you DJ at the New Year Bash. Oh, my God, that's so blooming jammy. Oh, thanks a lot, like, but, you know, I've hardly even met the woman. Well, she's had feedback, lots of feedback. Apparently you've got quite a little following. <laughs> All right, so what's the bad news? You have to wear a thong. <laughs> yeah, right. It's traditional Brazilian beachwear. Um... Somebody please catch me up. Your man here has just landed the DJ gig of the year. The Brazilian mm-hmm. Crunch Party 2008. <laughs> Since when? Since just now. Let's put a word in for me. You see? It's Christmas. I take it there'll be talent. More than you can shake a stick at. In that case, I am very pleased for you. There's somebody around here who's having fun. The film's about to start. I, I, I was getting worried. I joined Rita and Colin for a quick drink. The notice I wasn't invited. Because you weren't there. No, I was here, preparing the perfect viewing experience for you. That's odd. I beg your pardon. I think you'll find I spend a large proportion of my time improving your life. Oh, oh, uh, do be quiet. I, I, I was referring to this. Oh. Oh, it looks awfully like Jed's cap. Well, that's because it is. Well, that is odd, then, because I, I, you know, I don't believe I've ever seen him without it. Precisely. So why on earth would he leave it behind? Well, uh, perhaps he, th- he thinks he's, he's, he's lost it and bought a new one. I don't know. Uh, what if he hasn't gone off in a drunken huff? What if... Something bad has happened. Oh, jump into conclusions. I- I'm sure it'll be perfectly fine. Hmm. Well, we'll know that when we find him. Oh, and how exactly are, are we expected to do that? I have no idea. But we make a start first thing tomorrow. Hey, what's up? Hi, Papi. Hmm. Me and all. Mm. <laughs> now what are you thinking? That this is the best present a man could ever have. Mm. I must have been a very good boy this year. <laughs> You have remembered me and Poppy are going to the party this afternoon. What, this Mexican crush thing? Brazilian crunch. You know, I think I might get my hair done. Thing is, how can I cover for Lloyd and all? I can't be in two places at once. You'll have to give it a miss. No way, we can't have a party without a DJ. He's a cab driver. Not today, isn't it? Anyway, you've got other drivers. Of course, I know why he's really going. Oh, yeah? Me fancies this poppy bird, doesn't he? More or less admitted it. Did he? Mm. I mean, why should I have to run myself ragged just so he can get his end away? I'll have to get Betty in. Well, there's no way I'm covering for you just so you can get your hair done. Well, probably do it myself. Cheaper, anyway. Holy <laughs> me! Hey, hiya, mate. Hi, mate. Are you, uh, you ready to go to Uncle Ashley's, then, eh? No. I'm eating my eggs, silly. Oh, well. That's told me, hasn't it? Gives a dip. Yeah. Good lad. So, uh, where is everyone? Oh, they're going to visit Tracy. Oh? They've taken her in some money. She wants to buy some makeup, apparently. Though why, I don't know. It's not like there's any fellas where she is. Well, I suppose it'll make her, you know, feel good about herself. What? As in, oh, hurrah, I'm a murderer, sort of good. Who's a murderer? 
Nobody. You, uh, you just eat your egg. He'll find out sometime, and so will Amy. Yes, and when they do, it'll be up to me and Steve to tell him, and not you. All right? Oh, uh, talking of presents, I've brought some up for you. Oh? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can I have a go? No, you can't. You just eat your egg. There you go, my lad. Stone cold sober. Probably faulty. Oh. Wondered why she only wanted a fiver for it. Ah, now, come on, look, a bet's a bet. Ah, but strictly speaking, the Christmas period isn't over yet. She's a wily old devil, isn't she, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Eat your egg. Thank you very much for checking. I appreciate it. Bye. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 who, who were you ringing? Mm, the local hospitals. Just in case. Oh, I'd be ringing the morgues next. <laughs> Norris. But, but don't you think you're jumping to conclusions just because you found his cap under your coat? Well, last night you were agreeing it was all very odd. Well, well yeah, yeah, but, I, but I've been thinking since then. I mean, I mean Jed said he'd come into money, didn't he? And so, well, he's probably just done a bunk so he doesn't have to pay you back rent. I wouldn't ask him for back rent. Uh, but, but, but he doesn't know that, does he? You're trying to wangle your way out of going to look for him. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. Though it is rather a rough area around there. Probably full of drug addicts and knife-carrying adolescents. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm only thinking of you. Well, I'm going. You can please yourself. I can't let you go on your own, can I? Never forgive myself if anything happened to you. I just hope the same applies if anything happens to me. Oh, shame. I quite liked it. We could have added some of our own. <laughs> Slave driver. Control freak. Hey, I'll have you know he's been really good about it. He even offered to pay for Maria to go on holiday. Are you joking? Hey, do you reckon if we call him names, he might pay for us to go on holiday? Look, I doubt it. Guilty conscience, that, if you ask me. Are you, um doing your community service this afternoon? Yeah, why? Well, I just thought I'd remind you who the real criminal is round here. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. So, is your back feeling any better? Oh, loads, yeah. That massage really helped. Good. Although, it is still giving me a bit of jip. I must be sleeping on that sofa that causes it. Hey, we're not trying to wangle your way back into bed. No, no way. I just don't want it to get any worse. I mean, if it does, I'd have to have time off work. Then where would we be? Right. Well, you can sleep in the bed. Really? But I mean sleep. Yeah. Great, thanks. Right, I'm off to work. See you later. See ya. Yes. Here it is, the moment you have all been waiting for. I take it it's a playlist. Uh, no, it's the playlist. I tell you, Jules Holland could not have come up with a better mix. Let's have a look. I'll leave you to it. Hey, no, I want your opinion. I've been up all night toiling over this. Oh, how sad. Double sad. All the more reason to humour me. Look, something there for everyone. If they're into soul. And who isn't? Oh, I heard it through the grapevine. I love that. You see, she's got soul. So, what do you reckon? I reckon we've got a brilliant DJ. Hey. <laughs> this could be the start of a new career. Hello? Who? Oh, that Danielle. Hi, babe. Um, I'm not sure, really. I, I, I might be working. Well, look, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you, yeah? All right, now, bye, bye, bye. I take it that was the delectable Danielle from Brazilian Crunch? Um, yep. How'd she get your number? I gave it to her. Only after she'd pestered me for it. Oh, oh yeah. Lloyd, the love. Yeah, you give over. Look, I've got to go. I'll see you later. <laughs> see ya. Oh, it's 
quite cute, Lloyd, isn't it? Go for it. I would. Well, if I were ten years younger. He did mention a, a working men's club he used to go to. I think we'll visit that first. Yes, and if we're not back before dark, call the police and an ambulance. That's one pound's ten. Uh, I'll have a quarter of licorice all sorts as well, please. Um, I can't help worrying that he didn't feel welcome, and that's why he's gone. Oh, so you think he's uh, sulking, do you? I think you could have made more of an effort. I played snakes and ladders with the man. For goodness sake, what more do you want? That's uh, £2.30. I'll have a quarter of chocolate crunch as well, please. Do you have to wait until I've added it all up before you choose the next item? Huh? But you could try asking for everything in one go. Still thinking? Oh, heaven forfend, I should halt that process. Could be here for another two weeks. Ignore him. Norris thinks customer service means they do his bidding. Ah, is that it? Or are you still trying to connect various synapses? No, that's it. Yes, well, that's £3.30 altogether. A lot cheaper than the uh, dentist bill you'll be facing. This is precisely what I mean. Would you want to live under the same roof as that man? I'm seriously considering absconding myself. Where'd you get that from? From a grateful punter. I told him it's the horse you should be thanking, not me. Still, I'm very happy to accept it on his behalf. Do you know what? That's a good one, huh? So what are you going to do with it? Well, what do you normally do with a bottle of scotch? Yeah, I know, but I thought you were on the wagon. Only over Christmas, not permanently. All oh, right. Look, Leanne, I admit that I needed a wake-up call, all right? But the fact that I've not touched anything just proves that I can control it. And besides, never look a gift horse in the mouth, especially if you're a bookie. Yes, mate. Right, you can work this afternoon because I've got to get to the pub and this one here is skiving. Oh, great. Skiving? I'm doing your mum a favour. Doing yourself a favour, more like. Look, you're not going to cop off with her, you know. What? Don't act all coy with me. This poppy bird. <laughs> I don't need to now. I've got someone else after me. Yeah, right. I have. Danielle's her name. Right, corker. Right, dog, more like. That's if she exists. Hey, talking of corkers, look at the legs on that. That's my mother, that. Oh, sorry, mate. I, I, I just thought she worked for you. She is, man. Yeah, well, she looks after herself, mate. Does this Brazilian crunch thing. Hey, haven't you got a job to go to? Yeah, yeah, I'm on to it, yeah. All right? Yeah. You don't waste much time, do you? Hey? Danielle. Oh, that. <laughs> You've got quite a little fan club. Poppy likes you, no? Is she? Yeah. Mm. I think you're in there. Nah, I'm not interested. Oh, yeah, right. You know, I think you only wanted to go to Brazilian Crunch so you could get off with all the women. I wouldn't have gone at all if you hadn't dragged me there. I did you a favour then, didn't I? Yeah. Actually, you did. Listen, you know, if you'd rather I didn't... Well, you know. What? Well... See Danielle. Just say the word and I won't. Why would I mind? Don't be daft. Yes, soft lad. Danielle? Mm, yeah. I'd love to go out for lunch. Mo, you home? Home says. All right. Knew it'd be here somewhere. What's that, a draft excluder? No, bolster. Jack mentioned he had one. He used to use it to fend off Vera when she'd had a few. I don't need fending off. Still, saves any misunderstandings. Hiya. Hiya. You'll never guess what. You've got a date with Lloyd. He told you. <laughs> Must be excited. He's over there. Already got you a drink. Yeah, you know what? 
crash. You can see out of that mascara. Yeah. All balance on them heels. Must be like walking on stilts. She's a nice enough girl, but you wouldn't have her as funny friend, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Still, wouldn't you give up a brain in exchange for a body like that? Hey, Blanche. Oh, can I uh, get a menu, please, Liz? Coming up, strictly speaking, I should be holding this off till the new year. But if you can't last that long, you could get me a drink with it and make it a double. Oh, might join you. So, you decided what you're having? Oh, I'll, I'll just have a ham salad and just an orange juice for me, Liz, thanks. OK, grab a table, I'll bring it over. Go away. You look fantastic. Thanks. I got the top from Dolly Makes, £4.99. The skirt was from J-Town, £6.50. Even the shoes I got for under a tenner in the sale. Mind, they're a size too small, but so long as I don't have to walk in them. Ah, but you look great. So, how long you been a DJ? Me? I'm not. I'm, I'm a cab driver. Oh, but I thought that you... No, I'm just helping them out. You know, I collect vinyl. Mainly Northern Soul, stuff like that. Oh, right. When I say I'm a cab driver, I actually own my own firm, like. Really? Yeah, I've got a whole fleet of cars. Even got a Merc. Really? I've always wanted to drive in one of them. Well, maybe that can be arranged. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> Oh, thanks. What's that, then? Orange juice. Ah, oh, come. You've already won your bet. Don't know. Just fancy it. There's no wrong with that, is there? Cheers. Cheers. Hey, don't you think you'd be better making some more? No. As good as new, that, no. now. There you go. You can put your own butter on, can't you? Right, go on, get off. I'll be fine. Yes, but uh, will they? I will treat them like my own flesh and blood, and I promise I won't let any of my fag ash drop in the food. Oh, you, you can't smoke. Emily, it. I'm joking. Come oh. on, get off. Stop worrying. Can I have a bun? Wait your turn. Mm. And as for her, that one on the bill, she's definitely had a lip swim. I mean, she looks like a goldfish, doesn't she? I don't watch it, really. And then there's what's her face, you know, with the purple hair and that band thingy. What are they called now? Doesn't matter. No, it does. Um, oh, it I mean, bored to death, poor thing. thing. Mm. Do you think we should have rescue her? To carry him off, haven't you? Nah. <laughs> and believe me, she's just not got the legs. But listen to me prattling on. <laughs> Let's talk about you. Have you ever had any celebs in your taxis? Damn. What? It's today Monday. Yeah. Oh, I've just remembered. I've got a really important meeting. I've got to be out with my accountants. I'm going to have to go. I'm sorry. But what about well, lunch? I know. I was really looking forward to it and all. Oh, well. We're just going to have to see each other at the party, won't we? Yeah, of course. <laughs> see ya. See ya. Here. Mm. Ta. Blimey, you're dedicated. You'll freeze to death dressed like that. Well, oh, it's enough to drive you to patches. <coughs> <coughs> well, nearly. <coughs> By the way, it's nothing catching, so don't worry. I wasn't. Go on, then. You're dying to ask. What are you in for? Life. Or death. <laughs> Only kidding. <clears throat> Chest infection. Was pneumonia, but I've been downgraded. Let that be a lesson to you. Well, it weren't to you. <laughs> True. Mike. Oh, Janice. So what are you in for, Janice? Being a naughty girl. Community service. <laughs> really? Well, I wouldn't be here out of the goodness of me heart, would I? <laughs> Go on, then. You're dying to ask. Fraud. And no, I'm not very proud of myself. Obviously not very good at it, either. You wouldn't have a cheap blacky lighter, would you? You're right there. <laughs> so what have you got you doing? Cleaning bedpans? Oh, worse. I'm working in flaming cafe. Do you know, it's just full of morning out beggars who like the tea just so, and they think the world's caving in if you give them a scum that's a little bit stale. <laughs> well... You get institutionalised after a while, don't you? Having something to eat becomes the highlight of your day. Yeah, I suppose. 
Well, that's me done. Back to Nurse Grimm for my lecture. She can smell smoke a mile off. Well, it's been nice meeting you. Likewise. How long do you think you'll last before your next one? A couple of hours. See you in an hour then. <laughs> Get you two. Are you off to your Brazilian crunch party? <laughs> yeah. Sounds more like a chocolate bar, not an exercise class. Oh, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> what time will you be back, love? Well, I don't know really because it depends how much we're enjoying ourselves. Right. Are you sure you want to go in that? Yeah. Oh, no, nothing, nothing. <laughs> right then. We shall see you right. later. Bye. Ta -ta, girls. <laughs> see ya. Two words: mutton and lamb. Ah, oh, you're back. Oh. oh. Who's this then? <coughs> this is Sonny Jim. <laughs> we might not have found Jed, but at least we've found his cat. <sighs> One of his friends from the club was looking after him, but he didn't know where Jed had moved to. Mm, it took me the best part of an hour to coax this monstrosity in this. Look, I've, I've got scratches everywhere. I told you not to throw yourself on him like that. It's a wonder he didn't squash the poor thing. Poor thing, my foot. It, it is vicious, look. Ah, oh, take no notice of the nasty little man. What are you going to do now, then? Well, there's nothing we can do, I suppose. Apart from say a little prayer. Oh, yes, well, add one for me while you're at it, because I think this is going septic. <sighs> And then turn with the golden LBs and not the best. It's the queen of the rock and roll, Miss Tina Turner! Come and have a dance. I can't, I've got to do the music. Sue will stand in for you, aren't you, Sue? She's always wanted to be a DJ. Come on. What's the point in toning all their muscles if you're not going to use them? Yeah, you're right. What the hell? <laughs> Cooking oil. Won't that long since you had last lot? The pigeons will be getting too fat to take off soon. Well, burns a lot of calories just flying. Come on. What are you really using it for? I told you. Right, forget it. All right then, but I'm trusting you to keep it to yourself. I'm using it to make biodiesel. You are? Just thought I'd do my bit for the planet, you know. Yeah, and make a profit while you're at it. Right, I want in. 20%. 50. I am your only supplier. Done. And you can help me lug it over to my workshop. Was that? Privy at number nine, A, eh? but not a word to the residents. Oh, look, I'm gonna give Sue a break. Don't be daft, she's loving it. <laughs> I'm knackered. I'm gonna sit down for a bit. I'm knackered. Look, I, I, I won't be a sec. Why? Where are you going? Uh, the, the bog. Oh, is the music that bad? Oh, no, no, it's great. I'm just having to sit down. Oh, me too. I'm exhausted. With all the dancing or all the attention? <laughs> Both. Hey, you were over the moon a little while ago. That Danielle is very attractive. I know, I know. It was just that... I'm at that age where I want to have a conversation with a woman, you know? You can't have one of them with Danielle. She's just like some running monologue. <laughs> Besides, it's really knack enough to be on your best behaviour all the time. Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Oh, I guess I'm just a lazy beggar, really. I like to be myself. Chill out. Have a laugh. <laughs> you should be grateful they're interested. Wait till you're wrong side of 50 like me. Behave yourself. You look nowhere near your age. I've seen you in class, remember? Put others to shame. Yeah, well, I might be limber, but there's no denying the wrinkles. Oh, you see wrinkles. I just see traces of blood and laughter. Give over. I'm serious, you know. I mean, you've got much more about you than those kids in there. They're just wannabes. You're the real thing. Like Tina Turner. Oh, you do know how to make a woman feel good about herself. Hey, thank you.
Story is back in half an hour. Lloyd, I love this one. Come and have a dance. Are you all right? Because you're filthy. Ooh, and you're gorgeous. You're disgusting. Ooh, and you're nasty. <laughs> Think on. I need a drink. <laughs> oh, Liz. Smudged your lippy. Giles? Hi. Really? Well, that's great news. Thanks for letting me know. Bye. Good news from the accountant. That makes a change. I've just sold two more flats at Victoria Court. A oh, nice one. Did I happen to mention there's a fantastic new jeweller's just set up in town? Nice try, but all the cash is spoken for, I'm afraid. I'll be able to go ahead with the Nightingale Terrace development at long last. Oh, Tony Gordon, property baron. Too right. I told you I was in the up. Hiya. Ah! What are you doing? Goodness sake, Tyrone, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Well, well you nearly had me eye out with that bread. It's rock hard. Well, don't lurk then. It's not lurking. Just wait to walk you home. Right. Thanks. I'm going to try a new recipe tonight. Right. I'm going to go Mexican. I think it might be a bit radical for Jack, but keeps him young trying new things. Suppose I'll be on the turkey butties again then. You can join us if you like. Really? Oh, thanks. Well, I've bought too much for me and Jack, so it'll go in the bin otherwise. I'm getting a boob job next year. I've been saving up. <laughs> You're fine as you are. I'm going to go 32 double D. I do love a big boob. <laughs> My Auntie Shirley, 40 double F. She says at the bane of her life, we'll just get transfixed by them. That rabbit's got an headlight. Wow, brilliant. I think I'll stick to what Mother Nature gave me. Too <laughs> right. Can't improve on perfection now, can you, Liz? Aw, isn't he kind? Aren't you kind? <laughs> is it hot in here or is it me? It's you. You're really hot. <laughs> I think I might nip out for another breather. Fab, I'll come with. Second thought, you know, um... I think I might go home tonight after me set. Oh, don't go. Let's go into town, make a night of it. Murder at pair drop for everybody. Nah, I don't think so. I've been caning it a lot lately. I might just go home, watch a bit of telly. Are there any weepers on? I do love a good cry. Uh, we could go back to the Rovers and I'll crack open a bottle of champagne. Ooh. <laughs> You don't spill a drop. This is liquid gold, this is. My mate Tom's got a chippy up after there. He's got loads of oil going, baby. Get on the phone to him. Tell him we'll take it off his hands. Honestly, lad, the way fuel prices are going, we're going to make a killing. Oh, oh, no, quick. Hey, come on, quick, quick. Some everything is privy. What is a privy? The bug house she did, wait, come on. All right, you calm down. Oh. Come on, right. Come on, my little beauties. Drugs. I know what you're after, you nasty little perv. What the hell's going on here? I call this one sneaking about in the ginnel and followed him in here. I suppose these dark nights suit the likes of you, don't they, eh? Help you hide your dirty little secret. Er, uh, what you on about? Ladies' scanties, as if you didn't know, eh? I suppose your pockets are full of them. What a pity we got rid of all our Vera's passion killers. By gum, that had a sort You're about. running feral since your mum and dad have taken off. You're wild as an alley cat. Hey, don't you worry, Jack. I'll sort this one out. Come on, you. Out with you. Go on. Get out. Oh. What do you say that for? Well, I didn't hear you pipe up with anything better. Well, everyone's going to think I'm some kind of weirdo. Oh, stop fretting. There's no shame in cross-dressing these days. What? So I'm a tranny as well now? Where have all the strawberry creams gone? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Gannet. Oh. I see you've left plenty of nuts. Oh, hiya. How's, uh, hi. Hi. How's Tracy? Oh, that place is so depressing. To be fair, 
fair, they do make a bit of an effort, you know. They had some of that twinkly stuff hanging up and all that... Tinsel. Uh, tinsel, yeah. It's the kids I feel sorry for. Going to see their mums all locked up. Christmas is a time for families. Yes, and by January, they'll have had a belly full. They'll be queuing round the block to get divorced. Anyway, Tracy. <sighs> she seemed fine. Nothing really to tell. She was completely miserable and putting a brave face on it. Well, me and me lad all went to the pub. And all he had were an orange juice. Proud of you, Peter. And he didn't slip a sly whiskey in there either, cos I checked while he were in the gents. Did you? Oh, thank you very much for that. Well, actually, that's a really good sign. If you can sit in the pub while everyone around you is getting legless and still just have orange juice... He might be able to give alcohol a wide berth, but he's turning into a chocoholic. I can't get my hands on a soft centre for love nor money. <laughs> Don't turn them pages too fast. We don't want to strain in yourself. I am on a break. Well, from where I'm standing, it looks like a very long break. Yeah, well, I saved up two of them. I'm taking them both together. I don't suppose there's any chance you could do an extra couple of hours tonight. No, I'm sorry, love. No, I've made plans. Not going to that strip club again, are you? No, what have I told you? Come on, Come on in. Sit down there. <laughs> That is not your bird. <laughs> not really. No, but she would like to be. She's all over him like a rash. Where's a white stick? No! Oh, <laughs> bottle of champagne, please. Oh, now that is sad acting all flash, buying her affection. No, no, no. I said they could have champagne on the house. <laughs> Look at the state of this place. You could have run a soapy cloth over the surfaces once in a while. Uh, I hope you're not talking about me because I'm on a break if you don't mind. No, no, not you. Right. I know what you're up to, matey boy. What, me? Don't play anything with me. You scored some of that stuff, haven't you? What stuff? I've seen the little adverts in the back of them dodgy magazines. Pheromones for men sends women crazy. <laughs> you're off your bunts. You want to be careful, my fat little friend. You'll be there walking down Dean's Gate thinking, what am I going to have for tea? And then suddenly you'll be pounced upon by a load of rampant screaming women. What a way to go. Yeah, I know. Give us some of your fellow moments, Lloyd. <laughs> if you grow up, you're in enough woman trouble as it is. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, lucky dog. Ruff, ruff. Does anybody fancy a ham sandwich? Um... It's off the bone. None of that plastic stuff that death sells. Oh, yeah, go on then, Tom. Simon's dozed off. I know it's a bit early, but he was up at the crack of dawn. Well, he's been a busy lad, hasn't he? With all them new toys to play with and that, yeah? In my day, you got an orange, a handful of knots, and a shiny new sixpence. That were your lot. And what could you do with that shiny sixpence, eh, Blanche? Day trip to Blackpool, fish and chips on the pier, stick a rock to take home to your mum, and you still had tuppence change, didn't you? You can mock, but people were happier then. Oh, will you bring my sandwich to me room? And a cup of tea as well. I want to knuckle down with me maid, Vinci. Actually, Deidre and I wanted a word. <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think you were a condemned man. Well, it's never good news, is it, when somebody says, I want a word? Hey, you've got no worries, Peter. Me and Ken really think you've turned a corner. Well, you've admitted that you've got a problem and you've sorted it out. You see, it just goes to show it was nothing serious. It's just a bad habit. I mean, we all get stuck into our little ruts, don't we? Look at me. Same hairstyle for nigh on 20 years. Oh, and I was demented when they discontinued my favourite lipstick. So, oh. anyway, we thought you might like to take Simon home. Oh, good. Well, that's great. I, I really, I appreciate it. I mean, not now, obviously, because he's asleep. But if you want to come back in the morning... Is there any danger of me getting me sandwich? I don't want to worry you, but me blood sugar's dipping dangerously in <laughs> See? I told you we may have come up with goods. I'm going to have shifts and chips. We'll have more oil than you can shake a stick out. Hey, shall I get you a shandy? Half a lager. Now, I can see what you're thinking Really? I bet you're thinking I'm with me toy boy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I told his mum I'd look out for him, that's all. Hey, my name's not Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Gene, too. I tell them. 
Great. So first I'm a Perth, then I'm a Tranny, and now I'm a Grabber Granny. Cheers, pal. Really wrecking me cred there. Oh, I'd like to buy you a drink, Mr Gordon, just to say thanks, you know, for being so kind to Maria. Yeah, there's really no need. She's gone off to Cyprus. I'm sure it'll do her the world of good. Help her sort her head out and that. I certainly hope so. You know, I find it quite scary being popular with the high polloi. I wouldn't fret. They'll probably all hate you again next week. So, you've been doing your bit down the hospital? Yes. I see you've still not had that unsightly growth removed. Oh no, it's your face, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even your evil jokes will not bring me down to death. Oh, hello. Someone's been at the drugs cabinet. Mm, got any left? <laughs> I thought community service was supposed to be a punishment, but here's you all perky. I'm just doing my bit, that's all. Go on, tell the truth. You've got a crush on some dishy doctor. Listen, why can't I just enjoy making myself useful? You know, helping fork out. I'd uh, stay away from this mistletoe if I were you. You know, an old man Lloyd giving you a sloppy smack. It'd be like kissing you. <laughs> I like mature men. Oh, do you now? So have you two known each other long? <gasps> yes, uh, me and Lloyd go back a long, long way. Hey, Liz, you got any photos? Of what? Lloyd in his school uniform. I bet he was so cute. <laughs> Did he have knobbly <laughs> knees? Why would I have photos of Lloyd as a kid? I'm on the air. Uh, 34, you know. Lloyd is actually uh, miles older than me. Well, he doesn't look it. You know, Oren, we're the same age, give or take a year. <laughs> give or take a decade. I'm off to bed. Got a dick. You can't leave me on my own. Take a tablet. We should get going in a minute. Right. You're very distinctive looking. Have you got a balaclava? Oh, yeah. Drawers full of them at all. Well, I could be seen dead wearing something like that. All right. Well, we'll have to take us chances. I'm going to get off in a bit. I best go touch myself. Up. Can't be doing with a shiny forehead. <laughs> Listen. I'm getting off. Tell Danielle something's come up. You're not bailing out with her. Mate, you've got something wrong in the trouser department or Believe something. Believe yourself. Look, I know she's fit ass, but she's doing me head in. Laters. Yeah, laters. So cover for me, yeah. I'm nipping her back for a ciggy. I've covered for you often enough. Oh, I get it. You're getting it together with her, are you, eh? You and me at last. Chance to talk proper like. About what? Oh, well, you know, just stuff in there. Well, you know, we, we, we did kiss. Must have meant something. Yeah, it meant I had a few too many gin and tonics. <sighs> <clears throat> Sorry. No! Cruel to be kind. It's good you're being honest. Yeah, but I'm not, though. Don't get your hopes up. Nothing's going to happen. G give me one good reason why not. Oh, well, let me think. You're my son's best mate. Yeah, but what you don't know won't hurt him. Where's 
he gone? Oh, Lloyd. Uh, yeah, um, he said to say sorry, but he's had to dash off. He's got an emergency. Oh, no. He's okay, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course he is. Yeah, it's nothing serious. Just a problem with the girl. That's all. Um, listen, I'm not supposed to say this because he swore me to secrecy. But... Go on. Well, Lloyd is so keen on you. Really? Oh, totally besotted. I've not seen him like this since... Since he had that thing with Lorraine Kelly. He's been out with Lorraine Kelly? Well, he hasn't been out with her exactly. It's just uh, he had this kind of thing for her. Convinced himself that they had this kind of mind link going on. Yeah, she was, like, uh, sending him secret messages. Like, say, she'd uh, wink at the camera. He'd take that as a sign, especially for him. But he's over it now? Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, restraining order really put things in perspective for him. Hey, do you fancy going into the town later? Oh, no. Are you all right, thanks? Oh, go on. It's my last night of freedom. Simon's coming home tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. But you've really missed him. Well, you know, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but yeah, I have. I've never been that close to me own dad. I want things to be different with me and Simon. Oh, bless. Mm. It's my round. Same again? I'll tell you what. I'll go mad. Get me a lemonade. <laughs> oh, and uh, bring us one of them bar towels back. I'll have a bit of a suck on it. <laughs> you know when we turn this into fuel? Yeah. I wonder if it makes your car stink of chips. Do I like them? I hope so. Chicken tortillas. Tortillas. Oh, well, first time for everything. Well, I was determined not to fall into the turkey trap this Christmas. It's nice to broaden your horizons. Very, very promising, isn't it, eh? Cooking for you again, sir. I just hope she's not spatting it. Oh, give over. She's feeding you. You're back in your marital bed. Won't be long before normal service is resumed. Huh? Oh, right, yeah. No yeah, doubt it. She'll beat me off with a bolster. Oh, come on. Faint heart never won fair lady. Go for it, lad. I'm not made it too hot, have I? No, no. No, it's very good. Oh, a bit of my recipe was torn off. I wasn't sure if it said a quarter of a teaspoon of chilies or four teaspoons. Oh, you just... Just carry on, you two, and you need a bit of a breather. Don't let your food go cold. Well, no chance other than the fires of hell. Oh, no, quick! Oh. Right, what are you up to? Well, you're not going to believe this, Now, but... come on. Let's not be playing silly beggars. I'm not as green as I'm cabbage, Lukin. Translation? It means I'm not thick. I know you're up to summit. But we're just storing a few bits and bobs here, that's all. Chip oil? Hey, that's going to help us save the planet, is that? We're turning it into biodiesel. Hey, don't worry, it's all safe and above board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, why don't you get off now? Go on, love. Go on. Get shut of it. It's not doing any harm, Hey, And when we sell our first batch, I'll see you right for a few pints. No, you're not on, no. You know it's your dodgy doing that split Molly and Tyrone up in the first place. I know. Yes, and they're getting back on track now. But if she finds out what you're doing... Don't worry, I'll get it shifted first thing tomorrow. Make sure you do. Oh, my frother's broken. Will you have it black? Aye, go on, then. How do you fancy celebrating Hogmanay in Scotland? Dunno, it's a bit of a trek, innit? It'll be worth it. We jocks are the only ones who know how to do it right. <laughs> Listen to Mr Modest. Well, it's my favourite night of the year. The family used to go mad for it. We'd have this big party, and then my gran would go round all the neighbours and read their ashes. Sorry you've lost me. You know, the fire goes out and you read people's futures. In the ashes, it's tradition. Or so she said. My auntie Barbara used to read tea leaves. She swore blind I'd marry a pig farmer with one arm and a little wig. Sounds like quite a catch. I know, that's what I thought. You're going to be so dumb, one of me, too. And who could blame you? If we go, I'll wear my kilt again, make it worth your while. Well, now you're talking. I'll go on. It's been such a, an abysmal year. Wouldn't it be nice to bring the new year in in style? I've got a really good feeling about 2009. Hmm. Hmm. Hey! 
are you doing? I thought it was all right now. You cut me tea and everything, and then you said that Chili's was an aphrodisiac. So? I also told you to keep your hands to yourself till I said any different. There, is that good enough for you? Or would you like me to stand out in the backyard and watch the telly through the window? Oh, don't tempt me. And you can forget about sleeping in the same bed tonight. Oh, don't make me sleep on the sofa again. I've already got curvature in the spine from the last time. Right, well, I'll sleep here then. Anything's better than sleeping next to a flaming octopus. Totally mortified. You know, what a nightmare. So, see you then. Yeah, see you around, as they say. Because, well, I take it we both know where we stand. This was just totally a one off. A to total one off? Yeah, I mean, you and me, we can't. Exactly. Well, it must never happen again. I'll drink to that. Good. So we're agreed. Agreed? Steve said Lloyd was beating him off with a stick last night. Poppy and some gorgeous Danielle girl from your class. Bit cheap looking, if you ask me. <laughs> Just Lloyd's type. What's that? From Vernon. Oh, Liz, I forgot it was today. You were right. Yeah. No, I am, really. To be honest, I'd have forgotten about it myself. <laughs> hey, turn that frown upside down. What day is it today? New Year's Eve. What does that represent? Getting bladdered. Oh, new start, you daft day, Perth. Come on, you and Molly are getting back on track, aren't you? <laughs> I wish. Hey, wishes are just once with a little bit of ambition. I oh, should write that down. See you later, Pam. Mm. Oh. Listen, lad, I promised Jack we'd shift that chip oil pronto. How about backyard of this place? I don't want devil me case. Where do you usually keep your used chip oil? The backyard of this place. All oh, right, well, we'll have to wait till after dark. I can't have Molly finding out. It caused enough trouble there. Right. Mol! Mol, you all right? You know what you mean about that sofa? I'd have slept better on a washing line. We don't have to stop there. Don't start that again. Molly, just listen to me, please. I was living like this. It's killing me. I love you. <clears throat> Ty, you stop pushing me? But it's New Year, a new start and all that. And after everything that we've been through and everything that we mean to each other. I might be in the Rovers later if you happen to be there and you want to buy me a drink. Really? Brew. Love one. She wants me back. You're going about this all wrong, son. Hmm? Or is it, yes, Molly, no, Molly, but 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 No, you got to let her do the running. Yeah. Oh, turn her up. Hey, there's something wrong with the electrics upstairs. Yeah. Well, we can't have that. Well, let's uh, go and have a look, shall we? Hmm? Après vous. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Let them do the running. So, he's got this Danielle bird flirting with him, and then he's got Poppy giving him the old come hither. Did you go hither? <laughs> Why are you so interested in my love life? Hello? So, come on, what happened? I went home. Brandon, you right. can't do this on... Yeah, but with whom? Whom? Well, Who the hell says who? Eating. New Year's resolution, I'm going it? to speak proper. No, no, no. It's our busiest night of the... Look, you can't... Hello? Flipping fat Brenda pulled a sickie. Pleurisy, please. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm over already. <laughs> oh, 
Come on, Eileen. I mean, where are we going to get someone on New Year's Eve at this time? Oh, not my problem. Quadruple time. I cannot be bought by cash alone, sorry. Well, what else are you going to do, eh? Get sloshed across the road, moaning about your life like you do every night of the year. Ah, but tonight there'll be sausage rolls. Anyway, Deirdre and I said we'd look after Liz. It's her anniversary, so it's not going to be easy, is it? I don't worry about it. It should be fine. Oh, very caring. I bet you didn't even remember. Of course I did. You know, I never thought. Is she OK? Yeah, imagine. Never mind about my mother. What about this place? Face it. Brenda's on a deathbed. I'm going to get bladdered. <laughs> it's down to you two, Stan and Ollie. <laughs> These are the fine mesh you got me into. Going at Rovers tonight? Oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. You know, New Year and all that. Oh, maybe not. And besides, it's Simon's first night back, so I'm just going to have a quiet night in with him. I'll tell you what I could do, though. I could stretch to an orange juice after work, if you fancy it. Yeah, great. That'll do for me. Yeah, right. <laughs> no tea for your poor old gran. Yeah. You know, Blanche, you can have mine. I'm swimming in the stuff since I went on the wagon. Do you do them other kinds of bets? Like who'll win Eurovision or a gold medal for push bikes in 2012? Well, we'll take anything you want to chance your arm on. Why? Thinking of getting an extra Christmas present for Deirdre. A bet? Something fun that she can keep till after I've gone. Reminder of me. Well, wouldn't you be better off with, I don't know, a premium bond? Where's the fun in that? I think that's dead sweet, Blanche. Might get something extra for Simon, too. He didn't look too thrilled when he opened my present. Why? What did you get him? Handkerchiefs. Oh, well, that's nice. With a little S on. For Simon? No, snot. Of course, for Simon. No biscuits? Yes, I know, with the competition, but is there any chance you could lend us one of... Have you heard him laughing? Look, it looks like it's down to either me or you on switch tonight, kid. I'll toss you for it. You must really want the night off. What, would you want to give up your New Year's Eve to spend all night on your own in this place? Calling all cars. Those of you that wanted the night off, it's your lucky day. The rest of you, well, look, I'm, I'm dead sorry about this. What's Amber doing tonight? Mm -hmm. She's at a party at a mate's house. You know, the parents are in Spain, so no doubt they'll return to nothing but a chimney breast stood in the smoking rubble of their home. But more for them, I say. You? Don't know. Well, I was going to go to the Rovers, but I'm not much in the mood for celebrating. Oh. Look, Moles. Now, you know how fond I am of you and of the tyrant, but for what it's worth, I really think. Hey, Tarara! Everything's ship shape in the old um, department. Are your electrics back on? <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you for sorting out the electrician. My privilege and pleasure. Um, listen, uh, I don't know if you've got any plans for tonight. No, I haven't. Well, because you've cooked some lovely meals for me, and well, I'd, 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 I'd love to return a favour. You cook? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yes, my mother, she passed down some wonderful recipes. Yeah, and I might be a little rusty, but I'm sure... That'll be really nice. Your oh. place, about eight? Uh, uh, great. I look forward to it. Yeah. Bye, Molly. Dev. Yeah. Dev! Yeah? What were you going to say about me and Ty? Well, sort yourselves out. Now, you all right holding the fork? Because I've got some food shopping to do. What's wrong with the stuff here? What, this tat? Tara's a lady, Molly, and she, oh. only the best will do. Ah, oh, it's a wonderful life, Jason, my boy. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm gonna start early. Love is in the air. Some people, anyway. Actually, that's why I came in here. I'm on my own tonight. And with you and Ty, I was wondering if you fancied a few drinks in the Rovers. The Rovers? Where is that again? I recognise the name. <laughs> the trendy place. There's a beefy bird called Betty who works in the door. You slip her a fiver, she'll sort you out. Uh -huh. Best proper glam up, then. I'll see you later, then, yeah? Oh, happy New Year, mate. So what was all that about, then? How do you mean? 
You going out with Jason? Eh? He was just saying he'd be in the Rovers if I wanted a drink. But I thought you and me was going out. No. I said I might be in the Rovers and if you fancied a drink, come in. All oh, right, so what is this? Just some big plan to make me all jealous, is it? I don't have to explain myself to you. Jason was being kind and you coming here shouting the odds. Yeah, well, only because you was, like, all arranging to meet some other bloke behind me back. Oh, God, so you could just get out. Well, what am I supposed to think? I come in and Jason's all... I like... said out! Yeah, I've uh, got to because we're going to be really busy, you know, tonight. Well, I'll, I'll see you later then. Yeah. Sorry, you rushed off my feet. Anything I can help with? Oh, that's dead sweet here. Thanks, Mum. Can't get hold of Molly or Tyrone. home. Breaking my heart. Fingers crossed, though. I'm sure they'll work it out. Do you want me to hold the stool for you? Hey? As long as that's all you hold. Right, girls, gather round, please. <sighs> OK. Michelle will tell you, tonight it's going to be a madhouse, so I want clear heads. Yep, and watch out for anybody kicking up. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for trouble. Dead on you, mate. <laughs> Look at Rambo. Here to serve, ma'am. Now, the place looks great. You lot look even better. Woo! So, let's give the punters a night to remember! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> She's like Madonna with the dancers before a show. Oh. Hey, it's hard work New Year's Eve. Mind you, can't be as bad as last year. Jim, from Penvern then. The wedding. Tonight's gonna be a doddle. Oh, and we come in to look after you. Hey, I am delighted you're here. But trust me, I couldn't be happier that I'm on my tod. Oh, well, let's have a drink then. Vodka and Coke. And a red wine, please. Coming up. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, to be 18 and legal. What shall I have? Shut up, you. Not everyone needs booze to have a good time, you know? Not with such a wide range of recreational drugs available. <laughs> oh, kidding? Blimey, why aren't you necking? Mm, check out Windy. Right, Bozo, where'd you learn to do that? Clown College. You want to come here and say that, Pee-wee? Right. Both of you. First on last morning. I don't want any trouble tonight, right? Uh, did you hear her? Yeah, yeah. Right. Why don't you get us girls a nice drink? False move, the old street could go up. Can we get on with it? I've got to get ready for this party Amber's at. Problem. Can't find Keith at padlock. Oh, wicked. Trust me to buy every duty one and all. We need power tools. Well, my dad's are still at shop. Oh. That's our Molly. Look, we'll have to wait till she goes back out. Meet me in pub later, and then we'll sneak round when festivities are at full throttle. I don't have time for this. Listen, do you think Donald Trump ate his fortune in between house parties? Gird yourself, lad. I'll drop you at your door when we're done. Come on. So you go on about how you can't trust me and then I walk in and there's you all over Jason. I don't even know why I'm discussing this with you. We're not together anymore, remember? Yeah, and we've no chance of getting back together, have we? You're already eyeing up my replacement. Look at us. If we're rowing like this before we're even wed, what are we going to be like five years down the line? Ten? Oh, please. I just want you back. Haven't I been in the doghouse long enough? <gasps> it's not about me punishing you. I'm going to have a bath. Then I'm going to the Rovers. You do what you want. Can't imagine 12 o'clock being as much fun as last year. Well, what happened last year? Dirty beggar jumped on me. You lie. You jumped on me. Now, does that sound like me? Yes. yes. Mm. 
Blimey, son, I've seen more subtle shirts on Nelson Mandela. <laughs> I imagine half the punters in here are probably Alkies. <sighs> Motha! Not the same. It's one thing boozing most nights, but most drinkers know when they've crossed that line. A fight you can't remember. Waking up somewhere, covered in your own sick. Mm. In that case, same again for everyone. <laughs> no, not for me. I've got to pick Simon up. Well, you have a good night, you bunch of brazen horses. Oh, I wish. What are you doing? Oh, look, we're right under the mistletoe. Time to find out who's been naughty or nice. An ex prostitute and an alcoholic. Jerry Springer and do cartwheels. Ignore her. See you later. What time are we going to this party? Vamba's mate. Uh, I don't know. Daryl said he's got some stuff to do first. So, do you want another one? I want to go to the party where we can have a proper drink. Give him a ring then, shall I? All right, gorgeous. Oh, don't start. Who's starting? Just thought you might want your uh, OJ livened up a bit. You all right, Tom? Oh, come on, it's New Year's Eve. That's your thing, isn't it? Getting young lasses drunk. Dad, I've already said no. No, stop Easy, it. Easy, man. Blimey, you're trying to a neighbour a favour. Just do one, eh? You're not welcome here. Didn't seem that way to me. I, I forgot the address off Daryl, so he just said we'd meet him there. What's up? Here we are, girls, for you. Oh. Shopping Blanche. Splashed out on some new foundation garments. What? I think they call them bra and knickers these days. Not these, they don't. You can mock. Wait till you're my age. My undergarments are the only things that are holding me together. Oh, and Deirdre, I've got you a little something. Oh. A bet. A something you can keep after I'm gone. To remind you of me in the years to come. Well, that's very thoughtful. Rather odd, but very thoughtful. Oh, and when they land a monkey on the moon by the year 2030, you'll be a very wealthy woman. <laughs> oh, that's right. Go on. Uh, Make fun of a weak, vulnerable widow. <laughs> vulnerable? You. Hey, I've seen empty bloke with balaclavas and shotguns more vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Whoa. Now then, lads. Thought you two were working. Ah, uh, um, staffing problems. Gave myself the night off. Thought tonight of all nights I should be in my spiritual home. It's your actual home. Even better. Give us a couple of beers, please. Yeah. And a bottle of bubbly for banana armor over there. Yeah, ma'am. Oh, look, Lloyd, there's the lovely puppy. Ooh, puppy. God, admit, I wouldn't say no. Anything I can do for you, lads? I think my partner in crime has got a couple of suggestions. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gone. Toilet. Yeah, then, boss. At least me and you get to spend New Year's Eve together, eh? Yeah. With your mum and your girlfriend and a pub full of punters. Oh, you are such a romantic. Hey, gorgeous. Who'd you have to snog to get a drink round here? See you later on. And there you go. My mother's speciality. <laughs> Homemade chicken and mushroom pie, new potatoes and runner beans. This is your mother's secret recipe. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, she uh, prided herself on the ability to knock up a pretty authentic English. Now, the secret, shh, <laughs> being the complete absence of any aromatic herbs and spices. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> hey, it's good seeing you laugh. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I normally spend it with Greg and our friends or my mum and dad. Well, here's to a happier new year. You know, I'd give anything for me and you to spend New Year's Eve together. Well, there's always next year. And if that's too soon for you, year after. Listen, that thing I said about Poppy, I only said oh, it's that... fine. She's a pretty girl. Hey, hey, I forgot it was your anniversary. Are you OK? Yeah, thanks. 
Have you shifted that chip oil yet? Say no more. Hey, the eagle has landed. Uh, Amber's been texting me asking where I am. Are you ready? I was born ready, son. Well, come on, then. Listen, I know this year's been horrible. Well, let's make a promise, yeah? New Year, fresh start. We're a family, aren't we? We should remember that, whatever happens. <laughs> Shift you on, if bear. <laughs> Becky. Yeah, don't mind me. Molly not coming, then? Well, she probably made other plans because she knew I was coming. I think it's really that bad between you two. Well, she's not here, is she? Do you think maybe she's just stopped at home, right? You reckon? Mm. Right, you lot. Now, we'll be starting the countdown outside so you can all see the fireworks. Woo! Okay, so those of you who fancy it, follow me. Cheers, love. Ooh. Steady, Pam, steady. What are you doing sitting in the dark? Don't put the lights on. Have you been crying? I... I couldn't face another row. I just needed time to think. We can't go on like this. I'm sorry, but it's over. We'll have to sell the house. All right, people! All together now! Ten! Nine! Eight! Seven! Six! Five! Hello? I need an ambulance, please. Come, please! Back to mine. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> 